The views expressed on this Turnbuckle Tabloid live stream or Turnbuckle Tabloid podcast episode do not reflect the views, thoughts, or opinions of the RageWorks brand, including the RageWorks podcast network, RageWorks content partners, advertisers, and affiliates. Viewer and listener discretion is advised. Yeah, what's going on? It's your boy Mike Harvey, and we're listening to Turnbuckle Tabloid. Turnbuckle Tabloid. Three, two, one. If there's any day that I wish I had a fucking drink, it would be today. But once again, it's one of those weekends that I have to work and I have to wait one more fucking day before I can crack one open. 901 here, 901 days of once again being under this global pandemic or whatever the fuck everybody's pussified ways has to say it. We're still dealing with COVID, damn it, motherfuckers. It's just exactly what it is. 901 days and still underneath I, this I, I regime. Think we, I think we were over 901 days last week. Nah, we were still in the 800s, I remember. But now we're, not, we're 901 days. It's just, hey, listen, at the end of the month here in New York, we can get some kind of relief because restaurants are going to have some indoor dining soon. Yep, at, least a, at least a 25% capacity. Which I'm happy about because, uh, well, not really because I'm trying to eat healthy, so I'm not really going <laughs> to do anything. But uh, for the fam, it's cool to go to Chili's and uh, go inside and be able to eat and shit like that. Uh, it's, 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 it's needed, especially in this state. Uh, we're, we're doing really good. What's that? Oh, excuse me. Oh, what's that place called? The, uh, um, bungalow? Bungalow bar. Well, Bungal- that's outside. So, bungalow yeah. bar. They're, they're good with that. Uh, I'm more worried about the... The the, the the Yermans and the Zoom Stomp Dish. We're having audio problems? Yeah, it's always. Of course. We always, we always, start, we always start the show in the beginning with I can't audio. Wait to break that shit. Oh, God. Burn I'm, it. I'm telling you, we're going to do that office space shit. No, nah, we got to burn that shit because I can't. We can't. We can't. We can't. We can't keep going on like this. We, we, we can't move on like this. <laughs> we got to do it for the children. Yeah, we got to. Come on. Like. Um, Come on! But nah, New York's been really good. I mean, shout to everyone putting your masks on. People who don't, you can fuck yourselves because you know it's just a simple thing. But uh, I, how has work been in terms of COVID? Like everyone listening to everyone following the rules. Everyone we have, have to. Everything's a mandated thing, but it's all right. We're fucking good. What about I mean, like the patient? The other patients fighting with their masks. I don't want to wear this. No, they actually don't. Wow! All they, right. They, they, they actually want to wear it. They they prefer wow. to wear it. Yeah, they're wow. good. Okay. So yeah. your motherfuckers ain't gonna get me sick. And that's yeah. the attitude I want to yeah. hear from my patients. For real, uh, fuck that. Speaking of COVID, um, TJ Perkins just responded to me on Twitter. Did he? He did because he posted a picture of him with no mask on an airplane going on my way to Warriors Wrestling. So excited. And I said, well, where's your mask at, Pa? And he said, where's yours, Pa? And I was like, on, on when I'm in public, Pa. <laughs> and then he said, and then he said, well, I'm on a plane, Pa. He kept, we kept going, Pa, 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 Pa. And I'm like, <laughs> I hope the attendant sees you and kicks you off the plane. Pa. For being a pa, dickhead. Yeah, Mr. Gamer himself, you know. You don't need to fucking, um, you don't need to um, not have a mask on a plate of your Switch, bro. Uh, I'm telling you, it's just, inc- you know what it is? It's, it's inconsiderate and it's rude. Yeah, it, it, listen, listen. It's like having your junk out <laughs> in public. It's yeah, like, exactly no, right. no. Listen, bro, if you want to die, that's your fucking business. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yep. Because people are still dying. I hope I, I want to make that known that people could. We're great. Everything's fine. People are still dying. Well, once again, New York has dropped. We're down, doing good. Dropped down to its lowest numbers. Yeah, we're doing good because testing I, and um, with uh, positive rates going down. Yep. And I was. I, going, but I am seeing hipsters around your area, like um, our area, but like two blocks away, and they're like. All squished together, but they are wearing masks. They are respecting the maskage, which um, I. I got, I gotta tell you, I, this week, I, although I have said, I uh, political J is off the market, but that's if it's with people on my page. Like I'm, I'm not, uh, I'm not doing a tit for tat with you guys anymore. No, you're done. You guys that. are lost. Your brain is fried. You, you might as well. You don't know what one plus one is. You might as well just be licking fucking the tips of pencils 
and just oh, so looking, the, looking for the flavor because wow, you're, you're that far gone with this. So they're, pull, they're pulling a Matt Hardy, a concussed Matt Hardy. Kind yeah, of thing. but I would prefer to. Uh, now we got a dog barking. Streets Shut up! New, the mean streets of New York, guys. It's and now the mic just blew out. It did it? Yes. <laughs> hold on, wait, hold on. Do it, do it. <laughs> Not no, 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 no. Did it? No, 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 there you go. Oh, the mic blew out. Um, what a what a we're show. We're over here listening to fucking Jericho interview fucking Thunder Rosa, and you got people knocking yeah. on the door coming in. Yeah, out of this. So I'm like, all right, well, we're not the only ones I got to deal with I this I guess shit. not, but, uh, you know, eventually, uh, once the winter comes, it gets better because there's no fucking, I don't know, people outside. But so yeah, um, I have um, no ice cream truck selling crack. Oh, soon, soon, please, soon. Well, uh, like I said, so I stopped I stopped doing back and forth with people on my page personally, but I do go on the, on the news outlet pages and I go back oh, and forth. Oh, on Fox and shit like that? And it's a gem, yeah, ladies yeah, and gentlemen. I can imagine. I love it. The, the amount of people who, <laughs> who defend defend our our, our leader – in the most like like we we don't really a politics show but we, uh, opening salvo is usually like a random thing mm. I, i'll say one thing though um people will find any way to defend him like it is like like a grain of salt and they'll take that grain of salt and make it into a big cube of salt and going well this is exactly what blah, 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 blah. like no well they should turn around no take that sh- take that that cube of salt Turn it sideways and stick it straight up their candy ass. Yeah, they should. Good way to intertwine wrestling there. Thank it's just, you. Um, got into another argument with someone on the track today. No, yesterday um, about politics because I overheard them behind me talking about how um, about how Black Lives Matter is stupid and that they don't watch basketball. And I turned around and I said, "You know, you won't be missed, right?" Yeah, they don't give a shit. And and he goes, "What do you mean?" I'm like, "You're one viewer." You don't make a difference. Nobody cares. I was like, they they're still making bank. He goes, well, the NBA is the lowest ranked right now since they came back with this Black Lives Matter shit. I'm like, actually, wrong. People watching NBA like this is a World Series right now. So what do yeah. the fuck do you mean? I was like, the NBA is probably the most intense and fun sport to watch right now, in my opinion. I love the Mets, and they won 18-1 to yesterday. They're doing actually okay. But nothing's better than the NBA playoffs right now. Nothing. Can't beat it. Football's tomorrow, but I'll even say better NBA is well, on I was going to say, we had our first game, and now football is coming up on Sunday. Yep. Uh, oh shit! It's NFL time, ladies and gentlemen. This music is brought to you by the NFL and Fox. Yeah, we don't own the rights to this music. I just want to point that out. <laughs> you come in, come in who's your Who's your early Who's your early Super Bowl favorite? Favorite. Gotta go with KC again, man. They have a They have a solid team. Did they, I don't think they had that many um, many players leave from last year so uh. well the, you know the, the the only thing that they have to really tighten up as once again is they're tightening up their defense because you know as always they have to go have these shootouts with, with certain teams but yeah. when you got players like Mahomes uh you got fucking Tyreek Hill and you got their new running back who you have for fantasy I do which I don't even know who he was but I picked him and, and he got me 20 points so early early 20 points on this Thursday 20 which I hate playing my players on Thursdays yeah, the Thursday. I team. like I love when my players are like at Sunday at eight thirty, because you could always make a magical comeback at the end, regardless of what score. Or the Monday uh, night game. And the Monday night game is like I I love the last minute games. I hate playing my games. If all my teams, all, all my players play at one o'clock, I'm like I'm not, I don't want to I don't want to look. You know how many Monday night games I won with a kicker? Yeah, seriously, Monday night games <laughs> I won, make I won a so huge. Many games with a with a fucking kicker. But on the Monday other night. end, on the other end, you could lose for Monday night games. Like Monday, Monday night games is the most important in football, fantasy football, in my oh, opinion. Oh man, the ones I hate. You could get fucked by two points in fucking Monday. I've it's lost bad. Monday night games with a team defense where my fucking oh yeah, my team defense didn't hold up and uh, theirs did. Oh, this shit fucking sucks. Every every day matters, but I, for me, um, Super Bowl, I'm probably gonna go with. Um, I might go with the Seahawks this year. Oh, that's a good. Pick. I like Wilson, and I like I like his I like his targets. But I will say the sleeper team of the year for me is surprisingly the Patriots. I think Cam Newton's going to shine in New England. I I hope. I mean, I don't want to see the Patriots win because um you know they always have, and I kind of hate them. But I want to see Cam Newton kind of shine elsewhere. I want to see the t- the Tom the Tom Brady stands get what they what they want, which is him do well with. Yeah. I mean, Tampa Bay got weapons, so they just, just got to stay healthy. I hate, OJ Howard has to stay healthy. Uh, um, Gronk has to stay healthy. Mike Evans has to stay healthy. Tom Brady's literally the LeBron James of bat of football. It's like wherever he goes, like the team realizes, yeah, we got to get more people for this guy, and then they start signing all the fucking Danny Greens and J.R. Smiths in the world. Yeah, Hold and they on, just uh, they just signed Leonard Fournette for, for running back as well. He's so. on my bench. On yeah, my so it, it works. But uh, back to the whole COVID shit and these fucking um these 
fucking idiots who follow this orange mess in, in the office. By the way, did you hear the story about the Sturgis, the, the motorcycle rally that happened a couple of weeks ago? Yeah. That uh, Smash Mouth and fucking Fozzy performed? For, for, for Trump. No, 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 no. It's, no, no. Every year, oh, Sturgis, no. Oh, Sturgis, Sturgis yeah, the motorcycle yeah, rally. Yeah, 250,000 COVID. Wow. And, you know, and, and and Jericho was the first one to say, we all did it the right way. No, yeah, he, he didn't. He's like, oh, no, wait, what didn't. was it? He said, he said oh, we, only, we only had like seven confirmed cases. No. Why don't you add another 240,000 something, 49,000 to that, bro? Like, uh, I, I'm actually really disappointed in Jericho for this story. Um, that actually was going to be in Wrestling Rundown, but I guess we'll talk about it here. Um, you know, you could, you, could, you could easily just own up to what you did and say, yo, you know what? We, we, we jumped the gun and we're sorry. Um, it's all, to- it's all that was needed for me, but for him to go out and then just try to defend it. So wait, you mean to tell me that two hundred and fifty thousand bikers weren't gonna follow the rules? Yeah, exactly. Get out! Yeah. No. Oh, you Har- really? Oh, you. Uh, you Harley Davidson yeah. leather jacket wearing helmet. I, I want to see the non mask wearing. Uh, excuse me. Uh, fuck the rules. Not wear a helmet riding. <laughs> I want to call them the word. I want to call them the word they call them in South Park, but I can't. It's like, really? and if you watch the episode, you know what it is. I can't say the word. <laughs> it's not appropriate. It's actually a very bad word. I think you know what. You, have you seen the episode yet? No. It's when the Harley Riders are in South Park and like they all call them the F word. Oh. But it's not like F U C K. Oh, it's like oh. the other one. Oh. Okay. And Cartman shits on their seats. Oh. Well, that's how they got COVID. Uh, uh, yeah. Well, uh, but but I'm just disappointed. Have in you jo- ever seen what those rallies look like? Yeah. It's all. Yeah, they all hanging around, Hicks, drinking, fucking they hugging. Have, they even have wrestling matches. Yeah. Like half a Hog new. fighting. Uh, yeah. Fuck your cousin. Um. Everybody's competitions. Everybody's touching each other's motorcycle. Not wiping. And their down. dicks. <laughs> and their dicks. Right. Dick touching. Dick touching motorcycle. <laughs> Motorcycle touching, uh, blogging, uh, whatever the, the fuck it's called. It's the it's the the, the fucking the, the the docking con. Yeah, the docking con. Uh, I'm just disappointed in Jericho because like you know he's try- still defending this, and the fact that he said only seven. You know, you know someone could die in that seven. Like I, I hate people underutilizing numbers in COVID. Like oh, it's just only five. Yeah. What you mean? But of course you. And then you. What also you have, mean? You also have this buffoon wanting to pass a bill saying that. You know, we could we could have we could be tax free for the rest yeah. of the year. Yeah, okay. Yeah, right. Any way to fucking butter us up, right? Yeah, and I'm like, like no, I, take my taxes, please, because I don't want to get doubly charged in the fucking next year. Yeah, I'd rather just do my normal shit I'm than good. than do what you're fucking trying to suck me for. I'm trying to fucking reel me in to vote for you. Fuck you. Now, if you knocked out my student loan, mm, yeah. that's different. But other than that, welcome everybody to another other episode up. Turbuckle Tabloid, I am your host, Mr. Ear to the Mat, the King of Tall Style, and as always, the Cheap Thrill, J. The Red Santa. And I am the Mook with the Mic, Madolski. Make sure you check us out on all the social media outlets. Check us out on the Like and Group page on Facebook. Ladies and gentlemen, the numbers are growing. We are inching, inching, inching our way to 750. We're almost there, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, shit. Listen, the best thing I love about this is that I don't beg. We don't fucking get on We beg. We'd probably be in 2,000 by now. Yeah, exactly. We just, like, click and say, join us, whatever. And so far, everybody's been partaking, being a part of the group, and joined. And the the participation has been growing, and I appreciate everybody in those groups who've been uh, sharing and, and having the conversations on there. It's been a great, great look for you guys. Thanks for partaking in the Facebook group, as well as on the Instagram at Turnbuckle Tabloid Podcast. I tried to minimize that, but I couldn't because all the ones that I wanted yeah. were taken. So oh, like, so the TBT podcast was taken? All those were taken. Well, so it's like, all right. Fuck it. So fuck it. We'll, well, figure it out. we'll figure it out. We'll get it in post! Yeah, fuck it. Also, make sure you check us out on the Twitter at Turnbuckle Tab. And also be sure you check us out on Anchor and especially on the YouTube at Turnbuckle Tabloid because we've just added more content on YouTube. And I'm going to push that more and more. Guys. Yeah, I saw you push the YouTube yeah, this week. Yeah, there, there, there was a bunch of episodes we put up there this week. There's going to be more going on there. There's going to be more content on YouTube. Just going to push it out there. It's not about the whole um, trying to get the monies and trying to be a part of it. It's just like, you know what? Forever who listens to the show... And people who want to partake in the in, in the episodes and don't, and don't really do it in one way, like Ben the Brit, he doesn't really participate in podcasts, so maybe he'll be able to watch it on YouTube. So yeah. we'll get him there uh, on that. So we're providing more content for everybody. I'm not gonna be too selfish. Gonna put more work into that to put up the the episodes on YouTube as well. So guys, don't you want to see Ben the Brit shirtless? Um, oh, doing the dishes on Facebook. Yum. That was really enjoyable. But we will ask for the handouts on our new Patreon. Yeah, ladies whoa, and gentlemen. Whoa. We have a Patreon. 
Check us out at patreon.com forward slash turnbuckle tabloid. We have a Patreon, ladies and gentlemen. Do you want to tell them the tiers real quick? Sure. I have the tiers lined up right in front of me. Guys, there you go. Hey, this is, I'm going to play some music behind that. The Let's tiers that you want to hear. Doesn't it sound amazing? I can't hear it. You can't hear it? No, that's not funny. You don't need it. For $5. We'll leave a message on your phone as any wrestler we can impersonate. Maybe Maybe give you a call. Oh, well, maybe. We, we will, we'll, and we'll also call as your favorite school teacher or... Porn star, whatever. That creepy uncle that kept wanting you to sit on their lap during Christmas. <laughs> maybe oh you miss, maybe miss talking to him. For 10... Can, uh, we, we can have Oski ride with you in a car so he so the police won't stop you. Whoa, wow. Minorities. That, well, you know we know, you know, know what we're talking about. It's good to have that white boy in the car because police will be like, okay, you can go. I'll bless you guys. Don't worry about it. Uh, for 15, I could ride with you in a car to, pre- to prevent people from robbing you. Wow. That, I, I prefer that one. I kind of like that one. That's a good one. I'm like a pit bull. Yeah. I kind of fuck with that one. Kind of got that, that growl look going on. Uh, for 20... We'll go to your house and walk around in our underwear and complain about your family structure. <laughs> like, why the fuck your son and your daughter are a year apart? I mean, come on, let's be for real. Couldn't you, like, give each other space? Wow. You didn't have to have, like, Irish twins. That's just weird. Wow. And we'll do it in our underwear. We'll make sure to wear nice and appropriate underwear. We'll judge your family. I love, I'll make sure I have the, the, the underwear that has the button in the front so, you know, no little glizzy might come out, if you yeah, know what I mean. You don't want the glizzy pop No out. glizzy pop-offs. Uh, for 25 I will come to your house and drink your beer and pee in your tub. I kind of already paid for that. So I'm waiting for mine. I've done it for free in other people's houses. Wow, all right. I've done that for but free. Now it has to, be, um, has to be a little more than that. For 50, Oski will send you partial nudes with cold cuts covering his private parts. <laughs> Especially that honey maple turkey. Since he can't eat it anymore, so you might as well just wear it. Uh, I, I, eat, I eat some cold cuts, oh, but okay. um, I'll show off some. Uh, I'll put some honey maple turkey on my cat. Honey maple turkey. And for finally, for a hundred dollars, ladies and gentlemen, we'll do we'll do something for you that's illegal in thirty seven states, and possibly illegal in three, including Sweden. So, oh damn! Let's just say it involves butt play, but I'll just leave it at that. Wow, I'm kind of I'm kind of I'm I'm okay with that. Oh, oh, we're not getting the butt play, but you might. Depends on how much you pay. So that's our tears, ladies and gentlemen. Very awesome. Thank you guys. I appreciate the, the love and support. And um, if you, I'll send that, tur- that maple honey turkey new to you as soon as possible. To slide that fifty, boy. Yes, sir. Now, uh, uh, check the tiers on uh, our Patreon.com forward slash Turnbuckle Tablet. You'll see the official, the real one, the official tier lineup. And you guys will probably uh, probably want to to partake in that. It's actually pretty cool. Uh, for for what I know, for our listeners. You cheap fucks. You're not going to do shit. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> I don't expect do shit. I don't expect shit from this, but thank That's you That's right. Who knows? I said, I don't know. But, you know, the reach that we've been getting since on all on all the podcasting outlets, you could get Turnbuckle Tabloid. You get uh, Spotify, iTunes, uh, Google Play Music. Uh, well, well, now it's changing to Google Podcasts. Uh, you get it from um, wherever you could get podcasts. I'm, right now, I'm tracking it. Uh, the, the, the boss, Rich, has connected us to all the podcasting outlets we're getting it. And people are listening like on Firefox. They're listening to it on, on their um, on their Amazon fucking cubes and shit like all that. Right. Echoes and all that. So you guys are awesome. Yeah, you're venturing for that. out. All right. We're in England. We're in India. Belgium. We're getting people listening to us. So you guys we're out in there, Disney World. Hey, hopefully, we're doing moments out here. We're, so you guys, thank you for partaking on on the podcast outlets as well. Be, be part of the, the ridiculousness that is Turnbuckle Tabloid. And as always, if you don't get us there, you can always get us at RageWorksNetwork.com. RageWorksNetwork.com is where you get all the shows that's connected and affiliated to the RageWorks family. Call me when it's over. Black is the new black. Tro- um, Trek Untold. And, of course, you get Toys and Text and, and us here at Turnbuckle Tabloid. So be yep. sure you check us out at RageWorksNetwork.com. And for news articles and Previews, reviews of all things that's connected to the world of the culture, which is the pop culture, that is. We ask you to check us at RageWorks.net. RageWorks.net. This week is a big week for 
anything connected to video games. It was a it was a tremendous week this past week. We had releases like the Avengers. We had uh, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater. We had NBA 2K21. Uh, and then next week we have Mario. The, the All Stars coming out. We got a uh, a PlayStation conference. Today's actually National Video Game Day. National Video Game where I'm playing in Fall Guys. So, what's your favorite game of all time? If you want to, what's the game that you could always play and you'll be happy you doing so? Oh, wow. Any 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 year it doesn't matter. Wow. For, that's... for National Video Game Day. For for me, um, the game I could always play. It's 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 rough because I, I just like movies. I like playing it once and I like putting it down and be like I'm happy with my one time playing it, but. Uh, I could always say I'm happy with um, NBA or, uh, but my favorite game of all time has to be Super Mario Galaxy Two. I can't, you know, I can't really, I, I really can't call it. I mean, I was always a, a Madden guy or Tecmo, anything sports. Yeah, but well, what, what, what's your favorite? What, what's your favorite wrestling game of but all time? As of as of re- wrestling game of all time has to be the it, it has to be No Mercy. Really? Yeah, it has to be No Mercy. That, 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 that makes sense. But uh, if I had to say my favorite game of all time, if we put a gun to my head and said which one did I enjoy playing thoroughly, it had to be Witcher 3. Oh, you really enjoyed oh, that? Oh, I love the Batman series as well, but Witcher 3 was my, the greatest for me. I think Batman Arkham City has to be one of up there too because yeah. ba- Arkham City was fucking amazing. I'm, uh, just, hoping that, I'm just hoping that fucking uh, uh, Cyberpunk, is going to be my next Witcher three. It will be. I, uh, like, yeah, so. I, I do not expect that to, to 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 flop at all. I mean, granted, we've been disappointed in the past. Watch Dogs, um, <laughs> but you know, there's there's hope out there. There's a new Watch Dogs coming out too. Which, uh, there is, which I'm definitely not going to get just because there's so many other things to play. Yeah, I know, uh, but I don't know. I'm kind of interested in that one as well. When you could jump into other people's bodies and shit. It's uh, cool. Um, I want to I want to jump into an old lady's body and start doing some shit. Wrecking havoc. All right, I'm cool with that. Uh, um, it's a fetish that I have. So we have that, and then you know. Uh, uh, which, like I said, my favorite wrestling game of all time has to be Here Comes the Pain. That shit is just fucking fun. You, you the story mode's great, and you, you I, I can't, I can't put it down. Sometimes the, the gameplay is extremely. Fun. It's hard though. Yeah. You gotta like jerk off to fucking kick out. <laughs> but you know, it is what it is. Uh, I'm waiting for Battlegrounds actually comes out next week. So. WWE Battlegrounds. So we'll be giving a, a as a, much a, a shit review. as people are giving it. I actually gonna say that it might be fun. It looks fun. It looks like a game I could just fucking get intoxicated and fucking play. I do want to go get. Uh, like Ghost of Tsushima, I do want to pick that up. I'm waiting. I want to beat Avengers, which if you're saying Avengers is only ten hours of campaign, I'll be getting picking up Ghost of Tsushima rather quickly. Yeah, yeah, it's only ten it's hours. Of campaign. Yeah, I'll be, I'll be I'll be picking up Ghost of Tsushima next. But every single person I spoke to last night with my boys, everybody said it's amazing. They every single person in my in in, in the table were like, "Yo, bro, you got to play Ghost of Tsushima. It's phenomenal." Rondo gave Rondo gave it a ten out of ten. Yeah. Um, Jimbo gave it. A, a, a my God, my God said so the same thing. Everyone, yeah. um, everyone is saying it's phenomenal. Actually, we might, might win game of the year. So, so uh, guys. Don't go anywhere. Stick around. We have much more in store. We have cutting a promo this week. Cutting a promo will be... It will be the review of AEW's All Out. It's rare that we do something like that where we just dedicate our cutting a promo to a certain pay-per-view, but we Jesus have we have Christ, to. this is necessary. Oh, it is, because we have a lot to talk about. We have, uh, we'll have we go over the, the botches, the, the 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 good parts of the show, and the, the, the bad. And so. if you're watching it on Facebook Live, I might have a surprise where you guys might be able to uh, catch a peek of certain things, if you know oh, what I mean. Shit. So. All right. Also, uh, we have our uh, wrestling rundown. Wrestling rundown, we have a bunch of stories, uh, at least on my end, that I do for a closing of my part. No, I, yeah, I got, I got, a, I got, I got a bunch with, uh, with Vince releasing more people. Um, Gerald Briscoe being one of them. Right. Uh, we got rumors of AEW's next show about the whole thing with Tony Khan and Rebby Hardy. Um, it's once again, it's a General Hospital for wrestling. So. Jam packed. We also have around the square circle, as always. Our review, our, our review of went went down during a week in wrestling. Got to had uh, our conversation about the bounce back episode of of the the fallout of All Out. Yep. And how they did on their Wednesday night, and also the numbers on there for all, all um, for all elite that they did really well. And my take on this past week's NXT, which I'm hoping you guys would agree with me on, and uh, another great promo this week on Friday Night SmackDown. I'll let you know about who did it and where, and much more. So, and this week we have a conversation with our boy returning, our guy. From BWF, BCW, and all up and down the Eastern Seaboard, our guy Dominic De Niro stops in. Which, yeah, which Dominic, shout out to you real quick, because he loved my uh, my weight loss post. Yeah. So I appreciate him for that. I appreciate that. Uh, my guy stopping in, discussing what's he been doing during COVID, how he's been um, putting on the uh, <clears throat> COVID pounds, but yet still looking fit and trim. 
And um, what do you do when you have nothing to do out in the woods? How is it that you uh, keep yourself busy? You'll have a conversation. This is a, this is a Brooklyn kid who's now uh, spending time in the, in the wilderness. So we'll talk to him about that. So, guys, don't go anywhere. Stick around. We will return. Check you guys in a second. Oh, it's LAX, whatever it is, homicide, and you're listening to Turnbuckle Tabloid. What is it? Turnbuckle what? Turnbuckle Tabloid. Tabloid. Okay. Right. Let me know how long you're ready. Go ahead, Parker. Go ahead. But that, the toy is 187, OG, the LAX, 5150, the land, Frank White. You listen to Turn, Turnbuckle Tabloid. One more time. Let's get it. Yes. Yo, 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 brrrah, Notorious 1 and 7 is here. LEX, OGs, 5150, the Latin Frank White. And you're listening to Turnbuckle Tabloid. Ladies and gentlemen, the answer to your prayers is here. My name is Ariella Nix, and you are listening to the Turnbuckle Tabloid. Turnbuckle Tabloid, cutting a promo. Cutting a promo, ladies and gentlemen, this week is All Out. Uh, the review and what we saw on our end. And boy, was it a doozy, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, guys, all all out was this past weekend, and usually we would discuss this in around the third circle. If my mic would uh, bear with me for a minute, but um, I think the show was so what's the word um, unreal <laughs> that we had we had we had to we had to bring it to cutting a promo because of the the, the, the just the night in general. Um, reviews are all over the place for the thing. Dave Meltzer, the, the AEW dick sucker, gave some matches Jesus some some God. matches Did four and a half that? stars on this show, wow. and I am lost for words because I don't think any match, maybe even maybe the main event, but I don't think any other match would have hit even three and a half in my opinion. Like, yeah, I, 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 it, I it's was, rough. I was astounded by that. I mean, honestly, 
Well, <laughs> we'll go over. We're gonna go over match by match. Uh, what we thought. Um, what we thought should have happened. What we liked. What we didn't like. Um, like I said before, we went. Um, the the phone lines are open on Skype, uh, ladies and gentlemen. So if you guys want to tune in, you can call in. You can. But uh, Red, before we talk about the show itself, what what were your expectations were all out? Being it's known as one of the most important shows. It's kind of like their WrestleMania in a way. That and Double or Nothing are like their SummerSlam and WrestleMania. So, well, honestly, I I I, I had high hopes for it because I thought the card was pretty decent. I, I thought it would have been a fun card to to watch. I did too. Uh, I I thought I thought look going into the show we had a couple of bang possible bangers with uh, Moxley and uh, and MJF. Um, tag team match here or there looked okay, but overall I was I was I was extremely excited for the main event and uh, did deliver. Well, let's talk about it. So, all out, ladies and gentlemen, was um, from Jacksonville, of course, like all of all places. Um, a lot more fans than usual. Uh, I guess they brought in more fans, like 50%, whatever the fuck they did. What happened? Yeah. They took us down? No, no, they took us down. They took it down the video. I was like, oh, shit. Right. Guess not, guys. I was going to give you guys some, some, some videos. To oh, look at. whoops. Well, uh, guess not. Guess not. F- uh-huh. Fuck it. Um, but I was, trying, I was trying some new stuff. Yeah, fuck it. I mean, listen, guys. All I had the debut of Thunder Rosa. We had uh, MJF, his first shot at the World <laughs> Championship. Nicole is like, oh yeah, they were bangers, all right. <laughs> yeah, they were. They were bang. Yeah, they, they, they were. Um, there was like one banger, and it wasn't even a bang. It was man. So, uh, let's go over the card, shall we? Um, so I'm, we'll skip the shitty ones. We'll go over our thoughts on the real important ones. Um, but the first match on the AEW's All Out was on um, the, the buy-in, which was Joey Janela defeating Sir Pentago on the pre-show. Uh, nothing to say here, but Red, um, are you a fan? Uh, you know what bothers me about these buy-in matches? They're all done last minute, and it's and it's. I think it's Tony Khan putting wrestlers in a hat and saying, "You and you blindfolded, you're facing each other tonight." Where the fuck did they think Joey Janela and Serpentico is a matchup <laughs> from the buy-in? When last year, last year the buy-in was actually, I don't know, important because that's what they want you to look at to buy the show. I, I The buy-in is meant for people to look at it and go, okay, I want to buy in. That is the reason. And guess what that match didn't make me want to do? Buy in. Um... Did they pull kind of a WWE pre-show with here? Like, it was Power Party defeating the Dark Order and um, Joey Janela defeating Sir Pentacle on the buy-in. Did they pull a WWE pre-show here where it's like, you are not helping your case at all? Yeah, pretty much. It, it, like you said, you... you, you all right, let me, let, me, let me go into something quickly before we go into this whole... Bonanza. The bonanza, what it is. I am... I've, I've gone to a point to where... And, and we, we had a conversation earlier during the week, and, and I have to say that I haven't been the most supportive of All Elite. <laughs> I mean, you're definitely not as worse as some other people I know, but you definitely keep, a, an, I think in my opinion, an eye to like criticism. But as well as you sh- – I'm not saying it's a bad thing. I'm just saying, you know, uh, sometimes we can think a little positive. No, no, I'm, I'm going to give you a reason why. Here's my reason why. When you finally make it to a level of professionalism, business, when you're out there creating a model of you becoming a bigger than life company yeah. or individual, you have to leave a lot of practices that you did from the past behind. For instance, uh, us here at Turbuckle Tabloid. We started off as, you know, put two mics on, connected to a computer, yada, yada, yada. We talk shit on the show. Then, after a while, you go, you know, we got to we gotta, we gotta make some changes. We got to make sure the audio is a little bit more crisper. We want to make it a little bit more streamlined, somewhat professional. Yeah, we, have to, we have to adjust. Yeah, you know, you got to start stepping it up because you're going to have eyes and ears paying attention to you. Uh, changing up logos, graphics, and, and you, you want to you, you wanna bring more entertainment to the, to the podcast. Don't sound so cookie cutter and be like that. So when you get to a certain level of a wrestler or a company, you want to show that you there's a reason why you're here. Yeah, 100%. When I see All Elite almost a year in, you would go, okay, when do we start leaving the indie shit back in the fucking indies? 
Because, like I said, it's okay because that's the audience that, you, you know, gravitates to you. Yeah. But somewhere along the line, you need to start putting together programs, angles, matches to where, guys, you don't look like you're in a fucking barn anymore or in a fucking bingo hall or so, in a fucking... So, so what you're saying is there has to be some sort of standards. There has to be some type of level... Listen, when you go when you're playing baseball, I, I'm sorry I'm giving too much examples, but I just want to No, do it. When you're playing baseball and you play you played little league, yeah. next league it got better because you had to get more competitive. How was when you buy when, how when you, high, you buy more equipment, right. you buy better equipment. You go into high school, you're playing more competitive. The guys are stronger, pitches are faster. You know, when you play, play college or minor league ball, guys are stronger, players getting faster, you get learn you're getting better techniques, the way to uh, eye a ball, way to make a play on a bag. This the, by the time you get to the major leagues, it's like all eyes are on you. Yeah. When you go when when I look at AEW, it's it reminds me of the Bad News Bears where they wow. just go to the fucking ring. There's no coach. Everybody's like, okay, we're just gonna do put matches together and just get right. it going. Right. And there's no structure. Well, um, a source told me that that it has been said that that AEW for the past couple of months has been just straight up wing, winging it. Do you think there's any truth to that? Of like Tony Khan just saying, you know what, guys, I trust you guys more than I trust me. Make a show. Oh, I, 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 could, I could see that definitely. I, I, I think that is, I think that actually can be true. Uh, I'm not confirming, confirming nothing, but if it's true, I wouldn't be shocked. Uh, I think, I think your point is, you're on TNT, ladies and gentlemen. I don't see NBA on TNT have a shitty set, and I don't think they have. I don't, I don't see them have a shitty. I don't think, they, I don't see Shaquille O'Neal in pajamas. Uh, you know, you gotta step up your game. So, Turbo Tablet, who's this? Turbo Tablet, who's this? Hey, what's up, King? What's up, Moose King? Marco! Marco! What's going on, Marco? <laughs> I miss you, Marco. I miss you, Marco. Hey, Marco, I just listened to a, a uh, Talk is Jericho this week with Thunder Rosa. We'll, do, we'll talk about it in uh, Around the Square Circle on, on Get Vocal. And I'm telling you, yeah. very interesting woman. Grew up in Tijuana. Did you know that? Yeah. Yeah. yeah she's very good. She grew up in Tijuana, left when she was 17 to the States, and blew up. And uh, one uh, person who partaked in, uh, in All Out this past weekend. So... What's your thoughts about our conversation where uh, pretty much where my, my stance is like, like I said, I'm not bashing all elite. I'm not bashing it. I just, I've got to a point where I expect them to be doing much more than what they're doing now. Because at the end of the day, you're on a major network. You're getting millions of viewers now. Which speaking of which, yeah, this week they hit, they hit a million. They hit a million, but yet it still looks like you're wrestling out of somebody's fucking backyard. What's your thoughts? Well, actually, uh, I agree with you. You know why? Because we expect, expect more of them because of the roster they have, the talent they have, and believe me, they can be way better than that. And they're just trying to fence over uh, WWE, man. They're depending on that. And they need to push the envelope. I mean, wrestling like the wrestling wise. And I think you're right. You're right. They need to push it a little bit more. And, uh, wow, they have the challenge, the, the quality of the wrestlers, and they can do better than that. Oh, no, believe me. They push the envelope all right. The problem is is that it's it, 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 it's sloppy. It's, it's, it's not put together properly. <laughs> and it looks, it, it, it looks as though that there isn't anybody who's really – being a a, a, lo, a, a, a a logical agent to these matches. And it just, I think All Out yeah. pretty much exposed them. Did you get to see All Out this past weekend? Yeah, I saw a little bit. And, yeah, you know what? They're doing things like, they're being, like, a little bit reckless. and Yeah, we'll get to that in a minute, the reckless the bullshit. Yeah. They're, they're, they're trying too hard. Maybe they're trying too hard to please the expectations of people. But you know what? They need to concentrate on doing well with the, with the matches, giving real quality. Instead of worrying about the ratings, they stop working on the quality of the show. Right. I um I have to say that, uh, and Olsky and I agree that when we came into to 
watch All Elite's um, All Out this past weekend. We were excited. We were hyped. We were like, oh, yeah, you know. It's always a fun time regardless over here, but we were, we were excited for a, a, a good night of wrestling, and unfortunately for me, it didn't turn out that way. Um, I don't know if, Marco, you could agree with me on, the, on this one here, but I think All Elite's biggest problem are three things right now. I think that they're focusing way too much on being petty towards WWE when they should be doing their own shit. I think that they're trying yeah. way too hard to do these crazy and reckless spots to get over and get some clout. They're basically doing what indie shows do to get clout, like the CCWs and fucking no offense um, to the people, family we know, the ICWs, that, where they yeah. try to do over-the-top bullshit to get a reaction. And I think the third problem comes down to there's no structure. Uh, how, how, why are these matches happening? You, you, you don't show off your ranking no more, and, the, and, and All Out proved that none of these matches mattered. The only match to, to me that truly mattered was Moxley and MJF because, yeah. it, because it was for the yeah. championship. Everything else, how are you not having Brody Lee defend that belt on All Out? Marco, and give me an eight-man tag of bullshit. Marco, what was your most disappointing match of that night? Um, I think it was Reed Walski. <laughs> I agree with him. Yeah, they, they were lacking on a lot of things. I mean, they're, they're wrestling like a, they're, I don't know, man. They're, they're doing such – they're dependent so much on the indie side – you need to get over that. And I agree with Oscar. That was a crappy, crappy, uh, uh, yeah, crappy well, thing. Who, 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 did you get to see the Thunder Rosa and, um, and uh, a Carl Sheeta match? Uh, I just saw a little bit. This girl knows how to do uh, that. That match, I think you should. I think you should. Um, I think you should watch. I, 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 I okay. think you should pay attention more to it. But Marco, thanks for calling in as always. Thank you for supporting. And Marco is a part of our Termical Tabloid Fantasy Football League. So, Marco, big yeah. games tomorrow. Yeah, I'm up, I'm up, I'm up tomorrow, man. They took away uh, Patrick Mahomes, but I got Tom Brady, man. <laughs> oh, good luck so, with listen, that. Listen, it's all good, bro. Tom Brady has some nice targets. Listen, it's a long week. It's a long week, and it's a long season. So, hopefully, COVID doesn't knock it out. But thank you, Marco, as always, for oh. calling in and supporting us. Thank you, and, Marco. Uh, showing us love, man. Thank you very much. Hey, man, take care of yourself, guys. And you know what? Always supporting you, Marco Tavlin. As always, sir, Marco! Lucky, Lucky. Marco, Marco, before, Marco, 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 my bad. Before you finish off your thing, I just want to say I'm sorry I didn't see your messages. I literally just saw them on Facebook, like while I'm on my phone looking at the comments. I did not know you messaged me, so I will make. I'll get back to you like now. I, I had a fucking car problem yesterday. I have, I didn't check my phone at night. My bad, bro. Yeah, he's a weirdo. Well, don't worry about it, man. And I need your address, guys, so I can send you your your teachers, man. Yeah, yeah, right. Can you please send him your address? Yes, I will. Because I, because I, uh, I don't um, I and, don't know exactly. And the send address. that sugar boogie. You know what I'm talking I, about. I, 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 I covered my part of the bargain, so yeah, yeah. Okay, you, I got you, bro. You got I'll send it to you, and make sure you send <laughs> you, 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 you send that you send you send that clavo, man. You send that clavo. We need that on this side. That clavo. <laughs> you got it, man. You got it. Thanks again, Marco. And, 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 and give us your salute. Latino heat. Thanks, Take care, guys. Later, Marco. Marco, I'm wearing Latino Heat shirt. Mook. So let's uh, let's do the runner. You had the Joey Janela. Let's go. And, Joey uh, Janela versus Serpentico, which I don't care who tells me what. That shit sucked and it didn't fucking matter. I don't. I, I, I don't. Uh, I Henry, don't. no offense to your comment on on the fucking chat. That makes no sense to me because they fought each other four times already, and I don't care every time. It's just okay. It's it was just it was a, a way to throw somebody on the, on the car. It was a filler match, and it was it it and 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 they made it last minute because of the fact that people online vouched for the fucking Britt Baker match to be on the main show. So they listened to the fans and they put that on the main show, leaving an empty spot for the fucking pre-show. I don't want to hear that it meant nothing. It meant nothing. It was a filler match meant for to fill a spot because they had to bring that match on the main show. Done. Up next, we have Private, Par- Private Party defeating the Dark Order's John Silver and Alex Reynolds. And I'm assuming we know who this is. Tom Roker Tablet, who's this? Yeah, this is Henry. Of course it is. The oh, man, Henry. the myth, the legend, Mr. Choke. Slam podcast himself, sir. Uh, <laughs> let's just get let's just get a quick rundown of this private party um, uh, dark order match. Guys. Yeah, let me just fin- let's finish this real quick. Um, yeah, just Red, quick. what's your opinion on dark, private party as Listen, of right now? All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna exclude the five years. Yeah, don't be biased with the House okay. of Glory. I'm gonna exclude the five years of knowing them and watching them and seeing them for all that time. I'm gonna exclude that. I'm going to go with what I've seen with them in this match in the past five years. And I'm going to say, honestly, somebody. Oh, God. Hold on, hold on. Oh, here we go. Somebody, oh, God. <laughs> somebody doesn't want me to say shit. <laughs> that's, um, that's House of Glory and I'm AEW. Hold on. <laughs> that's Brian. That's Brian. They, they're trying to cut me off. Okay, so. 
end up. <laughs> oh my god. Wait, hold on. Hold Brian on. don't want you to talk hey, about They don't want to talk about. Don't talk about my students, yo. Yo, I'm going to break that fucking mixer so badly. Yeah. You don't so, here know. we go. The past year, I have yet to see any progress and progression with this tag team. I'm sorry. Agreed. It's nothing. Uh, and for, I agree. For I JD, agree. And N- JD from NY, you fucking cocksucker. Yeah. You s- stop it. Stop. The day of the day of All Elite, and uh, we watched his review. The first thing is, great match. Love the guys. And I'm going, no. You're a House of Glory beef sucker. We know already. We dude, know you work for House of Glory. We love it. We love House of Glory too and all. But, dude, stop it. No. Yep. There is no progression. I love Joe, Sil- uh, Joe Silva and, and Alex Reynolds as well. They're New York guys as well. Yep. But, guys, this match was trash. Um, I'm over these Dark Order number guys get, get, getting a lot of these matches. Like On AW Dark, most of the matches are dedicated to the Dark Order number guys. Like the 5 and fucking... And, and now Anna J is 99. Like, uh, they skipped a lot of numbers. Uh, but <laughs> but, but, but to, to, to put it this way, that, that buy-in match, uh, yeah, it was kind of trashy. But part, private party, I don't know why they start, still trying to push them. A A W instead of pushing a uh, Mark Br- um Silver and Reynolds, Silver and Reynolds should have won that match. I don't know why the hell they put that in buy in when they should have put the uh, Swole and um, Britt Baker match. But they were like, oh no, because either one would have been trash. Either one was Star bad, was but good. it's because be- no. Be- here's the thing, Henry. They they people were vouching for the cinem- the Britt Baker match to go on the main card because not because of the of how the match was or if it was good or not. They said that they wanted the people who worked hard, which they didn't really, but, you know, just to be nice, the people who worked on the cinematic part of the match to get credit on the main show. They didn't want the work they put into the dentist office be, to be thrown on a buy-in on YouTube. They thought that the yeah. they thought that the production should have been shown on the main show just to give them um, kudos and give them a tip of the hat going, you know what, regardless if this is good or not, I appreciate you guys recording this and trying. Red, do you, do you think that's a viable reason? No. Hell no. Uh, no. Yeah, well, well, well. The way I the way I look at it, I, you know, AEW needs to fucking stop worrying about what WWE is doing because they did the cinematic stuff and don't promote don't promote the fucking match between Swole and Britt Baker like it's actually going to be in the ring when it turns out it was cinematic out of nowhere and Britt Baker wasn't ready to be in the ring to begin with. But well, well, um, well, uh, well, we might as well just okay. skip to the front to to skip to that because that was the opening match of, of that the, was the, yeah pay per view um, and when. When you got us sitting there watching this shit and we're looking at each other like, I need fucking Novocaine right now. <laughs> I need motherfucking some kind of anesthesia yeah, because this shit, is bad. this shit needs to be over with. I will give a kudos to Reba. I found it hilarious. I was laughing my ass off. It was funny. I got to give him that. I, I want to say that it. it was funny, but it was terrible. I mean. Reba was funny. Yeah, well, you know, I like Reba's I, I, interaction. You know, that's where Reba, Reba makes it funny. I put it that way. But let me, you know, I don't want to stay too long on the phone to let you. Uh, I just want to let you know that that uh, that 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 all out this year was not. I can't say horrendous, but it was bad. It was one of the worst pay per views they ever had. I don't know if you guys heard my uh, my my review on that. Um, it was just like once Matt Seidel fell off the damn freaking corner, everything went down the toilet, and it was just like. Yep. And my most of match was the most boring freaking match in the whole all out. Yep. And I was just disappointed. And I thought actually MJF was going to win the belt, but it, it was just, uh, let me put it this way. It was disappointing that the pay per view was disappointing. Well, no, I, I could tell you when um, the, the pay per view went to shit. It was when the fireworks went off before the first match. That's when the fucking. Wow. Happened. That's wow. when they, they got to. The, with the what? When the fireworks went off before the first match because that's when they went to oh, yeah. shit. And those fucking yeah. p- those fireworks from Pennsylvania. That's when you get that shit from right before you get to fucking Poconos. Uh, yeah, he's like those Poconos. <laughs> <laughs> go to the Poconos. Uh, fucking uh, the yeah. Dutch country fucking fireworks. Like, get the fuck out of here. But Henry, thanks for calling in as always, sir. Thanks Thank for you, Henry. Man. No problem, Bubba. All, All right. right, man. Have a good show. Later. Later. So, um, listen, the, the, you know, Britt Baker and Big Swole, Big Swole defeated Dr. Britt Baker in a tooth and nail match by, um, no, by using, um, I think it was knockout gas. Yeah. Yeah. It was knockout gas. Um, I think it was a really bad start to the show. I think it was, um, I do, I do agree with the, why they should have put on the main card though. I know you don't agree with that. You don't think it's a liable reason enough, but that's like, 
uh, even if it was good or bad, like to just to, just to show the respect to the people who filmed it, and like you know, just a, a little tip of the hat, a little like um, listen, think of uh, what else was what is going to be in the buy-in? Nothing. So, um, Britt Baker, of course, is a star. Big well, you could well, actually, you, if you wanted to start up the fucking pay per view, like you started off all your other fucking um TV shows, but. Fucking private party versus the Dark Order as the first match. Uh, I just don't think it has any purpose. Uh, it, it, it doesn't have any purpose. Neither did this shit. So what was next? Burt Baker and, Br- and Big Swell at least have a story though going. Like at least it like had like not anymore. <laughs> well, now it's dead. But like they had a story going on for months. So I mean, of course they're gonna try to put on the main card. I mean, I don't, I don't, I'm not, I'm not mad at that. I'm mad at just them being lazy, and I'm mad at the fact that I hate to say it, Big Swell is not that good, like at all. Uh, it, 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 Big uh, Burt Baker is a star though. Up next, we had the Young Bucks defeating the Jurassic Express to receive a future shot at the AEW Tech Titles. Why? Because I don't know. <laughs> Every week, there's a match, and the winner will become the number one contender. What happened to your rank system? Meltzer. You, I, I didn't see this because go, so you go ahead because I was I was with best friend Mel- having a conversation. Meltzer so. gave this a four point two five rating. Yeah, because anything with the Young Bucks in it, he what jizzes over. Exactly. Are you fucking? This was a mess. I, like oh, I said, I didn't see this mess. one, so the stage is yours on this one. Oh, my God. Hey, listen, I get it. You guys are trying to put the Young Bucks into this heelish turn that's going on. Yep. And I'm going to be honest with you. You don't really need to try that hard. They're fucking douchebags. Naturally, they're natural douchebags. Yeah, I heard they're not nice people in real life. I don't Even if they're in real life, they're not. They're just natural-looking douchebags. You just... You want to punch them in the you mouth. You see them. They don't look tough. They, you, you, you don't really believe that they can fight. I've, I said that they're just acrobatic gymnasts who got into the wrestling game. And it's, it, it's correct. Fucking Matt Jackson doesn't sell for shit. Nothing. Nada. This dude is Goldberg, son. I mean, I, I, <laughs> wow, he's a he's amazing. I'm sick he's t- so I'm, strong. I'm sick and tired of people getting Canadian destroyer, or whatever the fuck you want to say. Get getting hit with the Canadian destroyer, oh and then God. get right back up for the super kick. Wait till we get around the square circle and get vocal this week. Jesus Christ, the Canadian destroyer from hell during this week's episode of fucking All Elite. Yikes. Um, <laughs> Um, Young Bucks did defeat Jurassic Express, so they're the new number one contenders, I guess. Oh, my God. It was dreadful. Spot after spot was all over the place. Uh, what the fuck happened to Luchasaurus? My yeah. God. His magic went away. He can't even fucking land any kicks anymore. Nope. Because, and when he does, it's just boring. I and, li- I love, and I love Luchasaurus. And I do believe there's a hope for him to come back and be better. But right now, it's he's in a stalemate where he's like, I think he's tired. Yo, any, yo if I see any more false finishes during a fucking Young Bucks match, I swear, <laughs> I'm going to take a razor and slit their wrist. Because I'm not slitting mine. So you're going to murder someone. I'm going to slit their wrist. <laughs> so you're going to murder someone. Jesus um, So, well, real quick, what are your thoughts on the on the, por- the AEW's portrayal and push of shoving the tag team division down our throats? I because love, I, because I love if it. I get one more tag team match to open up AEW Dynamite, I'm gonna kill myself. I, I know love. that's that's a that's fucking that's not legit. I'm being fucking figurative yeah, with it. I love tag team matches, but, but every fucking week, not every fucking week to start a show, bro. It's the opener to it's NXT does NXT opens up with women. And then AW opens up with tag team matches. You went unopposed this week. NXT yep. was on Tuesday. You went unopposed. I think they hit eight hundred thousand. You could have. Uh, well, remember, uh, um, to be technically NXT had had made more because they aired twice. They aired yeah. on NXT uh, on USA on Tuesday, then on Wednesday they aired on Sci Fi. Yeah. But in any case, um, you went unopposed. You, all you had to do was just start the show with introductions. You already went in on a. Fu- We'll we'll get to that, but it's 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 obnoxious. I already know what you could have started off with. You could have started off dynamite this week with fucking like uh, with a with a, with with a, something else. Uh, I'll, t- I'll, t- I'll talk about round square. So I don't want to yeah. spoil that now. So up next we had the casino battle royal uh, with a bunch of tag teams and pointless people. Uh, <laughs> I really and I don't want to sound negative because like I was uh, happy with a few people in this match, like Brian the Brian Cage's, the Lance Archers, the. Uh, the even the Eddie Kingston's. I was I was okay with some of these guys in this battle royal, but. When every single member is a part of a tag team or a stable, it gets boring. Lance Archer, Lance Arch, Lance Archer at the end wins the Casino Battle Royal to win once again to receive a future AEW World Championship match, and the crowd goes. For me, I'm okay with it, but I know some people don't. So well, this is a good point and fuck your point. Uh, but before we do that, do a quick highlight, a few quick highlights here. The Joker card was Matt Seidel and. 
Wufa. Can uh, you can't play that, right? Because we're gonna fucking kicked off. What's uh, that? The Matt Seidel fucking blotch. You can't play that, can you? Ah, it doesn't matter, man. I know probably people have seen it thousands of times. Uh, so Matt Seidel comes out. We're all. It's the greatest story ever. We're all dying, marking out, going the third eye, third eye in the in the room, and all of a sudden he gets up and banana peels and almost dies because if he didn't catch his arm on the rope, he would have fucking bashed his head in. Okay, now this go- this is going to lead to once again what I've been saying before about stepping your game up and doing stuff. It's 100 degrees with the humidity, which yeah. means there's moisture all over the oh, place. Oh, it's hot as fuck over there. Dude, you got to be fucking responsible. I mean, you know, this is what I'm saying. They run like a fucking indie show. Yep. Stop having these fucking matches so fucking long. It doesn't make any sense. And how about you clean the, the shit after each fucking match? Each match is like the fucking Godfather movie. It's too damn long. And then clean up after it. Yeah. You know, I, mean, I, I know we were talking about before where... I mean, um, I, I know that Isaac was here talking about, you know, the guys come out and they're wet and they're fucking dumping water. Or they are, they are. Which, that doesn't help either. It doesn't help, but they, but, they do do that. But the moisture, the humidity, and that people in the, in the stadium, they were fucking dying. They, 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 they were, it was in an open arena and it was still hot as balls there. You could just see how moist the room was, the, the building was. When that out came out, he was already fucking dripping in sweat. Yeah, it's well, like, Jesus. Uh, you know, for all the people out there who have long hair, they always dump... They always dump their fucking he- uh, head with water and shit. But let's even go to the other fucking spot. You put... Oh, you don't put get me started Darby with that. Allen. That's the biggest... That's the worst spot I think I've ever seen in the company. You put this kid in a body bag with, with thumbtacks. Thumb you pick him up and blindly throw you, him. You razor's edge him out the ring, and then you see him, like, hit his neck. Towards the fucking steps. You know that fucking... Um, um, what's his name? Uh, um, Ravishing Rick Rube ended his career that way in Japan. And you did it. Because for clout. That way, it, it's crazy. And I don't but care. Not, and, not and, that and, he was in a body bag, but he got slammed yeah. onto steps like that. And, and I'm sick and tired of people saying, well, that's Darby Allen's idea. It's called shooting something down. I think Tony Khan has a real problem shooting down ideas because he, wants, he doesn't want to be like Vince. I have to break the news to you, Tony Khan. You have to be a fucking leader. You have to be an owner. You have to make decisions. You have to say if something's good or not. You have to say if something is legitimately... Um, okay to do or not and I think that's the problem with Tony Khan right now he's scared to say no he doesn't want a toxic environment like Vince and he doesn't want to say no so Darby Allen comes up to him with all these fucking risk stunt bullshits and what does he say I trust you Darby you got that I don't care who you are I don't care what company you're a part of I don't care what promoter you are if I see you do that spot that they do with Brian Cage and Darby Allen I will stop watching you that is dangerous. It's reckless. Darby Allen could have broke his neck easily. And might I add thumbtack, um, 40 thumbtacks were rattling in that bag. This is what I'm fuck, saying. Fuck AEW for that. And I didn't even realize that that was even a spot until like a few days ago because I wasn't I, – I think I, I, mean, I blinked or checked my phone or something. That – it's a disgrace to professional wrestling. But this is the thing. It's a disgrace. They, they don't want. They don't want to look like the bad guy. Sometimes That's what you I'm gotta saying. be a. Fucking, Tony Khan doesn't want to say no. You gotta be the principal. You gotta be the fucking the boss and be like, no, we're not taking a spot yeah. like that. It, it, it's Which, ridiculous. I think. I think Tony Khan's getting a lot of heat right now for him not being a fucking businessman and saying yes or no. He's saying yes to everything. Oh Jesus Christ! The, the fucking Eddie Kingston spot with the with the fucking Jake the Snake moment. Yeah. What the? Yeah, I don't know what. Yeah. Was that? Yeah. Eddie Kingston from the mean streets of New York City is afraid of a fucking snake. Okay. I'm done. And see, a, we a see him in a bag. We see him all the time with the L train. I have um, exactly. <laughs> you got guns pull out on him. He's like, "What, pa? I'll eat that bullet, son." Yeah, but but no. a snake. Yeah. snake. Get that shit away from me. <laughs> Get the fuck out of. What are you, fucking Indiana Jones? Get the yeah. fuck out of here. What are your thoughts on Lance Archer winning? Because a lot of pe- a lot of people 50-50. People say your I think your argument is that you saw it in Japan. Right. My opinion, I'm a fan of Lance Archer, so I'm not mad at it. And I do think it gives the people who watch in the States an opportunity to watch that match. So, I, go ahead. That part I'll get, but then the other thing I said, well, you know what you just did? You pretty much told me the ending of the fucking uh, Moxley and, and MJF fight with him winning. Which is? Who won the match? You wasn't going to put MJF versus fucking... That is match. true. That is you know, true. Gonna, that was, you, you, got, you had a point You there. just told me that. That is true. But is around true. the square circle, I will, I will um, discuss what I figured, what I thought should be the, the better finish and the better way of hooking that up. But we'll continue because that, that was a fucking travesty. Once again, and, somebody and it, needs to be fucking more responsible. Yeah, they do. And I think this was the worst casino battle royal they've had. Yeah. It was a bunch, of, a bunch of misfits, a bunch of tag teams and stables, and it was reckless bullshit. As 
as goofy as the the first one was, that was probably this my took the favorite. Cake. Yeah, that yep. was my favorite. The rest have gone but to shit. I even like when Orange Cassidy debuted, and everyone's like, "Who the fuck is this guy?" Right. Like it was funny, it was entertaining. The this rest- was a bunch of nobody members of a stable. I'm sorry, but this whole Eddie Kingston Butcher Blade shit is not working for me. I, oh, please, I'll get to that later. Um, a bunch of tag teams. You don't fill a battle royal with tag teams. That's like filling the entire Royal Rumble with the New Day, John Morrison, and the Miz. No one likes those spots. Right. So um, do me a favor and never do that again. Next up. Um, next we had uh, – oh, oof. Matt Hardy. Oof. Uh. Defeats Sammy Guevara in a broken rules match. Uh, just to do a quick synopsis here. And, Red, you could tell me how you think after. Basically, the match goes on for 10 minutes. They go to, a t- they go to the top of a – uh, uh, go to a top of a, top of a, of a fucking what is it like a fucking forklift or something like yeah, that? Yeah, it's like one of those elevated and, elevated lifts. And magically, coincidentally, a random merch table is in the middle of the backstage area where with fans masks. can't even go. Which fans can't even go that right. over there. With masks. Well, I want to point that out. A random merch table where nobody could even go buy the merch. There wasn't even a person there, like, selling the shit. Right. It was a random table, like, magically poof, it's there. I would have loved to have seen somebody at least standing there and just going, ah, and then run away. Yeah, exactly. Shit. That would nope. make it better, but nope, you didn't even give me that. Nope. Um, Sammy Guevara spears Matt Hardy off that, which you would expect, that's the finish. Not even. Matt Hardy misses the table, ends up getting concussed. Um, um, referee Aubrey throws up the X. Uh, and we're over here in the room going, what the fuck? Red, what were your thoughts when you saw Matt Hardy, like, stumbling? I thought he was I, – actually, before he was knocked out, I, I mean, when he was knocked out, he looked like he was turning colors. He looked like he was blue. Yeah, someone, you said he was purple or yeah, some shit like that. Yeah, he looked like he was fucking changing colors. And you already knew. He's not – Oh, by the way, he found cement, hard concrete. I'm telling you. It, I'm, come on. It, I've played football on concrete. I've banged my head. Oof, on Luckily, concrete. I've Smart, been, bad idea, bro. Luckily, I've I've never been concussed. Not that I know of, but I've never been concussed. But yeah, that is that's not something you get up from, and it's like, yeah, I'm doing. Oh sh- no, fuck this! You're fucked from ten feet up. Yeah, yeah, and he missed completely. His head, he went He's bomb. Lucky he didn't bust his fucking head open. He could have cracked his brain. Uh, he he could have got some brain damage and from fucking that. Fluid could have came out of that yep. shit. So. Um, Matt Hardy, um, you know, the match is over, throws up the X, Sammy Guevara looks stunned uh, at what's going on, and all of a sudden, um, the camera turns away to the commentary team because the match is supposedly over. Wrong. Uh, Matt Hardy goes in the back, and basically the referee goes, are you okay? And he goes, yeah, just let me do the finish. No, the doctor. The doctor goes, you all right? Which, by the way, you didn't do concussion protocol on that shit. No. I'm He's, telling you, he went like this. How many numbers, are, how, many, how many fingers I got up? Apples. Oh. He's good. Let's go. <laughs> Get the match going. Exactly. Uh, so, and all of a sudden, the camera pans back to Matt Hardy looking drunk and concussed as fuck. Going, <laughs> he wh- looked like Jeff. Look like Jeff Hardy and Sting. <laughs> um, exactly. and, and, and Matt Hardy, um, and and he they, they finish the match, and they just go to the finish, which was Sammy Guevara clearly helping Matt Hardy get to the top of the fucking thing. Like, literally lifting him up to go to the top, and Matt Hardy just pushes him off. In, onto a crash pad that's clearly a pillow fort, and the match is over. Red, what are your thoughts on the Matt Hardy and Sammy Guevara situation? Because not only was Rebby Hardy pissed about how they treated Matt Hardy, the whole wrestling world was pissed off at the fact that they took a concussed person's word. I don't care what you say. I don't care. I, I told Tommy in Royal Collectibles this. When the X is thrown by the referee, that's shoot. The match is done. I don't care if you tell me you're okay. I don't tell. I don't care if you do a backflip before me. Say, look, I'm fine. The match is fucking over. Red, what are your thoughts on this fucking thing? I explained it to a, a wrestling group when they was like, I, if he said he can go, he can go. I was no. like, no. Let me explain something to you. In sports, if a player is is hit, be it football, be it baseball, in the head, they have to take a playoff. Yep. And they go through concussion protocol. Yep. They go to the back. What until they are allowed to come back. And, they don't. It doesn't take three fucking minutes. Nope. No. He. The match should have been over. Dead. It. It's over. You can. That. That. That fucking feud has been cursed yeah. since day one. I think. They, I think. They, I think. They. He just said that he's done with it. Which, by the way, what are your thoughts on people online saying that the reason why they think it was okay for Matt Hardy to continue was because of the old school mentality where I finish the match no matter what. Which quote, which, which, which side note, was actually the reason why Enzo was, and, and Big Cass stopped being friends. Because remember, Enzo expected him to finish the match. Right, right, right. So what are your thoughts on that whole mentality of, I don't care what it is, you're a wrestler and you finish the match. It's irresponsible and it's not your call. 
at the end of the day, somebody has to big be the big person and say, you know what, you're not going back out there. It's just like a boxer. Yep. If somebody's getting their ass whipped too bad like that, stay down. it's up to the corner to say, you know what, you're not, you're not able to fight anymore. It's just like in UFC. That's it. Wave him off. He can't fight anymore. you got to stop it. And Should we hold these again? guys in the back responsible? Of because course. Because Tony Khan is really not showing me that he's being a real leader here. <laughs> Clearly, he just – Matt Hardy went up to him and said, let me do the finish. And he goes, you know what, man? Go ahead. Matt Hardy was going to drive home by putting his fucking uh, carry into the ignition and drive. Yeah. He didn't know what the fuck <laughs> he was at. He was done. He was, he was and, done. And, and then he tried getting up, and he stumbled right back to the floor like a fucking puppy out, he out looked, of bed. He looked, de- he looked dead on his feet. No, this irresponsible. Sorry. Once, no. a, once again, another irresponsible thing on but AEW. But you know what? You know what? AEW gets a, and this is the shit that pisses me off because they got a fucking pass. Because fine, some Not people gave, some people gave them a little backlash, but if it was fucking WWE, they'd have be been an crucified. Investi- they'd have been getting an investigation going yep. on about that yep. shit. Vince would be and crucified. I hate doing that 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 that, that comparison shit, no, but, but it's, it's true. so fucking true. They get a fucking pass. That's what I'm telling you. You need to stop with the indie shit and grow a pair of fucking balls and be a fucking re- uh, responsible owner yep. uh, and, and and you know stop. Pulling the reins back on these guys. Uh, I will say to finish off this um, this match, uh, shame on the, everyone in the back. And, 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 and shame on everyone for – even Aubrey said, I threw the X up. It's done. That's how wrestling works. I don't know if you guys know behind-the-scenes bullshit. If you're listening to this, maybe you're just a fan um, who doesn't know like the behind-the-scenes. If the referee throws up the X, the match is done. He can no longer compete. That is not a part of storyline. The X is never a part of a gimmick. When you throw up the X, what does that mean, Red? He can no longer compete. Match over. So if the match is over by the referee's rules, you're going to overrule the referee and make him go, go to the finish, which is which was a taller drop yeah, than that, that spot. That should have been the finish. That should have been the fucking finish, the fucking concussed spot, and it, and it wasn't. So AEW, once again, shame on you for a terrible segment. Um, someone said that Matt Hardy's having the most abysmal year in his career, and I, and I just see he had an abysmal few months, like a couple of months with that. With that, Sim and that Sammy just on. can't melt gel. Yeah. It's just not working, and I, I'm happy that it's done with. Um, Rebby Hardy was pissed. Which, by the way, what do you think about the whole Tony Khan covering up the fact that he was concussed? Because he knows he's fucked up. He knows he's fucked. I want up. I, 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 that was a wrestling rundown, but I want your quick opinion on the, on the whole Rebby Hardy uh, back and forth on Twitter. I'm like, glad t- she, t- t- I'm t- glad t- she did. T- it. Tony Khan was like, "Thankfully, he's not concussed." Rebby said, "Oh, really? Because I um, I'm with him right now, and he is." What are your thoughts on the Tony Khan clearly, like, blatantly lying to fans, not knowing that Rebby would blow his shit up? Because they knew he fucked up. They he knew he knew he fucked up. He knew it. Yep. And Rebby was not gonna let that shit slide. Then good for her. That's what that's a ride or die wife. Yo, right she's there, in man. love, son. Fuck. She she's in love, you boy. You don't fucking do that shit. And what are you what are you gonna do? You gonna bit you gonna bitch her out? You crazy? She'll chew your ass up and fucking feed you to the dog. Yeah, facts. So up next we had AEW Women's Championship matches of Hikaru Shida. Defeated Thunder Rosa to retain the AEW Women's Championship. And in surprise fashion, with the shitty show that we've gotten tonight, I mean, on this card, this match was actually not that bad. I felt bad for them. I felt them. bad for them because they were in a bad spot right after the Matt Hardy situation. I felt bad for them because even in that on the card, they shouldn't have been there. They should have been after the Battle Royal. Yeah, agreed. Right. And there was a better they, spot for them. That was a better spot for them. Even, even before this shit happened, they should have been behind um, the Battle Royal. And... Uh, they had they had them go long, you know. They they had to they, they had to make up. They time. went way too long. They didn't make up time for the Matt Hardy, which they went forty. They went thirty minutes, pa. Yeah, that's 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 too much. And once again, shame on Tony Khan. You could have easily just cut the show short. You didn't have to say, "Hey, ladies, we gotta keep, we gotta we gotta we gotta we gotta make this shit go forty minutes now because of Matt Hardy situation." No, but you know, once again, the fucking which you could have put more time on the main event. The the yeah. every match got to be the fucking Ten Commandments on ABC, bro. I'm telling you. <laughs> wow, it's, good it's, reference. It's fucking good long. Re- it's long as shit, man. It's yeah. Long. If AWB get bored quickly with dude, if you wanted to watch All Elite that day, it started at five thirty. It didn't finish until almost twelve. Yeah. Oh, but it's their WrestleMania with uh, with a no, show. No, it's not. It's not their WrestleMania. It's not. But double or nothing is. But apparently, this is their WrestleMania. All out. Well, all out is because now. Um, Full gear is gonna is like their backlash. Oh, whatever. I, I I'm like I, I, that, that. I'm sorry, but those two women deserved better. They did, and I think they have. They should get a more a uh, better, better. They should get a second chance at a at a match. Yeah, they should. Um, Hikaru Shida retains, and like I said, they did good for what they had to deal with because they were told probably five minutes before they went out there to go do forty minutes. Yeah. So you can't expect much from that. Up next, we had. Oh, jeez. We had um, Dustin Rhodes, Matt Cardona, Scorpio Sky, and QT Marshall defeating the Dark Order 
do we have to speak about this? What are your quick thoughts on this whole <sighs> defending Cody's in the honor match? Because oh. I'm not going to lie, I don't even remember watching that. Yo, the oh, only, I actually went out, so I, I didn't watch it. The only bright spot in that match was Cole Cabana. The only one. The Why only, is that? Because yeah, he, Tell me, because I actually didn't watch. I was actually, yeah, I remember. I went to the store. Because he's the only one in there that looked like he was doing something that was relevant. Even Dustin looked like he was out of his element. I don't think they wanted to be a part of it. Uh, I think after the whole mess that happened previous, I think they were over it. It just, it just didn't click. It wasn't, it wasn't there. It, I, I, I'm, I'm sorry. And it, even Colt being in, in the dark order. Yeah. It's fucking goofy now. It's yeah. weird. Yeah. I hope that it's a kind of storyline to where it's gonna be that he's trying to infiltrate them from the inside and trying to break them up. But yep. other than that, at least he, hey, at least they were matching this time. They had they had matching attires. Um, I'm happy. Um, I'm happy that Matt Cardona was on the show, but um, it was it was just a fucking even it, it, all that is just it was a payday fucking match just to throw guys in there. Yeah, yeah, it it, it really was. Um, it's it's fucking it, it's 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 actually really fucking annoying. Um, oh shit. Oh, okay, never mind. I I thought we had some breaking news, but we don't. Oh. Randy Orton just announced he has his own his own clothing line called Slither. Ooh. For the Ven- for the for the Viper. For the Viper in you. Yes, the Viper in you. <laughs> Slither for the Viper in you. Uh, up next, we had the AEW Tag Team Championships, as we had FTR defeating Kenny Omega and Hangman Page to become the new champions. Um, once again, I don't think it was that bad of a match. I don't think it was that bad of a match. Better than what the shit we got. Once again, too long. Um, I do like the ending with with how Kenny fucking lost his shit on Hangman being a drunk and stuff like that. But I, I once again another one of these fucking young buck kind of fucking guys that I yep. I don't believe you as a, as a the only time I believed and I loved Kenny in as in a hero was when he was the cleaner. And Which he, he said the cleaner's back. He posted on Instagram today. He was the cleaners officially back. But he doesn't. It, 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 I don't. I don't see it here. It's like, not the same it, anymore. I, I, don't, I, I don't, miss you in Japan, Kenny. Yeah, and once again, he's another one that you look at him and you go, "Yeah, you might be fit or whatever, but I can fuck you up." Like honestly, I, I really, I think I can slap the shit out of you, and you're not gonna do anything about it. Wow. I don't buy you. No, I don't I, get it. I don't either. I don't um, get it. I'm happy to see FTR win the belts, but, though. But the worst is the Adam Page fucking makeup, making them a... <laughs> listen. They're trying to go Broadway here, ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages who listen to Turnbuckle Tabloid. If you have not, if you have not watched the live streams or heard the show, I'm a fucking drunk. I drink. I'm I love drunk. my beers. I love to get inebriated. I don't look like that when I'm fucking drinking. He he got fucking red eye fucking makeup to make him look. He looks um what's the word? Uh, uh sullen and sad and depressed. Drunks don't get depressed. Drunks will either get angry, obnoxious, or the funniest motherfuckers in the room when they're drunk. They don't get sad and depressed. What the, he looks like um. Oh, what's the name of that fucking movie? It's with Nicolas Cage back in the nineties. Oh um, uh leaving Las Vegas. That that was a fucking sad drunk. Any drunks that I know, they they like I said, obnoxious, mean, or fucking or the funniest people in the room. I, had, was, I think Hangman um has shown that that seen what like, he so, was, I think sometimes he has. He was happy drunk in the beginning. He's yeah. turned into now I'm trying to be fucking I, I I need to be in an AA meeting kind of fucking drunk now. Well now I'm, I'm No I'm, no not even AA. I need um uh, uh to listen to my chemical romance or some shit like that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I am excited to see how they both they're, they're both going singles though. I think it's needed and I think that I think that they have too many tag teams now, uh, which we'll talk about in round the square circle, but um Kenny and Hangman, the breakup has officially happened. I hope you're all happy. The JDs out there who wanted this thing to happen, it's it's done. Yeah, but the other thing is that now it's it, it's a telenovela now because uh, now it's like uh, I lost my best friend and uh, well, Kenny Omega now stormed out into his big limo. He tried bringing Young Bucks with him, but with, uh, with the uh, the elite turning heel now, I guess there's a better way to do it. There you is. Got, uh, it's lazy. It's lazy. They're terrible. bad storytelling. And they're bad actors. It's terrible. Yeah, Young oh. Bucks are really bad actors. Oh God. Um, up next we had Orange Cassidy defeating Chris Jericho in the Mimosa Mayhem match. I know a little bit was excited for that for this one, but uh, I'll be honest with you, it it, it sucked. <laughs> it was boring. It was boring. Orange Cassidy and Chris Jericho. We've seen it twice in the past month. Um, I don't want to see a three-peat in the same month. I'm good. Um, Orange Cassidy, of course, wins, going two over one over Chris Jericho, which is fucking unbelievable. And, and, and Ryan Sat made a good point on, on Twitter this, this past week. He said, I'm sorry. 
you can make you can make Orange Cassidy face Jesus. He is never going to be a main event star, and he doesn't have the build. He doesn't have the look. I don't care what you tell me. He goes. He will never be a Chris Jericho kind of. But that's star. the purpose, because all elite they pay too much fucking attention to social media, and they just want to prove people wrong. Like you, they saw how over he was in fucking outlaw wrestling. You know who and shit. looked good in that tw- in that fucking battle royal, and I said that fucking kid got something. Ricky Starks? No, well, Ricky Starks. That's another guy. But um, what's his name? The, the um, uh, Will Will Hobbs. Oh yeah, no, yeah, I love him. I'm, I'm, I'm Hobbs. Just I'm gonna call him Hobbs. But I, I, that I know you're talking fucking about. The, the, kid looks good. He's Big E. He looks like Big E. That's not yeah. racist or nothing. He looks like he has like the Big E fucking stature. He looks he, great. That kid looks like a fucking star. Yes, if he, he does. Him up. And I saw your f- post about him doing the fucking um ru- the um, the running power slam. I'm gonna, uh, off the turnbuckle. On, on dark, yeah. yeah. Dude, like I've, I've been saying that for weeks now. This dude on dark is impressive. This whole shit. is... That dude, you could push to become yeah, a star. This, this, but this shit with Cassidy is it's just to fucking prove the name. Is yeah, wrong. it is. It's a big pissing contest. He has more merch than Cody on on AEW's shop. Oh, come, on. come on, and and, and you know what? It's, it's because and, and uh, it's because the the casual wrestling fans they think it's 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 a cool gimmick. Fine, and that's what you want to grab to, but you don't fucking make him a star. You don't fucking put him in the main. And then what happened? Then what you did next week? When you did the following week on on, on Dynamite? Come on, man. Anyway, which I, wanna... Wait, I knew fucking Cassidy was gonna win. Yeah, it's I obvious. thought that the ending was shitty. Um, it was boring. And Jericho, we, all, we all knew someone was going through the orange juice. Jericho, I get it. You're a really fucking good guy. You've done so much yeah, for the no, business. I'm not mad at Jericho here. No, but no, no, I am because he fucking booked this. I know, but I, 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 I just, I, I know his, I know his, his, I know his intentions here. And regardless if they succeed or not, <laughs> little bit is like that match was magic. <laughs> yeah, was it uh, magically terrible? Um, it, was, it was magically delicious. Yeah, um, I'm not mad at Jericho because I know what his intentions are. You shut the fuck up, Olsky. Who said that? <laughs> little bit. Oh, what about that match sucking ass? Yeah, it was terrible. <laughs> it was fucking awful. It was boring as fuck. Uh, you shut the fuck up. And Orange Cassidy is not a star at all. Um, he's a good mid Carter. I could. That's fine with me, but not me. Even if you want to throw him that fucking TNT title, fine, whatever. But Jesus, and make Christ. a make a denim strap, yeah, uh, some shit like. Jesus. But here's the thing: um, I'm not mad at Jericho for the reason that I know his intentions are true. I know he means well. I know that he he sees people, you know, um, hating and shit, and and, and I, I know that he wants to put over to the young guys. At the end of the day, if it's successful or not, it's a different story. But I get what he's doing. I can't be mad at that. He's trying to be the veteran to go. You know what, man. I want to put you over. Can't be mad at that. Right. Can't. Uh, you can't. He looked. He took a fucking loss in orange juice because he wants to help another kid out. Yeah, because he like, knows what he, he said. He knows what he said. Look, I got my title. I already had my title run. Now yep. I got until which leads into the next fucking thing in dynamite, which is like. Oh uh, yeah, I know. Fuck. Don't get me started. Right. Now, I think now he wants to put over private party and other young tag teams oh, because God. I guess or oh. whatever. But. Um, and, and finally, we had John Moxley, probably the best match of the night, in my opinion. Um, can't say much about that because, wow, the whole show sucked. But John Moxley defeats MJF to retain the AEW World Championship due to um, using the paradigm shift behind the referee's back. We all saw that coming. Uh, what are your thoughts about the main event? I thought it was the I thought it was the most impressive match of the night. I have to say, MJF I have, could sell like a motherfucker. And I have to give kudos to MJF. He fucking cut himself real bad. Yes, he did. And, and he never really does that. So. And he doesn't. Yeah. And the. Um, the spot with Warlow was a very lucky spot because he almost fucking threw that ring out, out the, 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 the diamond ring outside yes, of the Yes, he did. Ring. I saw I almost, almost messed that yeah, one up. Yeah, he almost fucked that up. But great spot. Um, uh, I thought the – look, when you got, when you got a blood feud, um, pun intended, going on, yep. I want to see both the guys go off. Right? I, I want to see right off the bat them going off. But they started off with you know showing technical skills, showing a wrestling match. I, I think that was MJF really trying to show that Moxie can wrestle. But as always, it goes back to what I've been saying for the longest time, and I said it jokingly, but now it's become fucking true. I brought it into fruition. Um, he's Stone Cold John Moxley. It, 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 yeah, it is. He's, he is. That's he's what Stone it is. Cold now. And um, it, I'm not going to say it's wearing thing because that's his gimmick, but we know that he can wrestle. We've seen him do it. We've seen him do so. But now he's um he's the brawler guy and uh, I'm okay with it though. It's it's fine. I, I I thought that it brought the match to another level, and then we get the end, which was definitely like we called it. We say he's gonna he, he used it, and, and it, it steamed to another part of uh of them using on social media. But like I said, the win the the the, the winning of the battle royal of Lance Archer just basically 
set up the win to everybody knowing that Moxley was going to win. And I actually didn't realize that until today. So I thank you, thank you for for bringing that up because yeah. it's true. It basically spoiled the finish. I think Moxley and MJF was the best match of the night um, in terms of storytelling and um, cl- uh, climactic ending. Uh, I, I love Moxley. I love MJF, and I think the whole r- in- involving the ring and then f- and then using the paradigm shift. Behind the referee's back is great storytelling. I think they, they hit the mark on that match, and I think that was basically it. Uh, so that was all all, Elise, all, all out. Uh, Red, what are your um, overall thoughts on it? And if you were to give it a, a, out of five stars, I don't know. We don't do that much. I but it was fucking two. I'm, I'll, 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 give that, it, I'll give it a half, one and a half. Yeah. It was, if, a, it was, it was their that, worst pay-per-view to date. After, like I said, after the, the, um, after the, 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 the Travis... That was the Matt Hardy match. It kind of took you out the sales out a little bit. Yeah, they said it once Matt Hardy fell because Matt, Matt Sidell was more of a joking. We laughed. We, we were crying, laughing for Matt right, Sidell. Right. When Matt Hardy fell, it was like uh, and all you pussies like, oh, that's not funny to laugh at a wrestler who almost killed himself. No, first you check if he was all right. Jordan, then you, oh, oh, then you fucking laugh your oh, ass. Oh, you don't have to make it quiet. Jordan Gray said that. Yeah. So, bitch, you get get over yourself. Oh, stop it, you fucking please. You would have did it out of. She loves being. A, she, loves, she loves being a social injustice warrior for the yeah, wrestling world. Yeah, she wants world. to be the center of fucking attention. Oh, by the way, don't slide in her DMs because you know she's showing her cooch bitch. Oh, fuck <laughs> out of here. Yo, I, she's the person to say don't send me DMs, guys, because you're annoying. But, but then, yeah, then you got half post- your fucking titties out. Yep. Shut the fuck. I up. I hate people like that, and I don't respect her for Stop that. Stop it. So. Oh, it's okay to show my tits. You know, you don't have to be fucking disrespectful. Whatever. Please, she's a fucking joke. You know you're fucking attention. And I think after that night at ICW, you lost a lot of respect for him. Oh, VXS. Not was it? No, it was no, ICW. ICW. You lost a lot of respect for her that night. Yeah, she was a she was fucking cunty. And, and great. And who was great that night was um. Sammy Scarlett, Callahan. No, Scarlet Scarlet Bordeaux. Um, Bordeaux. Was she? She was mad cool. I cool. I spoke to her. Quick. She's she cool people. Nice. She's yeah. cool people. But that fucking um Jordan Grace. Fuck you. Any case, um. All out. I think was the worst. The no, worst the today. saving grace was the MJF Moxie before the title. And the um, the tag match, yep. you know, except that you know, like I said they run, they just run too, too long. fucking long. It's not WrestleMania. I don't need an eight hour show. Not only that, you could tell a better story in 15, 20 minutes. I don't need a fucking uh, a, a marathon Iron Man match. It's, yeah. just, it's not necessary. I think I think Impact's doing a good job of having these shortcut matches. You know what it is? It's because they 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 keep piggybacking off this New Japan shit. It's like, dude, you get have, over yourselves. Watch NWA. The previous the, the the episodes of NWA, it's an hour. Their matches don't last any more than ten minutes, and they're fucking great. They're great fucking matches. I mean, honestly, you don't need to have the the the, the fucking the hunger the hunger games fucking series on yeah. a match. Yeah, it's no, ridiculous. it's way too long. I, I think Impact's doing a better job at like their timing with the matches. Um, in, uh, to close out the this this segment, I'll say one thing. I'll say this was their worst pay per view to date. It was a clusterfuck of botches and really bad structure and timing. Uh, hopefully Tony Khan learned from this to be more as a, a aggressive as a as a leader, because in the back who is everyone going to? Because Cody's doing his game show. Yeah. To you, Tony, yeah. and you got to be fucking you got to be held responsible for what you do. You have to make the right decisions. You got to say yes or no. You can't be the motherfucker who's scared to say no because you don't want to be like Vince. Get over yourself. Stop comparing yourself to Vince McMahon and do what you got to do to make be it the product. Fucking, if you can't be the hatchet man, put somebody in that place to be the hatchet. Be, man. Then you need a good cop, bad cop partnership yeah. because this shit ain't working with you being a pussy and saying yes to everything. Exactly. Um, but uh, unfortunate for Matt Hardy. Um, and Matt Seidel was funny. He he even made a joke about it. He was no banana peels at my next match. But overall, give it a one and a half stars. I think it was a train wreck. I think it was way too long. I was falling asleep halfway through the show, and they need they need to be AEW needs to be better. All right, guys. So when we come back, we're gonna have our wrestling rundown as we usually do, and as well as around the square circle, guys who are watching on the live stream on Facebook. Thank you for participating and partaking. If you want to continue today, we'll be on Get Vocal for Around the Squared Circle, so be a part of that as well, guys. Don't go anywhere. Stick around. We'll be back. Take you guys in a sec. You're listening to a podcast where the host may or may not have masturbated to Nyla Rose. You're listening to Turnbuckle Tabloid. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the main event of Turnbuckle Tabloid. This is Wrestling Rundown.
the main event as always. Wrestling Rundown. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. News stories on top of news stories on top of news stories, ladies and gentlemen. Speaking of news stories, my man finally did it. He broke his 200 mark, sir. I did, I did. Congratulations. Thank you, man. 198, well, no, you took after, post five guys. I don't know post, anymore, yeah, who knows anymore? But listen, I told you, all you need to do is take a major shit. I did right after 85 guys. <laughs> um, nah, man, it's, uh, is my mic's good? Yeah, 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 you're good. Okay. Um, a lot of hard work, bro, every day. It's, it's and still going. I went to the track this morning. Uh, not uh, um, for the first time since eighth grade, under two hundred pounds. Uh, it's awesome. Really? Yeah. Wow, that's dude, a, that's I, fucking dude, awesome. Dude, I've been I've been big boy for my entire life. You've been so, big. Um, that's back. why that's why I'm taking this so seriously because I finally have a chance to not be that. Like I finally have like I'm in a place where I could like not, you know, I could actually eat like and b- b- go on this journey and like try to fucking lose some weight. Yeah, and, and somebody somebody was making uh googly eyes at you on fucking uh on the live stream. Oh, were they? Oh yeah. yeah. I don't know if it was googly eyes. Somebody or... had to make a check in. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> I guess I guess so. <laughs> Fuck, Fuck him. him. Fuck up? you bitch. <laughs> yeah, basically. Sure thing. But uh listen, I'm I'm looking good. I feel great. Uh I feel I feel awesome. Besides my car breaking down, uh, <laughs> I feel good. So, oh God, which is a, that's a new story for um, Eyewitness day. News. Yeah, we we just want to see when um, when all when all is said and done, what is going to happen to the Golden Retriever? Yeah, I know that's the that's the story. Uh, that's, uh, I'll give an update next week on my 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 car. We'll see how that goes. As always, I am the Howard Stern of this segment to my Robin Ophelia Quivers Oski. So Oski, take it away. All right, guys. The first piece of news we have here was broke today, actually. Uh, The Miz announced on Talking Smack this morning that Mandy Rose has officially been traded to Monday Night Raw in an attempt to separate Otis with her queen, with her little peach. No one knows what the trade, what what SmackDown is getting in return, but people are saying that Mandy Rose will bring uh, some sort of flavor to Monday Night Raw's women's division. Do you see any... Do you see a purpose for this uh, in terms of story, breaking up Otis and Mandy? What, what, what was the goal here? Uh, basically to spice up. Isn't uh, isn't there supposed to be a, another draft or something coming or some shit? Yeah, yes, sir. A draft will be coming soon. Is it? Yes. Oh, okay. Triple H confirmed it. Oh, okay, so maybe, I don't know, maybe the draft is a, just a shake-up because they need to do something more in that women's division. They probably need to bring more of a uh, spank-bank fucking teen audience to to Raw because they need more eye candy. I mean, seriously, who's the good-looking one on Raw right now? Shayna Baszler. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah, Shayna Baszler. Sh- not, uh, little bit, a little bit would have heard that. She'd have been like, what? Don't be talking shit about my girl. Yeah, well, listen, man. Um, You know, you're right, though. It, it, it's about eye candy sometimes. It's about um, maybe giving her an opportunity to be a singles competitor or somewhere else. It's. Uh, I hope that... Who do you think in the women's division on Raw should go to SmackDown to trade? Hmm, that's a good one. Because uh, I think we should get, like, maybe, um, they might be getting, like, Peyton Royce. Probably, probably like that, yeah. They're Peyton Royce. Get, yeah. Which, because they know that's what the Iconics up. Right, so. uh, Peyton Royce, or even Billy Kay. Billy Kay didn't have a bad looking, they they, they, they didn't have a bad match this week. No, she didn't. Yeah, they even um, won, so, no, I think, it was, I think it was pretty good. So, yeah, um, Manny Rose traded to Monday Night Raw. I'm not a good guy. I'm not a bad guy. I'm the guy. Oh, I can't hear the drop. Oh, go ahead. That's all right. Uh, go, go up. My yeah. bad, my bad, my bad. Uh, <laughs> well, oh, yeah, because oh, they have phones. Yeah, they my headphones. Put on the other headphones. The, they're, they're both kind of like, oh, wait. meh. Yeah. I, I think it's like, it's on and off. Oh, right. There we go, better. Okay. okay. Up next on the news stories, we have WWE went through multiple releases again this past week, and Gerald Briscoe being one of them. Do you have a list of more people? Because not- Gerald Briscoe, uh, Mike Rotunda, and Sarah Stock were notable names who were released. Isn't Sarah one of like the name number one trainers in the performance center? One they got one, rid yeah. of her. Oh yeah. no! But, the, but she's also she's also known as a, uh, as an agent as well. But the thing is that a lot of these cuts were due to the fact that they're not traveling, so there a lot of them were road agents. Yeah. And, and people who are part of the traveling crew, so they had, you know, they had to let them go. 
So they, you know, once once business picks up again, they'll yeah. probably be back. So uh, they were already furloughed. Um, Gerald Briscoe was furloughed. Already. But now he's released. Now he's released. Gerald Briscoe's seventy something years old. Bro. Yeah, he should like, just retire. Just retire. You make good money. You know. Well, they, they just announced they brought back a few people, like Josiah Williams. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, and a few, so, other, a few. Which, by the way, they need a whole new music group because uh, hopefully he can do Keith Lee's music. I, I hope so, but uh, well. Why do you think, uh, even with a profit, once again, uh, firing more people? Which, by the way, Keith Lee's music is not really that bad. We it's just not. Missed, we just missed the other one. I missed one. the original. But what, what, are your th- what, what, what what's the what's the reasoning behind these releases? Like I said, it's because of their, their traveling expenses. These are people that would be on the road with them. There's no whatever. road right now. So there's no road. They'll so pick them up when there's a road. <laughs> yeah, that's what it is, pretty much. And uh, the the look, you gotta you gotta take in consideration. Although the company is in the black, meaning they're making money still. Y- you got to cut off, and it's fortunate to say, you got to cut off some dead weight, and that's that's what they are right now. You're, you're basically sitting around doing nothing. Yeah. And I and I believe that those people would rather are, go are, do something. They would rather do something. I mean, they're they're or they rather get paid, but they're gonna they'll 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 find something soon enough. Well, let me tell you something, brother. Crazy Steve from Impact Wrestling this week on Tommy Dreamer's podcast came out and officially said that he's blind. You got that too. I actually, I, I, actually, yeah. I, I was like, whoa. He said that he's, I am blind. That's news to some people because as of recently, I just came out advertising it. I'm making that a part of the advertisement to Crazy Steve, even though I'm really blind. He goes, he realized that he should start maybe incorporating that into his gimmick about being the daredevil of professional wrestling. I don't know if that's a good idea, but. You gotta give a tip of the hat to the fact that this dude is bl- legally blind and has been wrestling without no one even noticing the fact that he is legally blind. Yeah, right. right. Well, how blown away were you by this fucking? Story? I was. I I would have never. I would have never seen it. No, no, literally seen it. Ah, <laughs> but but crazy Steve, puns. We got him. But illegally, I never thought. How are you? How do you wrestle blind? Well, he 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 explained how um, he was born with um, cataracts. And they he had numerous surgeries, but progressively they it just got worse and worse. Then he got um glaucoma as well, so it was like one fucking hiccup after another. Oh jeez! But when he got into wrestling, he realized everything was about feel and touch, so he was able to work that way. And he talked about it before every um event, before he goes into any um any 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 match. Yep. When he, he goes into the ring, he checks the size, he sees uh, how many steps it takes to get from wow, one ring that to is another, dedication. to one run rope to another. That's passion. He, he, he talked about how uh, recently the, the, the ropes and impact have been changing. Yeah. So it's kind of been throwing, throwing, throwing him off a bit. But he says, you know, he has good days because if the ropes are a bright color, yeah. that it, he, it works better for him. But the crazy thing is that no one knew. He right. didn't. He, you know, people probably thought because he doesn't drive, yeah, and he's always, you know, being chaperoned with uh, uh, another wrestler and stuff. So they just thought that, you know, he was just probably finicky or just didn't have a driver's license. But no, he, he can't drive. He can't see. No, and he he kept it a secret from a lot yeah. of people. He pulled a Chadwick Boseman. He didn't yeah. want to tell no one about that exactly. kind of shit. Which yeah. kudos and respect to you, Crazy Steve. That's awesome. I would love to get him on the show to talk about this. Show. Absolutely. Oh, uh, he's already said it on a podcast. Yeah, like, but whatever. fuck it, whatever. You know who I, I I forgot who we should have gotten was Josiah Williams. I missed yes, the opportunity. I, I wanted yeah, to get we, him. We could have got him. Shit. Maybe next time. This is the greatest show on earth. The X WWE star Marty Jannetty came out this week saying that the murder confession was just the start of a wrestling storyline. Former star Marty Jannetty made headlines last month when he claimed to have killed a man in the 1970s. The claim was that the man cornered Marty into an alley with the intention of rape. Marty said he fought back and ended up killing him and then dumped him in the cha- <laughs> Can't Ch- say the Chappaquiddick or Chapa- Chappanookadick? Chattahoochee River in Columbus, Ohio. And he commented below, I did not murder that man. It was just the beginning of a damn wrestling storyline, but oh my God, OMG, didn't the world buy it? I never knew it could be that easy. I mean, Inside Edition, People Magazine... Etc. Jumped on this story. Inside Edition. That shit is still around. I guess it got really? so hot in, in his eyes. Probably oh. it got so hot. It I had was to on dr- a current affair. It got so hot that I had to drop it. When my Columbus Police Department got involved, I knew I had to drop it. Or as my bro Snoop Dogg says, drop it like it's hot. <laughs> That's what he said. But yeah, you know cool. what wrestling promotion it was for? Um, MHW, which is Murder Homicide Wrestling. <laughs> That's what it was for. Shoot, murder, yeah. homicide, wrestling. It was for um, LOW, Law and Order Wrestling. 
Oh my god! Did he just try piggyback? <laughs> Did he just try backtracking on a murder confession? SV SVW, uh, which is <laughs> sex violence wrestling. Yeah, yeah, basically <laughs> coming or, to violence and suffering. <laughs> coming to VXS tomorrow. What a red! What the fuck are you? Are your he's thoughts a, on this he's, bullshit? He's a psycho. He, he needs to go into a straight jacket. Uh, he might. He needs to come visit me at my job. You think so? You think he's a oh, patient worthy? Yeah, definitely. I'm Either just, that or he needs an out treatment or NP. Uh, in treatment, fucking uh, drug rehab. But 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 how does he think that's okay to go back on his word saying that he murdered a man? Because he knew that he had gotten so much heat for him, and he was gonna be unbookable and arrested. Ne- what, what promotion <laughs> was he was in an angle for? Nothing. I'll wait. And plus, why would he make a? Uh, what not storyline be like? Yo, last week I killed a man. Um, like rather than 1970s. That sounds kind of real, brother. Yeah, I don't know. You, you, you kind of you kind of brought in the real um, the real Marty Janetti out. Yeah. Rest. I did not mean to put that out. Yeah, <laughs> yikers! That was that was out of random, ladies yeah, and gentlemen. Yeah. Uh, Tessa Blanchard is slated to make her in-ring ret- return this week after being on a lengthy lengthy hiatus. The former Impact World cha- uh, World Champion is set to work this week's um, Warriors Wrestling event, which TJP is going to work with no mask on the plane. <laughs> um, she'll be defending the Warrior Women's w- Wrestling Championship against current Impact star Kylie Ray. Blanchard, who is currently a free agent, was stripped of the Impact World title earlier this year and departed from the company. People are wondering, what the hell and where the hell will he be going? She went to Warriors of Wrestling? This, she is the champion of Warriors of Wrestling. Oh, okay. Um, she's on the same card with the Rascals, Brian Cage, Thunder Rosa, Joey Janela even. Uh, oh, Joey Janela's everywhere, which by the way. I think his time is coming with AEW. Yes, I think, I think he'll be I, released soon. I think that door is coming, it's um, coming to a close. What is the future hold for Tessa Blanchard, and where do you think she'll be best foot? We had this discussion uh, already, but now that she's finally coming back, there's got to be discussion. Who's going to pull the trigger and with the risk of getting Tessa Blanchard? Uh, Who w- needs her the most? WWE is going to do it. They will. Yeah, they're going to bring it. They have Velveteen Dream and people and all that shit. They're going to bring they're gonna bring on NXT. Because let me tell you something. They need her. <laughs> but AEW needs her more, though. I don't know. No, they do. But she she's a big fish in a small pond there. Honestly. Yeah, she, she, it'll be she needs to go to NXT because you know why? Once we review fucking um, Around the Square Circle, fucking Rhea Ripley's a fucking star. And she needs to go to the main the main roster already. Who? She's Rhea Ripley. Yes. She's a well, fucking star. People are saying that, that, her, that, that, that she she will be going to the main roster soon. Yeah, she's a fucking star. So they need to put somebody in there for, for, for Tessa to eat up. What the? That was like a combination. Shame on, please. Um, what else we have here on the news spectrum? Uh, Vince McMahon reportedly wanted to fire someone for not t- um, knocking on his door and just walked in. That's a quick story with no comment there. What? Um, um, <laughs> if you want to, you want a Vince story. Vince, uh, unfortunately, I'm sorry, Vince, but you did not make the Forbes 400, sir. I'm so oh, sorry. Geez. Yes, Vince, I'm sorry. We are 1.8 billion. Didn't make the cut, but who did make the Forbes 400 was Shad Khan. Wow, Tony Khan's father. Yes. He made the. All right. He made the cut. So I'm all right. Sorry, Vince, you didn't make the cut, sir. Oh. Fucking bullshit. Um. Uh, anything on your end? Uh, just quickly on my end. Uh, Jim Cornette tells a minor to go blow him. Oh no! After his no. comments about. Renee and Moxley, apparently uh, no. last week on the show, Cornette had made a mention saying that Renee married down when she married with Moxley. And a uh, girl on Twitter went on the on uh, against him, and she was disrespectful. She was saying, fuck you. you. I hope you die. I'm paraphrasing. I hope you die. You don't know shit, motherfucker. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Who the fuck you think you are to tell somebody they can't be? Look who the fuck you are. Look who you married to. And oh, she went off. Oh, my God. And... He just wrote, blow me, which is his catchphrase. Yeah, this blow me. Turns out the person was 16 years old. Oh, no. And I said, <laughs> you know what? Good for you, because somebody needs to teach you right. You're fucking 16, and you're on social media trying to talk to a grown man like that, and you know what? You got checked. Who the fuck? It doesn't say on your fucking profile what age you are. So That's who the true. Fuck knew? Uh, another, another story that I, I wanted to go back and forth with uh, here. Uh we unfortunately had a few passings in the wrestling world this year, this week. Um, not super big ones, but death to say the least. Ralphus 
Um, right, he died a year ago. Or some he died shit. a year ago, but was never, uh, it, was never addressed. it was never addressed or told. Jericho found out like about a couple of weeks ago. Uh, that's unfortunate. <laughs> and, uh, Malthus, who was uh, Jericho's makeshift bodyguard in WCW. And then someone else passed away this week. Um, what's it? He was a part of Jackass. Oh. He was a wrestler. Um, uh, uh, Stevie Lee. Yeah, Stevie Lee. Yeah. And also the voice behind uh, yes. Impact Wrestling, Barry Scott, passed away. Wait, the, you, you, you gotta play one of his drops. Yeah, I'm trying to find it right now. The man who spoke with this baritone voice. It's made, bound for glory. Let me tell you, he fucking he had a made, voice. What? He, he was the hype up guy for Impact for TNA. Yeah. You were hype when you heard him talk. Hell yeah! Let me see if I can. The get winds it. of change. Let's see if we get it right now. Here it goes. K. Morgan Freeman. The <laughs> Morgan Freeman. Very intense voices. Oh, okay. I was like, what? No. 2018 has been a year of impactful moments. Impactful action. Why is it important to shine on the big stage? Because it validates that That's you are the main event player. Courtesy of Impact Radio. Validates the rest of the that job. you're the world champion. Impactful drama. I did it. I put the hit out on you. you, you. Shit, I want that voice. Impactful yeah. drama. Impactful drama. Here at Turnbuckle Tabloid. I think I kind of balanced that. I think yeah, I all right, we can, we can but I ain't gonna front. He made that shit hype every time you fucking were, re- were ready to watch a, a pay per view. Yep. So uh, rest in peace to all three of them. Yeah, rest in peace to those those and condolences go out to your family. Um, uh, and then the the last piece of news I have, I think, is Jim Ross has been in a lot of heat this week for the comment he made regarding Anna J and the wardrobe malfunction. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> really? A lot of people, a lot of people are giving him heat. I have to, I have to be a part of the news. Um, Jim Ross during the show said, "Did Anna J have a wardrobe malfunction, or is that wishful thinking in my book?" <laughs> and the world is pissed. I'm gonna have, yeah, we're gonna discuss because I gotta talk about the commentary on fucking AEW. But I have to we'll say, talk about that in Square Circle. I don't, I don't, I don't. What's wrong with that? I don't. What's wrong? With I guess that? he was miss. I guess he was like basically him confirming that he wishes to see some uh, some some uh, some okay, uh, privates. He's a, he's a fucking horny old man. Who gives a and shit? And his wife passed, so I mean. I mean, he could do what he got to do. I mean, what the fuck? Honestly, what's wrong with that? You do what you gotta do, there, yeah, buddy. I mean, come on, give the guy a fucking break. It ain't, it ain't like he said, "I want to see a cooch." I would prefer that. Yeah, he's up and honest with it. He was a little bit. I mean, he was vague with it. But like, I want to see her thoughts. I want to like see her tits. Say, your tits. Like saying Spanish. I want to see her toto. Okay. <laughs> I want to see. Yeah. Uh, I want to see a tits. Your tits. Hey, come on. Let me see a booby. Come on. Let me see a tit. Huh? A tit. Uh, uh, so but, Jim but, Ross and um, some heat there. And uh, besides that, I'm. Uh, oh, and one more story, which I think we could close off with. Do you have anything else before we close off? Yeah. Uh, just quickly. Uh, Sage Beckett, who wrestled in uh, in uh, the the. May Young Classic, as well as in I believe in Impact and TNA, uh, she was a bit of a she was a, she was a bit chunky back in the days, but uh, she lost amazingly amount of uh, amount of weight. All right. Uh, but she said that when because of, you know there was there was issues about uh, weight monitorization in wrestling, and apparently WWE is not is one of them, and they said that they monitor her weight as well in the back. So uh, she was not happy about that, and she made that open. WWE has pulled back on their social media stance. Which they're pretty much saying, if you're going to use the social media, don't use it as your gimmick. Use your real name. Which Wait, you saw what Kobe Kingston did on Cameo, clearly. He said, you know who I am. Yeah, That's exactly. his new name. You know who I am. Exactly. So <laughs> it's, But like I said before, WWE had a, they had a point. They had contracted. You can't use their gimmick name. But use your real name. Whatever. That works. Sure. Uh, AJ wants to retire. He says pretty much it's... Oh, Clegg's getting there. It's closing time. He says, look, I think what fucked him up real bad was that they put him on SmackDown. Yeah. And those were the Fridays that he would go watch his son practice yes. and play football. Yes. And it's really, it's it's getting, it's getting at the to point him. that, yeah. Once you have kids, it changes the game. Yeah, it does. You know, AJ's about a year younger than me. His kids are getting older. Yep. So he's like, yeah, it's it's done. He's ready. So he, he's got, like, I think another three years on his contract. Yep. And then it's over for him. And other than that, yeah, I'm done. What about, um, you heard anything about, the, about Andrew Yang on CNN? Oh, he pretty much said that uh, if Democrats get in no office and he gets a seat, WWE be coming after your ass because honestly, uh, this uh, this independent contractor bullshit and what you still have them on the contract and not allow them to do what they should be doing as independent contractors to make extra money. Yeah, uh, we're gonna start cracking down on that shit. So 
Uh, Vince, be ready for that because this is something that's been a practice for years that needs to be, that that needs to be handled. Yep. And yes, they need to be fucking unionized already. All wrestlers, not just WWE. All wrestlers. So and the same person who got in trouble for that, David Starr, for saying that, we agree. Yes. It needs to be done. So, so yeah, and that's uh, that's on my end. Yep, I'm tapping out. All right, guys. When we come back, we have around the square circle, which will be on Get Vocal. Other than that, see you guys in a second. Conversation with our boy Dominic De Niro this week. You don't want to miss that as well. So stick around. We will return to you guys in a min. Round the square circle, ladies and gentlemen, here on Get Vocal. Amber Ray, ladies and gentlemen, family here. New single out. Good for you. On YouTube, Spotify, wherever you can get singles, look up Amber Ray. Look her up because Matt's gonna find out Mario soon. You know it. <laughs> it's coming up, coming soon. In my dreams. We played it early. I forgot to give her a shout out. Outstanding. It's very good. So, around the square circle, ladies and gentlemen, here on Get Vocal, we are here. We are queer. Are we? Well, you? Que- queer, queer in the term meaning weird. So, oh, uh, all right. Well, that's a good save right there, buddy. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we are in the building. Around the square circle is our weekly rundown of what what happened in wrestling. What, 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 what we watch, what we listen to, what, what's going on. Uh, that's Marco in the back. Uh, <laughs> I'll, wait, I'll wait for him to sit down. So, what do we have on board? We already reviewed All Out. We did that already. We did. On, on cutting a promo. So, we, if you want to listen to that, make sure you check us out on YouTube and, on, of course, on all the Spotify's, the um, Google Play Musics, the iTunes, all those podcasting outlets. You can get us there. And Marco is here. Marco! What's going on, Mook? How are you doing, guys? What's going on, Marco? Appreciate coming on, get vocal with us to Mar- talk the week in wrestling. Marco's in gimmick. He has a, a lucha mask on. You have a lucha mask on? Oh shit! I can't even see that. Can you turn the cat. I gotta see this shit. Yeah, hold on. My son Marco looking good. Marco's in gimmick. Look. Oh, Marco, why fuck with that, bro? You look like <laughs> fucking um. What what, what 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 kind of mask is that? Is that an, is that he a mask like a wrestler? Pentagon Senior. Yeah, I was about to say. You, you, you. <laughs> okay. That was a low blow, uh, Jay. Thank you very much, man. You're, you're, you're the same age as I am, though, so don't worry about that. Wow. Hey, 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 hey. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> live, live the gimmick, bro. Live the gimmick. Uh, Red, so before we go into the weekend wrestling, podcasts, audiobooks, anything? Uh, first of all, I want to show off my collection of... Wow, you're going to really flex these right now? Wow. wow. As well yeah. as you should. As all collectors should. Look at, the, look at these pickups, right? I, I bought these a couple of years ago, right? And like I said five. How much? Well, okay. I'll give you. Go a ahead. Quick, go, no, go ahead. I, go I'll ahead, give Marco. you a quick, a quick rundown of them. Marco, you'll you'll enjoy this, right? So. Oh my god! Cool. So I picked these up, right? This one, and the John Cena, I picked up at a local uh, discount store in a neighborhood that I used to live at. That's where I work at now. Picked each of these up for about ten bucks. Each one ten dollars. How much they were going wow. for, Oski? They're they're going for around one hundred and fifty to three hundred dollars. What? Yep. Oh my god. They're going for around no. one hundred and fifty to three hundred dollars on eBay. And, this one uh, here, Steve's I, going for around a hundred. This one I picked up at Wildwood, New Jersey. I picked that one up in, in Wildwood, New Jersey. How much you got for that? How much you pay for that? Uh, thirty. The stickers on there. I didn't take it off. It's thirty bucks. <laughs> and it's going for how much? Around a hundred bucks. Yeah, a hundred bucks. Tell you. Wow! Um, got the, the best part of collecting is the best part of collecting is collecting something you like and finding out that you paid shit for it and, and, and it ends up being valuable as fuck. Yeah, which goes into the pop world as well. Um, the NWO Hogan that was going for like three, four hundred dollars, so that's going to like major grail territory for you, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it, it, it makes me think about who oh, shit I need to buy that the I mixer. To, so yeah, exactly, eBay might be knocking at the door real quick. <laughs> All right. So Marco, uh, did you watch wrestling this week? Uh, yes, yeah, some of it. 
I didn't see anything of it, uh, mo most of it, because I was a little bit busy with the volleyball thing. All right. So, Just yeah, I saw I saw the news that Rusev, Mo Miro, the best man, went to AEW. So okay, we're gonna have we're gonna have a, a, a conversation about that once we get it swinging. But just a quick rundown of what we watched and listened to and read this week. I'm still reading that new Sean Oliver book. The, well, not new, but the uh, the other one. The the, the other thing, one. The other one. Uh, still getting into that. It's more of a business savvy one. Um, it's interesting. It's interesting to see. And it makes me think about branding and what, what we're going to be doing from here on out with the podcast. So it's pretty fun to uh, not only learn something, but also laugh, laugh at the same time. Um, also, got some comments from last week's cutting a promo about the sports <laughs> athletes that tied into wrestling. Marco, who what what sports athletes uh do do sports athletes in Mexico I mean, who was it? Um Kane or well, not not Kane Velasquez. Um Yeah, was it Kane Velasquez that went to it went to um to um Kane Velasquez, yeah. Yeah. So he's one what other what other uh Mexican uh, Mexican athletes have played around in the in the world of wrestling? <laughs> You know what? Not that much, man. They they don't get involved like uh, they they they're more fans than doing the stuff with like the guy from the Arrow went to. Papa, what you what, what, you, got, what have you got going on back there? It sounds like somebody's playing like Christmas lullaby. music or lullabies or something. Dude, got the ice cream truck. Oh, that you too? <laughs> oh, see, we accept that's a pass. We accept that oh, because okay. we have our own ice cream truck, so fuck it. I want some. Oh, there you uh, go. Now the copyright is gonna mess me up. Mess you up, guys. Nah, it's all right. <laughs> sorry. Give me a give me a give me a double cone uh, chocolate dunk swirl. All right, bro. Thank you, Marco. I was also listening to uh, to I mentioned earlier listening to Chris Jericho's podcast, and he had Thunder Rosa on, and she explained how Mexico was very, very sexist when it comes to women's wrestling. Is that true? Yes. Yes, ma'am. Believe me. Yeah. Now I got it ambient music in the background. Oh my lord. One second. Hold on. Shut the fuck okay, up! Okay, now that the ice cream truck's coming over. Marco, over go ahead. Talk about Thunder Rosa. Around. Yeah, that's that's the sexy music playing in the background. Uh, no, so yeah, <laughs> so yeah, Thunder Rosa pretty much said that. Uh, what the fuck yeah. is going on in New York? Your block is crowded, boy. <laughs> so she basically said that uh, many re female wrestlers <laughs> wrestle for like not even ten pesos and like a. a a, a burrito or a tamale <laughs> or something like that. It's a hot dog and a handshake. She's like, okay, man. No, she's 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 right, man. And many of the women here are underrated, man. And there are many good uh, women wrestlers, uh, luchadors here in Mexico, man. And they're very underrated. Right. Um. Yeah. yeah her, her, you got to listen to that conversation. Was, she was really good. She talked about how she got into the business and shout and shout out to her, her husband. Because her husband was the one that pushed her into wrestling. And wow. very supportive. Uh, they were wrestling fans. She 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 um she knew about it with because her family were real um uh Lucha Libre fans. And her husband was a big fan. She got into it and he basically told her, Listen, you can do this. And she's like, Ah, I've I have i have not done anything athletic in my in my whole life. And he's <laughs> like, No, you can do this. And Got her into a school and she's killing it now, man. And all shout right. out to them. She's been to Japan. She's been all over wow. the world, man. She's doing yeah. great, great things. And just quickly to go back to the um, sports and athletes, um, I mentioned on there. Mike Tyson turns on DX was a big sports uh, moment for me. Yep. Uh, JD mentions LT versus Bam Bam at WrestleMania. Oh God, was a was a match. Sure. And Henry felt yep. the same way as well. Cool, cool. Yeah. You know mine. Mine is uh, Mayweather and Big Show. Always will be. Uh, you know, it has memories that I always cherish. All right. So, Marco, thank you for checking in. We'll sit uh, while, while you sit there with your lucha mask. We'll have you chime in when you when you when you feel free to. We'll question you and partake in the show. So, on okay, game, get vocal, ladies and gentlemen. What do we have? Starting off raw. Okay, starting off Monday Night Raw this week, we had Randy Orton opening the show. Which, by the way, shout out to WWE for being a complete. Fucking waste of my time because I got into I got, I got into the Thunderdome this week and they told me it was too full. <laughs> don't promise me an email. Don't, don't don't promise me a fucking spot when you don't give it to me. Like fuck you, Marco. Have you tried to get into the Thunderdome yet? 
No, hell no. Oskar was, was, was like a, a 30 second lag. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yo, but, yo, Marco, but I, I wore a lucha mask when I was there. What? I, yeah, I, lucha I, mask. I, went into, I went into the Thunderdome on the debut of, of the first ever episode of Thunderdome, and I, I went in with a lucha mask. Yeah, he was wearing a Rey Mysterio mask. Wow, dude. Because I wanted to stand nice. out. That's nice. I wanted to stand Actually, out. I wanted to notice me. We found me. We found me. Yeah. Like, we, we, like, Red, like, pointed me out <laughs> on TV. <laughs> Red pointed me out on TV. It was fucking awesome. I, was, I'll be on. I'll be on this Monday. He was behind the commentary booth. Yep, it was fucking. Wow. It was fun. Uh, so, um, but hopefully, I got in. I did three different emails for Raw, so we'll see if that actually fucking pans <laughs> out. Randy, uh, Randy Orton opens the show just uh, to discuss being forced to face Keith Lee yet again, um, saying that McIntyre is not medically cleared to compete, and say, uh, saying that he should win the, the belt and just hand it to him. You know, the, the story for the past couple of weeks. Uh, McIntyre shows up driving an ambulance and quickly puts a beating onto Orton, leaving leaving him lying in the ring, which then leads to Randy Orton versus Keith Lee. Um, that was the main event, correct? Uh, leading up to it, yeah. It was, the main event was Randy Orton and Keith Lee, right? Yeah. All right, so we'll go about that last. Um, uh, the rest of Monday Night Raw was actually pretty fun. We had um, the Street Profits defeating Andrade and Angel Garza via pinfall. Um, when are we gonna be done with this Street Profits and Andrade and Garza shit? Hopefully soon, because uh, they they missed the ball on it, and they're breaking them up, which yeah. is gonna be great. They're yeah. breaking up. They need to be Andrade. singles. Yeah, they need to be singles. Um, but after they they, they score the the victory here, Cesaro and Shinsuke Nakamura. Wait, before we go, Marco, what do you think? You think they should bring? They should uh, separate them? Who uh, Andrade? And, and, yeah, Angel Garza. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They should do it. They're single and actually, stars. Actually, this is the re- this is the mask. He used to use here in Mexico, Cien Almas, man. Oh, yeah, that's the mask? Oh, look at that. All right, speaking of which, perfect. Um, after the win. Show off. Yeah, right. After the win, <laughs> after the win, Cesaro and Shinsuke Nakamura uh, show up from Friday Night SmackDown. I'm um, doing the first, um, uh, not the first, but like the first one in a while, the brand to brand invitational showing up and um, announcing that next week it'll be a champion versus champion challenge for next week's Raw. Read this question's for you. Rumors are running rampant that they might just unify the tag team belts and make the tag team division be able to go on both shows. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah. I'm, I'm a fan of it. I'm okay with that. I'm okay with it too. I think the tag yeah, division yeah. needs that. And yeah, I think it, it actually is important. Yeah, I think it's fine. Uh, that's the one d- division that I'm okay with being unified. Uh, I'm okay with that. Uh, Asuka and Mickey James defeated Natalia and Lana via submission. Of course, Asuka gained the Asuka lock on Lana. I don't know what the fuck this is for. I don't know. Their women's division is clearly <laughs> so sad and so thin that you're putting Natalia and Lana in a tag team match with Asuka and Mickey James, your women's champion. Not happy about it. Uh, and I think that tr- the, the Mandy Rose trade will help that. Uh, also this week, we had the first um, match with them being split up. It was Peyton Royce defeating Billy Kay via pinfall. Red, who's the bigger star here? Of course, Peyton Royce's, but Billy Kay actually looked really good. They man. both look good. I like the um, I like the the new gimmick for her, the femme fatale. Yes, I, it's a good look for her. Yeah, uh, she still got a pancake face though, but it's um, it, it, it works. <laughs> it, it works for her. Um, Peyton Royce. Her uh, face is flatter than a a a, a masa for a for a tamale. Wow. A tamale, sí. <laughs> yeah. Um, after a tamale. Uh, Peyton Royce's <laughs> finisher. Uh, sorry, bro. My bad. Um, after, after, uh, um, Peyton Royce's finisher is the corkscrew neck breaker, which any generic, you could go on 2K for that, yeah, but it's all right. Needs work. After the match, Peyton Royce hugs her former Iconics partner after scoring the win. If there was any doubt, the point of breaking up the team was, was to give Royce a run. It ended here. Um, but I think Peyton Royce has a good chance to be a star on SmackDown, which I think is the trade for Manny Rose. Uh, also on Raw this week, we had the Hurt Business defeating... Ricochet, Cedric Alexander, and Apollo Crews via pinfall. But during the match, Cedric Alexander snaps and turns heel and joins the Hurt Business. He's finally caved in. It's happened. Cedric Alexander is a heel. Marco, did you watch this? Yeah. Um, what do you think about Cedric Alexander joining I, the Hurt Business? Do you think it's better for Cedric? Yeah, he's a good wrestler. He knows what he's doing. But you know what? Next. Wow. What do you think about that, Ray? What do you think about Cedric joining? I think it's actually going to help him a lot. I like it. Under being the young guy in the group of veterans. I like it, but you know who really needed it? Who needs some kind of charisma? Ricochet? Oomph? Ricochet. Yeah, I, I think, think both it, of them should have joined. I th- <laughs> I, no, but I, you know, it, it, either one would have went, but I would have preferred to be Ricochet because he needs to have that 
yeah. he, that 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 uh, that edge. He needs it more than. But he's he's gonna be their baby face for a while. Yep. Uh, um, which is understandable. But Cedric Alexander's turn was a long time coming, in my opinion, mm-hmm. and it was needed to freshen up the whole angle. It needed it. It, it needed to. He fr- need, he needed to stay at home with his wife and fucking teach her how to wrestle. Yeah, big some real shit. Big swole. Oh. Big, big, big swole ain't that. Oh. She, Jeez, she, shit. She ain't, she ain't that good, bro. To be honest. But later on in the night, the Hurt Business had the VIP lounge introducing. Cedric Alexander to the team. I love how they put the um the 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 imagery there with the with the photo shoot with the, and, and giving him the shirt like you're a part of the NBA team. Yeah, it, uh, the glitz and glamour was cool. But then we had um, the hurt business defeating Ricochet, Apollo, and the Viking Raiders, which was actually ended on a, a on a on a on a last minute um, audible because Ivar from the Viking Raiders botched and actually severely seriously hurt himself. He'll be out wow. for a while. And the Viking Raiders will not be seen on TV. I'm assuming we'll see um, Eric. I mean, or, or maybe I'm messing them up. Uh, listen, I, I... No, he was right. It was Ivar. Ivar got hurt, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, but Eric... I hope Maybe we'll, we'll probably see Eric on Raw Underground until Ivar comes back, which I think is, this is why Raw Underground works. It gives other people chances to show up on TV when they don't have a purpose being in the ring. Right. But uh, her business wing again, and Cedric Alexander gets the praise... Uh, the Riot Squad also defeated Shayna Baszler via pinfall, and um, well, he, uh, let me backtrack. The night the, it was scheduled to be the Riot Squad versus Shayna Baszler in a two-on-one handicap match, and then Nia Jax in a two-on-one handicap match. Red, why the fuck? What? That, how does that make any sense? Let's two-on-one handicap this thing. What you want to do? Singles matches, like maybe um, Ruby Riot versus Shayna, and then Liv Morgan versus Nia. Why are you doing a handicap match? I think it's because it's just trying to do the one-upmanship kind of thing. Oh, okay. Yeah, to see like who who who's the better wrestler between the two. That kind of, no, I wouldn't say it's nonsense. I mean, Marco, you've seen this kind of stuff in Mexico, right? In lucha wrestling, that happens. Where the, where the two yeah. the two talents, you know, they get into these matches and they try to one up each other. Yeah, uh, pretty much in some matches they do it and they stop. And you know what? They get injured because they want to do stuff they don't. They don't actually. Can, they don't work on it. Right. So, uh, it, it pretty much sucks. But yeah. well. Well, the first match was Riot Squad versus Shayna Baszler, and Shayna Baszler loses by a roll up once again. WWE. <laughs> WWE, <laughs> if I had a dollar every time WWE used the roll-up, I'd be fucking a millionaire. I would be so rich. You'd, be, like, able, you'd be able to get your car fixed. I'd be able to get my car <laughs> fixed. Oh, too soon. Too soon. Too soon, brother. Um, the second matchup starts where it would it would be Riot Squad versus Nia Jax, but out of nowhere, Retribution interrupts the match and causes it to end. The group cut a brief promo, lightly touching on their motivations, saying they were out to punish WWE for leaving them to a cold, cruel world. I would seek to punish any superstar and fan who bought into what WWE was selling. It's basically, they're anti WWE. Um, people slowed down the audio on a few, uh, which I hate people because they ruin it for everyone. <laughs> but it's confirmed Dijakovic is indeed in the in the group, and people also heard a different familiar voice in the female area, which was a, a Mia Yim. Oh, by the way, they light somebody also lightened a tint on the on the on the, the masks. Uh, yeah, can't get away with that Mia Yim. Your eyes give you away. Yeah, enough. it does. No offense. Yeah, I don't want to sound bad. What, 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 what do you thought about retribution here? Because um, my brother called it absolute cringe. <laughs> yeah, it was. Um, <laughs> it was very high school performance of uh, of a guys and dolls. Yeah, kind of uh, a sh- uh, Shakespearean kind of thing. Sometimes you don't have to be. You don't have to use big words to get over. Just like listen, straight to the point. I don't like the way you're fucking treating us. We're taking this shit over, y'all. That's it. Keep it simple. Right. Uh, so, uh, and then um, two more things on Raw. Um, let's back, back backtrack. Randy and Keith Lee was in the beginning of the show. Oh, was it? You're right. And um, Lee looked strong for most of the most of the match once again, but eventually fell victim to an RKO by Randy Orton. But while Randy Orton was about to go for a pin, McIntyre ran in and hit the Claymore to lay out Orton and draw the disqualification. How many times is Randy and Keith going to be a disqualification? Uh, it's a longer story. They're actually trying to build something. To I, and I get it. I'm happy with it. It's just like, I think WWE wants to suck everyone who loves roll-ups and disqualifications. <laughs> uh, and the, sc- <laughs> the schoolboy pin. Which, um, by the way, quick side story, Adam Pierce, which is the new general manager for both shows, which thank God they have some sort of fucking guy in the back, um, lectured McIntyre the entire time to not be here tonight. He's not medically cleared, and they didn't want to risk the match at night of Clash of Champions to not go through. So I love the story all night about him going, oh, I'm just getting my phone, man. And then he comes back and goes, I, can, I know it's hard to believe, but 
I picked up the wrong phone. <laughs> I'm like this dude. I'm like this guy. And a great storytelling there. Uh, McIntyre attacks Orton again backstage before delivering his third Claymore of the show, leading Orton to be taken out of the building in an ambulance. An eye for an eye, sort of, I guess, I have- uh, where they both now are injured. I think they should have a match where both those moves are banned. Let's see. Let's let's see you do you do something else because now they're burying those finishers, in my opinion. In a way, I'm seeing way too much of. The, I, I get the Claymore versus the RKO. I get it. But what do you thought about the overusage <laughs> of these finishers every week? Um, that's impersonation, man. Four, four. <laughs> thank you, bro. Four, four punt kicks last week. Four RKOs this week. Four punt kicks this week. Four. I think. I think. Four claymores. I think it's it's a fun way of going back and forth because it's not in a match. So true. You might, well, you might as well just play it off. Which, by the way, for people who are saying why are they why are they why is there a ring backstage? Um, they're taking advantage of their space and they're using a ring as their backstage interview area. You fucking stupid people. I mean, no offense. <laughs> oh damn. No, because no, no, everyone complains about everything. Oh, why are they? Why is there a ring backstage? Well, because they want to be cool. Dude, they have room for it. Fanboys. Yep. You're fanboys. Don't You're about you are 100. Yeah, right. it's too much. It's too much. It's too much. I'm investigating. Just chill out. Just chill out and it. fucking enjoy the show. Before we go to the main event, I want to yeah. do. Uh, I want to. I want to talk about um, Raw Underground very quickly. Um, we had. Um, I think um, it was Kevin Owens and Aleister Black fought on Raw Underground this week, and it was spread out across multiple segments rather than showing it as a whole. Um, while they were fighting, of course, though Dabakato, which by the way was Baba Tunde, took out both <laughs> men after being bumped into on the ins outside. In a really miserable set of segments. Yeah, let, 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 let's 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 make a name that's even worse than Baba Tunde. Yeah, really. Like, how they Baba manage to do Tunde. that? Henry's in here, boy. What's going on, Henry? What's boy? up, Henry? It sounds like aguacate. Uh, exactly, aguacate. <laughs> um, Maddie's like, yeah, hey, aguacate. What the? Fuck yeah, is totally. That? Um, coleslaw. What the fuck? What? Is that? Um, Marco, I'm, Marco, I'm digging your your, your wrestling mat, man. Huh? He said he likes <laughs> he said, he said he likes a wrestling mask. Oh, shh. Cool, man. Yeah. Gracias, hermano. Gracias. Uh, yeah, uh, por favor. Por favor. Por favor. Shut up. <laughs> Sorry. Matt didn't, Matt didn't um, pass. I didn't understand that. Matt didn't pass Spanish 101 in high school. I took American Sign Language, and I regret it because I would definitely be no- thankful more than I know Spanish. Um, and finally, the last segment on Raw this week was the Mysterio family being interviewed in the ring. Ray saying he has no timetable oh. to recover from his tricep injury. As Dominic tries to speak about how it felt to, to represent his family in WWE, Murphy interrupts on the Tron. Murphy blames the Mysterios for causing Seth Rollins, the one man who picked him up when he was down, to turn his back. Murphy then issues an, a challenge to Dominic to upgrade their match to a street fight for the 55th time. Dominic Mysterio in a street fight. Uh, I'm not mad at it, just a little repetitive. Um, where was Rollins? Where, 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 where was Rollins this week? Um, taking care of Mama, Mama Becky? That's what he was doing? I guess. A uh, little. Like, everyone needs a week off every now and again, and I understand. And you're it. not. And you're not gonna like what they're gonna put, uh, Mr. Dominic Mysterio next week. Where? They're gonna put him in a cage match against Seth Rollins. Oh yeah, it's a cage match. Time. Yes, yes. Which whatever. Uh, it, more, it, 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 more gimmick matches for the kid. Yep, because they keep oh he's, they're giving him more time to, to spruce up his in ring work, I guess. Well, uh, listen, they're already put, they're already pushing him as the top baby face on there. I mean, look. He, yeah. Yeah, you, you got to give it some levity to it because, look, he's not a bad-looking kid. He's young. Um, he's ba- he's basically one of those 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 uh, inspirational things because, you know, you see young kids who see him and be like, I can do that too. So, you know, maybe – I mean, I could see it. <laughs> That's why they didn't put him on the mask. They don't they, they want to fuck up like the whole Dominic. shit. I want to be like Dominic. Hey, all right, fine. All right, kid. What you want to get? You want to get your ass beat with a cane? I can do that shit. I someone commented. Someone commented in the discussions and called me Dominic. <laughs> yeah, like, you got uh, that. You got that. You I got was, that look. I was like, nah, fam. I ain't Dominic. I'm I'm Dominique. Right. He barely got like, fucking facial hair. Uh, oh come I'm on. Right. Um, and finally, to end the show, we had Dominic Mysterio defeating Murphy via verbal submission. Him quitting literally after a series of kendo stick shots. The Mysterio family was at ringside holding kendo sticks during the match. Um, they have their normal back and forth for a while, but then Murphy gets tied up and the family goes ape shit with a total count of 85 kendo stick shots. Henry, Jesus. did you see how over that shit was with people? Like, people they were loving loved it. That they shit. loved it. They ate that shit like dinner. To have yeah. the whole. I, I don't know. I, I don't understand. I don't understand wrestling fans now. They, I, I saw like three or four videos on Tuesday. And with the with the whole family beating the crap out of 
Murphy with those candlesticks out. And, and it was getting over online. I, I don't understand it. Marco, Marco, it looked like when you wanted to beat the shit out of a piñata and it wouldn't break, so the whole family gets a, <laughs> the whole family you know gets a broomstick. Remember the? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if, don't know if, you're, if Henry remembers when you used to break piñatas that were made out of a, like a, I don't know what they call it, barro there. There was like the a big, the, uh, the big here in Mexico. Big thing, like they were made like, like sort of like uh, I don't know how what, what what's the name, the name of the car. They're so hard. That's like he looked like, like a, big, yeah, like a styrofoam. It's like a hard styrofoam. Yeah, they beat the they shit out of. They beat the shit out of a piñata. That's true. I didn't even thought about that. Yeah. Before. So what? what, what oh, so the night ends up with uh, Murphy saying he quits. He's done. Um, by eighty-five candlestick shots. The one thing people didn't like was Rey Mysterio's wife was looking concerned for Murphy. Rather yeah. than her going, <laughs> fuck you. Well, she's a mother, so she's like, she's. It's my know, little pop, my when, little boy. When my mother would whip my ass with the chancleta, when she hit me with the, the thing, she'd come into the room like 15 minutes later and be like, listen, I didn't mean to hit you like that, but you got to listen. <laughs> <laughs> it's so true. Yeah. That's the chancla <laughs> of infinity. That's, that's the chancla infinity thing, man. <laughs> imagine it, imagine, oh. imagine a, uh, an infinity gauntlet, but it's a chancla. Yo, look at look at Henry's go away. He got the, he got the fucking. Um, the, the Thunderdome picture. Yo, the- <laughs> that's a Thunderdome screen, oh, boy. Oh, my God. We got the Thunderdome picture. So, um, guys, that was Monday Night Raw. Let's move quickly on to AEW Dynamite. I know Red has a lot to say about this episode because um, it was the- it hit a million. As it much as people million. like it or they don't, it hit oh, a million Their first viewers. million since October. Their first million since the oh, debut of the damn thing. So, um, <laughs> so let's go over the show real quick. Um, to open the show, we had a quick... I guess they tried being funny segment between Chris Jericho and MJF basically kissing each other's asses, but then walks away and says, what a loser, at the same time. Corny. Of course, Corny, it's, a, yeah. it's a sitcom. Of course. That's the beginning of, the, of an episode of The Office. Yeah, like, exactly. I, 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 if I, you would have thought that. It, it was like, what a, what a dick. What a yeah, dick. Dwight Schrute would say some shit like that. Him and Jim. That's him and Jim. Or exactly. Like whatever. Um, I guess it was just stupid comedy, but whatever. Um, the, the show opened up with Jurassic Ex- Jurassic Express defeating the Lucha Bros with a fucking shitty, shitty, shitty match. I'm oh, sorry. People called it a, a blood flowing, um, high intense match. It was. Dr- I, don't, I don't know about all that. It was dreadful. Um, people said Lucha. Uh, I think the match ended by Luchasaurus sending uh, sending Phoenix flying off the ropes with a choke slam. Uh, then, then fucking the Lucha Bros hit each other with a fucking Canadian destroyer yes. or some yes, shit like they, that. They, they, yeah. The <laughs> answer was, what the they, fuck? They, they tried try to do a Canadian destroyer on Jungle Boy. He missed. Yeah. And he is his brother. What the fuck <laughs> is that? <laughs> Ending was stupid. Um, so they get the win there, and then, of course, Eddie Kingston comes out and goes off on his team. Yo, yo, pa! Yo, pa! Yo, get over here, pa! Yo, pa! Um, I love yo, he, he, yo, he literally turned to the butcher and was like, yo, where's your wife? Yo, yes. <laughs> what do you think about that? Talking about Allie. Yeah. Come on, man. He's like, like, I'm here, yo. Where's your wife? I'm supporting you, son. Where's your wife? Like, come on, man. Like, what the fuck are we doing? Shake hands. Shake hands, yo. Yo, pa, pa, where's your wife? (laughs) Marco, it took them about... (laughs) Marco, it took them about 15 minutes to shake hands, bro. Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, way too long. Where where are they going with this, though? That's that's the thing I want to know. Nobody knows. knows. Nobody knows. No one knows. It's Eddie Kingston being thrown to a random fucking segment and... uh, a random stable, which makes no sense. I think even I think he even drew a drew, I think he even drew a um a, a um a jab at uh, um Pac. And I yes. think and yes, he, did. he and said he said where's Pac at? And Eddie King somebody clear that he wasn't he wasn't thrown out of the battle royal. He wasn't, yeah. which is a Heath Slater of AEW. Yeah, uh, the longest person in the Royal Rumble of four years. <laughs> um, no, so. it was um what was the other one um. Oh my God! What the fuck is his name? Um, um, Kurt. Latino? No, no. Um, Curtis Axel. Curtis Axel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. Curtis Axel. Um, after that match, we had um, Orange Cassidy defeating Angelico and Helico for Angelico um, via submission. 
Uh, wait, did we? No, no. Oh, no, no, never mind. It was a submission. Um, and Helico works submissions because he is known as a submission specialist. But then Orange Cassidy exploded for a suicide dive, flying crossbody, swinging DDT, and a Superman punch to win. Basically, the shit he does every fucking match. Super squash match. He did his Roman Reigns spear and Superman punch, and they was done. Why are they putting a fucking rocket behind They're him? They're putting this dude on, like, Toy Story rocket. Like, just the quickly, rocket. Like, what just, the just quickly, fuck? I think that match, that match, basically, the way I see it, was more to fucking promote Next week's match, parking lot match between uh, Santana Ortiz and the best friend. That's true, was- true, because of because co- uh, best friends came out after and um, yeah. helped out my man Orange Cassidy because Santana Ortiz um, came up for the attack. Uh, they'll have a parking lot brawl next week. But Red, go ahead. Marco, are you a, are you a fan of the Orange Cassidy look? <laughs> I'm not gonna ask you. Okay, good. I'm not gonna uh, ask you. Okay, good. <laughs> so. so <laughs> Um, pe- 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 people say they're appreciating that Orange Cassidy's now taking every match seriously, and he hasn't done the hands in his pockets lately. That's not true. No, he that's has what someone said it. online, but he like I could, be, I could be wrong. I, I don't it's know. True. That's what, that's what, yeah. that's what a, a local oh. a local news stage a new a local wrestling news group said. Uh, I could, but they're probably wrong. Uh, but uh, Dude, the match better, is better than the guy who was grabbing the he lets grab it the, the crutch thing. Yeah, uh, at, least it's, at least it's not, yeah, at least it's not dick grabbing. Yeah, yeah, at least it's not dick grabbing. Um, the, 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 the match was a, clearly just a match to say, hey, we're still putting over Crick Orange Cassidy. The dude's, like, fucking undefeated. <laughs> and it makes no fucking sense. I, I'm, I'm, I'm fucking the only even the fucking Orange Cassidy. He's fucking boring. Um, up next, we had Chris Jericho and Jake Hager defeating Sonny Kiss and Joey Janela. Um, no DQ for no reason. Why is it no DQ? Yeah, I don't know. Let me ask you that, AW. Why is it no, no DQ? Your gimmick shit sucks, and it doesn't make any fucking sense. I tell you, indie bullshit that doesn't need to be going on. Yeah, um, it's unnecessary. Um, they win the match, and then Chris Jericho announces that the, the, the team of the team of Jericho and Jake are joining the tag team division in hopes to win the AEW tag team belts. We have enough tag that, teams. I I think I think by them two getting becoming tag team. I think the inner circle is going to end up breaking up because now yeah. you're making a tag team and now you kind of like stopping Santana Ortiz. And the sad thing, I've been saying this for like almost a year, Santana Ortiz was the hottest free agent tag team in the scene last year in All Out. And this year they're just wrestling best friends. They, have, they haven't even gotten pushed to the world title picture. I don't understand it. No, it's true. I don't That's true. I, 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 I second that. But I asked for the breaking up of inner circle. Oh, thank God! I, I mean, I think I don't know, really. I think so. I think I think Santana yeah, Ortiz. I think I, I, I think they need to go. They'll break up. Yeah, they need they need to break and up. And they they got to keep Sammy next to Chris for yes, as they long do. as as, yes, as, they as long do. as they can. I think it should be Jericho, Sammy, Hager, and then get a new tech team. Why don't you get fucking um? No, no, no. I'm gonna tell you one thing. I'm gonna throw something out here for y'all guys, and y'all let me know if you agree or not. This whole Eddie Kingston stuff, stuff with the Lucha Bros and all that, I feel like he's gonna betray all of them, and he's gonna join Santana Ortiz, and they're gonna, they're gonna be just a, 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 a LAX. Group. Yeah, they'll, be, they'll, they'll, they'll do LAX again, which I'm not mad at. Like I, I'm it's, not it's, either. It's leading up that way anyway. It's gonna happen. And who it's, knows? They could bring in my homie, bring in my boy Homicide. Let's let's do yes, it. Let's, let's do it again. Wow. Yes. Let's bring wow. Homicide in. I would mark out for that. I, 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 Yo, I, bro, I, I work with all elite, bro. I don't give a fuck, man. Give me one run with the motherfuckers and make the money, and I'm out of here, bro. Yo, fuck yo, yo, yo. If you got Henny, I'm in it, bro. <laughs> I smoke a blunt in the middle of the ring before I fucking leave, bro. For real. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. So what's up? What's up? <laughs> oh my god. Up next, we had Nyla Rose um, defeating the the newly signed Tay Conti, which. Really sounds like cunty in my. Uh, I, I don't want to be mean, but like it just sounds really. I can't say that right. Um, a lot of people giving Tay Conti a, a lot. See, it sounds weird. A lot of praise this week because her bicycle knee kick and a few other moves she did in the match where people were saying were quite impressive. But at the end of the day, she's a great wrestler. Yeah, she she's is actually good. a wor- great worker. I don't know why the fuck NXT got rid of her. She was awesome. I don't know, but she's a really good but, worker. But I'm happy to get these these people these afterthoughts that NXT don't understand what they have and put them to AEW because they need they need them. They need she's them. A, she's a good looking chick. Um, she knows how to wrestle. She was in the May Young Classic. She could work and um. I I I I'm the only thing that confused me wasn't it didn't they give her a fucking contract for the Dark Order? Yeah, but she declined it. Yeah, they did. They, yeah, they did. Give oh, because I no, no, no. Anna Jade tried recruiting her because they they were the tag team 
No, Anna Jay and Tay Conti were the tag team. They tag team together in the tournament. Right, but they tried to recruit her. They tried to so Anna Jay, being her tag team partner, tried recruiting her to the Dark Order, but she said no. Oh, she did say no. Oh, okay. No, 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 no. She gave up. They gave her a folder. They gave her a blue folder. Yeah, but right, she, right. she yeah, yeah, but, yeah, but she took it. She I don't know. It. That's what I'm saying. I never heard anything saying that. I'm happy that I'm happy that she's not in the Dark Order. Let's just say that. Yeah. Let's just go with the fact that I'm happy she's not in the fucking Dark Order because if she she's better by herself. Um, Nyla Rose wins with the Beast Bomb, and of, of course, um, Vicky um, Vicky Guerrero, of course, is screaming the excuse me's as usual. It's good to have her there, but I think that she needs to do more for Nyla Rose. She can't just be standing there doing nothing. Like right. we, we got to do more there, make her a meaningful manager. Cody Rhodes announces that he'll be joining Snoop Dogg, Rosario Dawson, Jennifer Nettles, and Bert Kreisker. Which Bert? Oh my God. Oh my! If Out you of guys all people, know, I know I love Bert. That uh, guy yeah. is a fucking funny He's dude. He's jokes. The machine. Yeah, yeah, the machine. Which the machine. I, I cannot believe that they got the machine to host this shit. By uh, the way, if you got check out his podcast, it's one of the funniest fucking podcasts out there, bro. Bert Crash is fucking hilarious. Um, if you ever seen the movie Van Wilder, yeah, that the the movie's based on him. Oh, is it? Yeah. Oh, right. I, I think I think he said that. Oh. Yeah. Um, the, the 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 new the new show is called the Go Big Show, and basically it's America's Got Talent, but extreme, it's like alligator wrestling and motorcycle. Are you, will you be watching this, Red? No. 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 I, I'm <laughs> not, I'm I'm not I'm I'm not gonna watch it, but I will say one thing. This is huge for AEW. Why? Because you're putting your your you're, you're putting a guy like Cody as a, a judge with Snoop Dogg. It's gonna reach more people. Well, yeah, that's what, that's the only reason why that's they're the doing go- it. Yeah, why do you think? Why do you think Cody agreed to do this? It's yeah. a reach. That's like putting him on America's Got Talent. It, yeah. No matter what, if you like it or not, it's it's a big deal. It reaches people. Henry, would you watch this? No. Uh, Marco, would you watch this? No. Not, I guess. I guess. I guess. The, the, I'll probably. I'll probably. The, wa- no. I'll probably watch it like the first episode just to see how it is. But because I'm not gonna watch it every week. But I want to. I want to. Um, I like Snoop Dogg. So. <laughs> I love Snoop. I love Snoop Dogg. You can't, you can't be mad at Snoop. Yeah, I, I, I prefer it. watching also getting his butt kicked on the on the games he puts on the live stream. <laughs> yeah, wow. he has to do that again too. Who you? Oh me! I don't get my ass kicked on live streams, boy. I beat Doom Eternal. <laughs> Fuck out of here, Marco. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's right. I'd rather watch you uh, stream on um, the worst wrestling matches ever. Oh well, dude, that's coming soon. I actually was thinking about bringing. Oh, uh, yeah. I'm doing that again. That's I'm I'm doing that again this week. Oh, as a matter of fact, I probably do that shit tomorrow after football because yeah, do it oh, do, yeah, Sunday oh, night. Do. Hell yeah, because I now I just figured out how to do a certain trick here on fucking uh, do it. on the on the the expletive. Holy shit, that's gonna be hilarious. And uh, for anyone who's wondering, where's Matt's gaming streams? I got I gotta wait for a game to come out. Uh, everything, I'm buying everything on PS4 right now, and I can't stream that. So when when a, P- yeah. when a PC game comes my way, I'll be streaming. Matt's again. gonna be streaming fucking Tony Hawk's Pro Skater too. So. Oh uh, yeah, because actually <laughs> I'm buying that on PC actually. Uh-huh. So you're right. Um, did you finish Doom? I did, bro. I did. I beat Doom Eternal. I I beat that uh, a while ago. Uh, the, <laughs> that shit would give me a fucking heart attack. Then his fucking computer yeah, blew up. <laughs> the game the game was outstanding. I'll give it a, a good nine and a his half. Fucking, a, a nine his, out of ten. His, com- his computer fucking got uh, it went to therapy. It started taking Ritalin and shit. Yeah. Well, thank God the new computer is better. But the old computer, the PS4 was like, <laughs> like a fucking motor. Um. Also on AW this week, Kip Sabian. Comes out, and I know Red wants to talk about this. Henry, uh, I'm about to give you two the stage on this one because you guys had a nice little debate here. Um, Kip Sabian comes out to announce his best man for his wedding, and um, a big fat guy comes out, which is one of his Twitch followers, which jab at WWE for not supporting Twitch there. Up next, we had Brian Pillman Jr., which I love Brian Pillman Jr. more than the next guy. But the fact that he was staring into the camera while cutting a promo on Kip Sabian was bad. I'm sorry. I love you, Brian Pillman Jr. I think you're great. But he, I don't know if any of you guys noticed it, but he was talking to Kip Sabian but staring at the camera. No, then the other thing was that Kip Sabian says, no, I didn't say you're the best man. I said, you're the best. Man. Man. I don't even like you. What? <laughs> what the fuck are we doing? This is what I'm saying. Oh, what the man. fuck are we doing here? This indie <laughs> bullshit. And, uh, and finally, um, we get the real announcement of the best man, and it is Miro. A.K.A. Rusev. Rusev, ladies and gentlemen, is officially in All Elite <clears throat> and seems to be paired with Kip Sabian to be his, maybe his big boy, uh, his, 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 his big his, back. His, his big back. Uh, Miro comes out saying that he, to put, the met- to put the metaphorical brass ring and shove it up your ass, and that he is back in wrestling and that he is, um, Basically, say, basically cut a promo on WWE. Let's just be real. Um, don't come, they? Don't they all? Don't they? They all do. Um, he cut, uh, and of course, he came out with that Gucci Mickey swag, my son. Which, by the way, Henry, 
Um, yeah. People looked up how much that outfit cost. Th- th- those Mickey Gucci sweatpants cost one thousand five hundred dollars. What? One thousand five hundred dollars for pants. The shirt was five hundred dollars. The Mickey Gucci shirt, and then he wow. and, then, and then and then he had Yeezys for three hundred. What do you so, think about his blonde hair though? And then he bleached his blonde hair. I don't I don't I don't mind it yet. I mean whatever. I'm, like everyone. <laughs> I, 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 <laughs> I don't mind it yet because, like, think, like I mean, people want a change every now and again. Like, it's hair, whatever. If you don't like it, you fucking just dye it back. Or you fuck, it is what it is. But to, um, it's a change. He wanted to look different. I mean, it is what it is. Maybe he, he might look stupid. He might not. But it's his body and whatever. I'm not going to fucking complain about someone's hair color. But he comes out. You know, he comes you know out. What, man? Well, they, go ahead, Marco. Everybody is worried. About, sorry, sorry to inter- interrupt. Oh, no, go ahead, bro. Go. Everybody, it, it, it's, it's, they're worrying about, uh, not because of you, but they are worrying about what they're going to wear and all that. And what about the wrestling? What about the thing you got to do inside of the ring? You're not, did you, not you would think that you would like, think that's wow. the main priority, but 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 um, uh, I had a conversation with Red on the phone about this whole thing. I want Red to give his opinion first, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna throw it to you guys to, for a response. So Red, go ahead. What's the whole thoughts on the whole Miro situation? Because you said you you said it was heartbreaking. Yeah, it Which, is heartbreaking. Wow, it is heartbreaking. It's heartbreaking in two in two folds. Number one, it's heartbreaking to see that WWE let a talented guy like this go. There's yes. so of course. much. Of course, they could have done with him. He could have been their top. Heel. He could have been Universal Champion right now on SmackDown. Look, easily. And, look, and I'm saying, he could have been their top heel numerous times. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. And then you had the hottest thing going in 2018, 2019. Rusev Day. Rusev Day. I mean, that was the most over thing in the company. You dropped the ball on that. and Because it wasn't Vince's creation, so he didn't want to admit it. But not only that, and it's not like the dude can't work. It's it, it's not like you 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 just got a gimmick and it's like okay you know we, we you give him like a fucking Goldberg run and then that's it yeah the guy is a fucking he's a machine he can work yep and you drop the ball on it especially on his yeah. exit out you had a shitty fucking exit out true then you bring him to yeah. AEW and in my opinion it's a shitty entry into fucking AEW as well because you just left. WWE with a fucking married divorce wedding angle to introduce him into AEW with a fucking wedding angle. It's a is this a fucking rib to WWE again? How many times? Pretty much. We, why yeah, are we doing pretty it? Pretty much. Why are we doing That's it? That's why I said AEW's three problems, and one of them is being them being petty to fucking WWE, and they need yeah, to stop focusing they, on they, WWE. Listen, the way the way I see it, the way I see it. His entry, I don't know what I don't know what AEW is gonna do as far as with him with that wedding angle, whatever. But it's like I said on, on online was look, WWE had this guy Rusev, big time. This guy was a he was a monster, and they destroyed him once they put him in the ring with John Cena and made him lose in WrestleMania. Then after that, on top of that, then The Rock embarrassed him in Brooklyn and whatnot. Yeah. And then they put him in this horrendous that to this day. I cannot. Every time I see Lana, I still remember December thirtieth, twenty nineteen. Oh my God, the day <laughs> with the, with the wedding. That was the most horrible shit you ever saw. Just because he didn't sign a contract. So, I mean, and at the top of it, like what what Red just said, the Rusev day, he was getting over a big time with that. And of course, WWE is the type of company that don't want you to be bigger than the company. They go and snatch that off, and then they take um. English away from him, and that's what that was his downfall. But his entry AEW, I'm I mean, I like his whole the way he looked and everything, and his promo. I like his promo. Many, many, many may not agree with me, but I like the promo he said about the imaginary brass ring. But you know, AEW needs to stop taking shots at WWE and concentrate on your company. And we'll see what he does with Miro if he. They probably do a, a, a wedding angle. They're probably better than WWE. Who don't know? But Marco, I, Marco, I'll, I'll let you follow up, and then I'll, I'll finish off of what I, with my statement with this. Yeah, yeah, I, I completely agree with with, with, with Henry. Man. Yeah, you know what? It would be it would have been awesome if they did if the the UFC thing and all that. It would have been awesome that if they put him against Brock, against Brock, because uh, Rusev, well, Miro. Uh, Knows how to wrestle, man. He knows how to do it. He's a he's a mat wrestler. It could have been a cool cool thing with them. 
would have been very, very cool to have him both going head to head, man. Because that guy's Rob big too. Rob versus Rusev would have been a perfect match for yeah. Slam or for uh, Royal Rumble. Yes. But they didn't even do nothing with it. They just let that shit go. I don't understand. It. To me, like I said, um, you bring him in this way. To I would have brought him in as a twenty-first entry in the Battle Royal, in the Casino Battle Royale. Brought him in. You'd have had the final face-off between himself, Eddie Kingston, um, Lance Archer. Lance Archer. Who was the last one? Brian Cage. Brian Cage. Yep. Right. Those four. Those four Titans in the ring right now would already had that fucking uh, a setup going. Because then you, know you would have. You know what's funny? I thought that the last entry for the casino was Rusev. And we and we had we had, we had been thinking. saying it for the longest. Yeah. And so then it was Matt we do that. It would, have been a, it would have been a better impact. You're right, Jay. And then you better. had, and then and if you wanted to, you'd have brought Matt Seidel as the best man, which people would still would have popped for that anyway, because they'd been like, "Oh shit, you got Matt Seidel." Now here's the thing: we discussed about who knows, maybe he's gonna turn on Matt. Si- he's gonna turn on Kip Sabian during the wedding, and it goes, but for what? That that does yeah. nothing. He, that Matt, Kip Sabian is a is it's a middle card nothing. He's a, he's he's a lower middle card nothing. So that does nothing. What are you gonna do? Take Penelope Four away from him? Yeah, like what? What and do like the fucking Lashley shit? Come no, on. God, yeah. I hope not. I and and, hope and not. this is what I'm saying. You have you have a bunch of guys. He could have came in straight. What's Brian Cage doing now? Fucking around with Darby Allen. You could, if you wanted to, you could have brought him in as Darby Allen's fucking muscle. Sure. Yeah, that's true. Because you yeah. have you have yeah. you have Ricky Starks that's going on wanting to go challenge. You could have had him go up against Brian Cage early. Right out the gate. Yeah. And that's why he should have been 21 in the fucking Battle Royal. I said the only thing that pissed me off greatly was how they brought him in here. And I usually don't, and I usually say, look, I, and I did it to Raw Underground. I did it to how they introduced Keith Lee. I really didn't say much because I said, you know what? I like to see things run and then I'll make my fucking statement about it. But when it came to this, it was heartbreaking because I said, this guy deserves way better than this. He's a fucking the hottest free agent at that time, and we bring him in. Even the look, even the blonde hair. Okay, Stan. Um, all right, Slim. Uh, I wrote you, but you still ain't calling. Um, <laughs> it's not a to me. It's not a good look. You should have fucking tinted your fucking beard as well, blonde as well. But whatever, in the case may be. It's um. Right. Yeah. But other than that, like I, I, I don't know. I, I, like I said, it's just heartbreaking. This guy deserves way, way better than that. Better, yeah. That, so under, better. he is so underrated, man. And once again, and what I was trying to explain to to Oski during the week when we had a conversation was, first impressions mean everything. As much uh, as you may think that it's it's narrow minded thinking, first impressions mean everything. Listen, if you watch a TV show in the first five minutes, it doesn't captivate you. You don't watch it. You if you watch, the if if, true, if, if true. the Avengers, you started the Avengers, and all we talked about was Captain America fucking crying about. Um, whatever the fuck that bitch's name was, for fucking ten minutes, you're not watching the Avengers. That is true. Yeah. It, it's it's real. So the first thing I see is Miro coming out in this stupid ass segment with this fucking look that he got going on. That and I'm swag like, shit. And I'm like, all right, whatever. I'm I'm uh, whatever. I think so, that, I think that, I think there's better coming from Miro. I mean, uh, you know, uh, you know, you're for, being optimistic, which is cool. But first, impre- I mean, like, first impressions are everything. I mean, optimistic because it's only one week and he hasn't even wrestled yet. Right. I mean, the yeah, wrestling yeah. is not a problem. We all know the guy could work. That's not a problem. No, but like, but like, we don't even know what his role is gonna be. He's gonna be the muscle. That's what he's gonna be. Uh, I don't, uh, dude. Muscle, and yeah. Kip said he's gonna get pushed, and somewhere down the line. Sure. Yeah. Sure. And, I'll, and you know what, though? I like Kip Sabian, but I don't think Rusev should be anyone's muscle. He should be his own muscle. He should be by himself. Right. He should be solo. Um, and uh, to be honest, there was a clear cut winner for who should have been Kip Sabian's best man. And it should have been his, his tag team partner in the Indies, which it oh. was actually a really well known tag team partner. I forgot his name. I can look it up. But it was like the, it was like the, the, it was like him, it was him and this guy. Uh, I, I'm, oh, I'm looking it up right now. I got you right now. Because uh, it makes perfect sense because because uh, I looked it up. And he actually had a really successful tag team in fucking in the indies. Like it, it worked. And I looked and you're filibustering. Just to say, look, listen. At the end of the day, Miro. Okay, okay, okay. Red, I'm not filibustering. No, no, I'm, 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 I'm looking up the fucking information. <laughs> we both do that all the time. Matt, Don't cut Matt, that shit out, Matt, Pop. That's what it's called. 
I gotta fucking that, find the information. Matt, that's what it's called. You're fil- I'm, there's nothing wrong with it. That's, that's not a negative thing to say. You're filibustering because you're trying to figure out who's the tag partner. Yeah, so I'm I don't trying have the name. To, I'm trying to take the weight from you, bro. Please help me. Tag Relax, me in. man. Tag me in. Because you I'm, see how defensive he gets? I was trying I'm to help him. Yeah, I'm not in a good mood right now, all right? I just I found out about my, I just found out about my car, all right? <laughs> Shit. No, no, Marco! No! <laughs> Don't scream, you're gonna blow out the fucking. It's alright! <laughs> I'll fucking do it. Oh, um, I'll do it! Hey, hey, come down, man, come down! Um, I think his name was Brad Slater or Martin Kirby. All right, I don't know the fucking guy. But oh, it might have been Martin Kirby. Martin I don't know who it is, but th- but I think Martin Kirby was in um I think Martin Kirby was in um, um NXT. UK. That's why they said it couldn't happen. Yeah, I think he was in NXT UK. Right, but but like I said, there was a better option for it. Uh, but let's move on. MJF, there's a segment with MJF firing his campaign staff and saying the campaign's officially over. And he has a heated conversation with Wardlow. He has to remind the big man that he's not signed by AEW or Tony Khan, which that makes no sense because he has matches before he was with MJF, but sure. He has to remind him that um, the big man um, who actually signs his checks is MJF, not Tony Khan, and that it is not time for aggression. Instead, it is time for planning to get back on top. I think the scene did well to address the heat between MJF and Wardlow. Eventually, it'll, it'll, it'll give Wardlow his Batista evolution moment. The thumbs up, thumbs down bullshit um, when the time is right. It serves another brick building toward their eventual separation. And um, I, I, I don't mind seeing Wardlow alone. I, I don't mind it. And the first thing that comes to mind is, you know when you know when Hulk beat the shit out of Loki in Avengers? And yeah. just like threw him back and forth. I'm gonna get yeah. that. I'm gonna get that vibe with Warlow versus MJF <laughs> so one day. It's it's com- it's coming. You just answer my. You just answer my my whole thing. Puny MJF. Thank you. Thank you. Marco. Oscar. Marco hates. Uh, Marco hates MJF. I, I know, know. I know. I love MJF. I, I, Marco. I love MJF. Marco. He's Marco. MJF's working you. Uh, so you'll figure that out one day though. Uh, oh my god <laughs> he's working you bro uh, yeah, up next FTR celebrates their status as tag team champs with backhanded compliments to the other tag teams this led to Jurassic Express taking exception and dumping the ice box from uh, the cooler onto FTR which causes a tag team match a non-title match for next week I don't know who cares about this, but it's not me. Next, I, I didn't like I didn't like that segment at all. No one did. With the elite, it made, it made FTR look like some, you know, like they're not even serious about the tag team scene. Nope. And then, uh, why? Why be serious about it if the fucking if if AEW is not serious about it either? The whole division is jam packed, and they still don't know how to fucking do tag team wrestling. Why you care? Jurassic Express wrestling the the chance of what we all know is probably gonna happen. They get tag and they get a tag team title shot. I'm gonna be pissed. They don't deserve a tag. Uh, Red, can you go over just quickly what, what Hangman and Kenny Omega said on both their sides in terms of their interviews? I could care less, and to be honest yeah. with you, it's Real, just uh, I mean, all right. I mean, so fucking For the sake good. of the fans, can, for, the, for the sake of the listeners, it's can you just give a, a quick synopsis? Oh because because Because, you know, Hangman was upset like that he I lost said, his best friend. Hang, hang, uh, it's, like I said, it's fucking telonovela. Dos mujeres, un camino. It's just so... Horrible. Well, Kenny announced he's singles now and back. He's a cleaner's back. I uh, don't know how that's gonna succeed because he's and basically killed him uh, his own shit. And Hangman keeps wearing that bad ad, a fucking eye makeup, fucking mascara and shit. It's terrible. <laughs> like Ursula from Little Mermaid or some shit <laughs> like that. God awful. I listen. I I like I, I like I said earlier. I I, I drink. I, I I fucking indulge in 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 liquor. I enjoy being drunk. I don't get fucking depressed. And if I do. Walk around like that. I listen to R and B music and sing to myself. I don't sit there and look like I'm fucking gonna slip my wrist. Drunks are either <laughs> obnoxious, annoying, or funny as fucking hell, or they're angry. They're never fucking depressed. Go do heroin or blow. Oh, wow. <laughs> Jesus. Matt, What's up? Matt, uh what do you think about about the young bucks super kicking um Marvez and then they announcing he get they're getting fined five thousand dollars. Oh my god! I'm, I, I'm over it. I'm, I, 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 to me, it's not a heel turn. It's a pissy fit. It's a fucking temper yeah, tantrum yeah. from five year olds. <laughs> it's. It, it reminds me of like when my friend in my first grade class didn't get the right purple crayon in, when we were coloring fucking oh, pears. Like I said, like, like, like uh, I said they're natural douchebags. There's no need for this. They're, they don't need to do all that. Five thousand. You guys are already known that's as some change, pa. You guys are known as fucking executive vice presidents. You should have been fined a hundred thousand. Yeah, make it more realistic. Make it more but... realistic, you stupid asses. Um, also, you fucking idiot. Also on the show, we gotta move. Keep moving. Um, <laughs> unfortunately, we gotta keep moving. But uh, Lance Archer and Moxley cut promos back and forth on each other in the back. I'm not gonna say what they said because they're just hyping each other up for their title match on October 14th, which is the debut 
I mean, not the Nelda. I think it's the one-year anniversary episode of yeah, Lola Lee. Yeah, anniversary. Was it October 14th? Yeah. Which it's I'm pretty October, sure. No, it's not. It was October 2nd. And no. The they're, they're calling it the one-year anniversary episode. Yeah, because yeah. we went. But it was on October 3rd. Yeah, because October we went. 2nd. We was at. um. We was at. at Lola Lee, um, Philly. It went. Philly on the 17th. Of October? Yeah. Damn, we were there early. Yeah, Shit. yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, also, and to finally close off AEW this week, holy shit, so much stuff to talk about. We had um, Dustin Rhodes versus Brody Lee for the TNT Championship to close the night. Red, what do you thought about the main event? I thought Dustin did a hell of a job, man. The guy fucking, he could he could wrestle with a, a wet paper bag and fucking pull out a, a match, Yo, man. Yeah, that's true. 30 years. Yeah, Dustin, Dustin is doing good, man. He's healthy. He's fit. I'm so happy that he's in the best shape uh, of his life. But are we going to be teasing another fucking Cody versus Dustin match because of, of mm-hmm. the whole storytelling that he's not there? He's out there re- fucking recording a game show, blah, blah, blah. No, I doubt it. I uh, doubt it. I hope I think, not. I think, I, think, I, think, I think they rolled off Dustin Rose when Brody Lee kicked him in the nuts. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah. Um, so Brody Lee, Brody Lee retains the belt. Uh, of course, the the Dark Order came to uh, Brody Lee's reassurance there to close out the night, and uh, that was AEW. It was, um, I think, it reached one million guys. So you, you, whatever you can say about it, it, it fucking it broke numbers this week. On to NXT as we had um, to open the show of all things. We had Finn Balor versus Adam Cole for the NXT Championship. Still haven't watched that fucking. And match. I will tell you, um, you need to because that was match of the week in my opinion. I yeah. thought it was fucking yeah. great. Yeah. I thought they they threw it down. My hair. It was are standing. Yeah, it was good. As yeah. Fucking great. It that was awesome. so good. It was it was truly yeah. it was truly. Yeah. If someone goes up to you and goes, "Yo, I want to see Adam Cole. What what is he like?" Do me a favor. Go back to watch NXT this week and watch Adam Cole versus Finn Balor, and that could really give you an idea about what these there two guys could do. No better storytelling, no better way of putting a match together, no better way of showing two guys off and exposing what great wrestling is with these two fucking guys. I mean, and I, I'm, I'm thankful that it was on Tuesday yep. because if it was on Wednesday – the fucking AEW marks of wrestling assholes would have not seen what a great match that was. Which, they would have which, which I feel like we should all go on, on, on online and just vouch to move NXT to Tuesday at this I want to do a GoFundMe or fucking uh, change.org to say move fucking NXT to Tuesday. Because Tuesday? Yo, well, Tuesday. Already, already, <laughs> already, already yeah. doing it for Tuesday? For nah, they haven't. It's they temporary because the NHL playoffs. And they haven't decided yet. But USA has been saying, listen. This you got to do this. You got to do it. It's it best for happen. business. In your words, Triple H or whatever, it's best for business. Yeah. Both of these shows are thriving on separate nights. AEW, million. NXT, maybe even more. Like 900, maybe they're getting close to a million. Every week, they're getting their numbers right and Vince, separately. Vince, it's not retreating. It's what you call fucking Adapting. doing business. And yeah. that's better for business. Absolutely. Man. So um, the match was phenomenal. And I will say that uh, I will g- gladly say that Finn Balor is once again your NXT champion. Thank I, you. I couldn't be happier for this. I'm but so this, fucking this, happy. This, this was a beautiful story, and, and and not only that, you got the current longest reigning champion fighting against the guy who's behind him as a second reigning champion. So that was perfect. Great storytelling. Yeah. Great storytelling. I love the whole stun and death feel. I love how it opened up the show. And everyone's like, why did it open up? Because they wanted to make it so it happened right after their, their draw. And not only that, they, that's what's going to pull you in to sit down and watch the shit. Absolutely. Yeah. So, Finn yeah. Balor, congratulations. And by the way, for everybody who sits there and says, like, what the fuck is happening with Finn Balor? Finn Balor, going back to NXT, it was possibly needed. saved his fucking career. Yep. Because yep. what happened to him in a in a fucking main roster yep, was bad, and it was, yeah, and it they, was they tried awesome. they tried pushing him, and Vince said, "Oh, you're hurt. I'm never I'm never pushing you again." Um, I'm so thankful Finn Balor went back what? to NXT, and I'll tell you one more thing about Finn Balor going to NXT. Um, I don't know if you guys see his personal life, but that dude's like in love, love with that be- with that fucking um, weather woman, and uh, he just got married. And he has his own clothing line. Spanish man. It's like, I got some Spanish woman. He is Love. like, he's living life. He, literally, he, he just posted online. He goes, everyone's wondering how I'm celebrating. My wife cooked me a steak and we're watching Money Heist. I'm okay with life. I'm like, I wonder if he still lives out here. I don't think so. He's no, still... he moved. He's in Florida now. Oh, he is? Oh, okay. He's, yeah, because now NXT went back to Florida. Yeah, because um, he, yeah. he, he used to live out here. Um, uh, but, but yeah, but everybody's sitting there talking about, hey, listen, Finn will make his return to the main roster. Not soon, but he will. And hopefully, I hope not. I, but I hope I hope so, and I hope it'll be his last one because Finn is getting a little bit older. He's gonna get that AJ run, hopefully, and you know, that's when he's gonna get the, the respect that he needs on that main roster. Because, but right yeah. now NXT is perfect for him. They need to do that to a lot of other motherfuckers too. They need to kick him down there too. 
Which who? Who would yeah. you, you put it down next to? Right I, we, we will say Ricochet. Definitely. We'll That's say they need to put them down. You know, it's we'll so do. sad who? to say that, but you're right. Ricochet it. Um, um, Henry said. Yeah. Um, but once again, congratulations. We'll do a cut of a promo about that. Once again, guys, congratulations to Finn Balor for once again being NXT champion. I couldn't be more happier. Uh, I wanted him to win the whole damn thing last week, and I'm happy to see him be back on top in NXT where he fucking belongs. Also yes. on NXT this week, we had, um, I don't know what this was. We had a food fight at Johnny Gargano's house with Tegan Knox and Candice LeRae. Can we really cut this bullshit out? They're trying to give both of these motherfuckers, Gargano and Candice LeRae, like some kind of character, and it's just not They're happening. They're trying to be like Bluto, and it's like, uh, from Popeye, and it's just it's not working not with me. It's not happening. Um, <laughs> uh, it's like, it's, it's not working. They're just, they're just fucking dry sponges. They're, they're I, talented in the ring, but when it comes to characters, they're just bland. Um, Tegan Knox was invited to the Gargano home to make up with Candice LeRae. Nothing, nothing. It ended up in a food fight. Whatever. Next. Uh, I, I hate it, but I hate to see it. That's how NXT is getting now. That's ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Breezango cut a promo on winning their NXT tag team belts and announced that they'll face Imperium next week for a rematch. Um, and probably one of my, I actually really enjoyed this match. Bronson Reed defeats Austin Theory, which um, I'm sorry. Really I'll, good match. And I'll admit it. I'll be the first one to admit it. Um, I think Austin Theory came out looking like a fucking million dollars yes, this he week. Did. Uh, uh, his, his gear, the change of the gear, the way they put the spotlight on him. Oh. That dude is a Chris Masters. The, the Chris Masters is what he wanted Chris Masters to be. That dude is fucking amazing. And it's only 22, 23 years old. And he's, tw- he's my age. And, um, and I got to give kudos to Bronson Reed, too. These two guys are the future of professional wrestling. I, I really yeah, do. Yeah. I, I, I am fully – I am cashed in on Bronson Reed and Austin Theory. Yeah. I, I am. I'm fully locked in. These two guys are going to be stars we see for a very long time. Uh, Theory tried to pick up the big man up and never succeeded, and um, Reed crushed him. Uh, you know, what can you say? Um, Robert Stone tries to destroy the tank in the back of Shotzi Blackheart's tank, but Shotzi surprises him, and Aaliyah blindsides her. Can we just can we all accept the fact that Aaliyah was a terrible choice to be a part of Robert Stone? She's te- she, she can't wrestle and she has no charisma. She's <laughs> yeah, no, I tell you one thing. She came she she came a long way from what she used to be. So she went from uh, shitty to mediocre shitty. Um, like uh, <laughs> I I could you could have easily you could have easily told me like Candice LeRae joined that or some shit like or like right. even like um or someone anyone else at this point. But is it Mercedes else. Martinez with him? Yes. So yes, well, yeah. So Aaliyah, Aaliyah to me, I think Nina, they feel sorry for her and they want to keep her around because she's been there what five, six years. Yeah. And she still hasn't improved. They no need way. to make her a fucking valet or something. Yeah, they do because yeah. it's, it's 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 not working. Um, Shotzi Blackheart helps um, Io Shirai um, fight off Robert Stone and Aaliyah, but Shotzi holds on, holds on to the NXT Women's Championship. Um, I would love to see Io Shirai versus Shotzi Blackheart. We all know who's gonna win, but I'll be entertained with that. Not mad at that at all. Roderick Strong then went on to defeat Killian Dane. And how do you think about that match? I, I it would have been it would have been fun at another time. Not this week. But it, not this week. It was week. already too packed yeah, for me. Not this week. It would have been a good mid card. And what mate. the fuck is? What are they doing with Drake Maverick? Nothing. What the fuck nothing. Is nothing. That? They signed him. and They automatically it's regret the, it. Then they team him up with Killian Dane. They did, but it's still like it, they, I don't. They're trying don't to pull. The, they're trying to pull the team. Hell no. Yeah. With I, these two guys, I guess, and it's not working. And I'll be the first one to say this. Um, I think NXT hired Drake Maverick because they saw him cry and they instantly regretted it and said, oh, never mind, we don't want him. Yeah. But now they're stuck with the fucking guy. Yeah. So it, it is what it is. Um, but um, Drake Maverick tries to help car- um, Killian Dane. But at By the, the end, way, what's the Cruiserweight belt there? They're, 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 um, they're showcasing that on 205 Live right now. Oh, okay. They're going back and forth with it. I, thought, I saw Fantasma fight um, whatever, Isaiah Scott, whatever his name is. That was NXT? That was uh, like two weeks ago. Didn't he defend the belt? Yeah, two weeks ago. Yeah, yeah. but oh, not okay. now. Oh, okay. Um, also, this week on NXT, Velveteen Dream defeated Ashante Adonis. In a, Which, in a, by the way, was not a bad match. It either. wasn't, and I think Ashante actually did pretty good. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 yeah. I, was, I was shocked. Yo, it was actually a pretty good match. It was like, shit. I know everybody was pissed off, and they, they don't want to give him the credit, but he actually looked good, Velveteen. He looked, he looked As good. a heel, the yeah. way he should be. Uh, I... I I'll be the first one to say it too. Uh, this one as well. Velveteen Dream versus Kushida. Sign me up. Yeah. Sign me up. It needs that, to happen. That's a good mix. Well, Kushida's going to get pinned again or, or because uh, Kushida, I don't know. He doesn't care. He's just making money. He's making know? bread and he almost yeah. killed Velveteen this week after um, destroying him with the security. It was it was truly cool. Yeah. But I will give the kudos to the best part of NXT this week for me, which was Timothy Thatcher's film school. And I'll tell you why. 
This is how you turn per- someone bland as kettle chips into a fucking star. Timothy Thatcher took oh. time this week with footage to teach us how Damian Priest wrestles so he could be prepared for their North American Championship title match next week. Great way to show that a wrestler is scouting their opponent. For example, he said, Oh, you see how Damian Priest leaves his legs open there? See, if I was in the ring, I would sweep the leg and then grab him into an armbar. That shit got me, ho- that shit got me horny, son. <laughs> We're gonna have to get you laid soon. I got oh, yeah, well, wow. it's a dry spell, but you know this shit. This shit was straight fire. The, uh, uh, Henry, I don't know if you agree with me on this one, but I think, I think it was so fucking amazing. What I think it was doing. the leg opening spot that got him over. Of course, uh, of, co- of course, it was. <laughs> but, the fact, but the fact, but the fact that, but the fact that he's doing film and scouting his opponents and going, "Yo, see how Damian Priest wrestles? He always has his foot this way. So if I grab him by the like that, shit got me like goosebumps. That's how wrestling is should be, and that was fucking awesome." Timothy Thatcher is not, is not a joke. That dude, he reminded me of Sack Saber Jr. Even though wow. Sack Saber way better than him. But, but he's, his submission moves, I mean, all you got to do is look at the, his Finn Balor match that they had, I think, was it a takeover? That was a great match. Yes, it was. It was. Absolutely. Um, so NXT is looking pretty good. And then finally for the main event, we had Rhea Ripley versus Mercedes Martinez in a steel uh-huh. cage match. Red, what were your thoughts on the main event? <laughs> and Rhea Ripley got hurt. He's Listen, up. I'm not a fan of having these women throw a lot of fucking uh, 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 hardware into the match. Uh, you know, but this is one of those blood matches once again. And when you see both these women, a vet like Mercedes, a uh, 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 fresh eyed fucking talent like Rhea Ripley go at it in a, in a steel cage match nonetheless. What a fire main event. Yo, Cornette even said that they used the fucking cage like fucking Steamboat and Ric Flair. That's yeah, a big that's a fucking big compliment, compliment yeah, yo. That's big. That's, that's amazing. Big. So it comes to terms to me where I say although I may not like to say to see a lot of these these these, these wrestlers go this route especially at this time but Rhea Ripley got to spread her wings and go to the fucking main roster. It's time. I think SmackDown needs she her. She is so fucking Good. marketable. Yep. Yeah. The look, the appearance, the gimmick, just the, the, the swag, everything works for her, and she's fucking awesome in the ring. Yeah. Mercedes will be able to hold down that NXT fucking for that, a while. That NXT for a while. She's older. She's a little bit older, but she can still hold it down until somebody comes in. And, 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 and imagine, and, imagine Rhea Ripley versus Bailey. Uh, on SmackDown, that would work. But they're not doing that. What they're doing now is is now Mercedes is gonna come up, be part of the retribution, and leave Rhea Ripley down there instead of bringing her up. But let's let, let's think about it. If Rhea Ripley was to come up already, Mercedes already in the roster. Who's gonna carry that woman's division? If Sharad loses that belt, who's gonna carry that? This is what I'm saying. This is where you have to. This is what we said. But you know, it, it, to be honest. NXT WWE might need to start throwing that money to Tessa Blanchard. They might. They might need to. They have to do it, man. But Tessa's have to wrestling, do it. Tessa's wrestling um, and um, she's wrestling. wrestling this weekend. Yeah, so, but, you know, she, she they might need to start throwing her that money. But other than that, she it, it, that that women's division, whether it be on SmackDown or on Raw, it needs a jump start. It needs, it needs a, it needs a, because after this Sasha and fucking Bailey shit, Charlotte's not going to be back in a year. Becky's gonna be no. pregnant. She's not gonna come back for like another another a year and a half. So it's like, yeah, it, it, they need they need that jumpstart star star there. And would love to see Rhea and fucking Shayna on the main roster. Would love those that's those are those are matches that could happen. Yeah, it could. So it could. yeah. So but other than that, that was probably the best women's match we've seen on NXT in a long time. It was really yeah. good. I really enjoyed it. It was a great finish to the show, and I think NXT was pretty solid this week. So to finally close off the run the squared circle, let's go to SmackDown real quick. It's been Roman Reigns and Paul Heyman entering the ring to open the show. Uh, what happened? Put me to sleep. It put you to sleep? Yeah. Jesus Christ. What do you thought about Roman Reigns and Paul Heyman this week? I thought it was another great popper. And I, man, let me tell you something. Because Henry just put, said he put, put to sleep. This new fucking ro- But you know why? Because, you know. He's old like me, so you know we gotta go to sleep a little bit <laughs> earlier. Ya no soto tan viejo. We can't. We can We can't be up past eight o'clock. So and then yeah. plus with 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 Paul talking like with the reigning Roman Reigns. 
it's, it's not like what he did with Brock. Yeah, he it's didn't more go. He's, he's more subtle. But, but let me tell you, I like the Roman thing, though, man. I like. I love it. He's very, very subdued. Yep. He's not getting involved. He's to he's himself. Staying low key. I like that. I do. I'm, I, I'm fucking with this. Um. So Jay Uso comes to the ring, um, saying that he wanted to thank uh, Paul Heyman for for replacing uh, for getting him a shot last week, but he said it was all Roman. And that he'll do the same thing he, they did his kids and whoop his ass. Um, King Corbin interrupts. Sheamus interrupts. And we get a tag team match later on in the night. Uh, Billy on SmackDown cuts an in-ring promo carrying the chair she used to attack Sasha last week. Saying she knows everyone wants answers to why she attacked uh, Sasha. But instead of answers, she has questions. She asked if Banks thought she was an idiot who didn't know what her partner was thinking all along. Bailey knew, she said, that Banks was just waiting for her moment to strike after keeping her close for years. But said that after last week, she realized Bailey is now completely useless to her. Um, uh, Henry, what do you think about um, how they're approaching this Bailey and Sasha Banks split up? Because I think it's great. I think it's actually a. It, I, think, it, I actually, it, it, I actually think it's a pretty it, good twist because everyone expected to it exactly what Bailey said was going to happen. Sasha to it, strike. It's going to drag, though. I'm telling you right now, it's probably going to drag. Oh, let's go to Mania. Let's go to Mania, pa. Yeah, uh, uh pa. <laughs> let's go to Mania, pa. <laughs> <laughs> that's his new. That's his, that's his new gimmick right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's my new thing right now. So, so to me is they're gonna drag this uh, all the way probably to WrestleMania. I think when they do the uh, the Royal Rumble, when they do the Rumble, I think the last entry may be Sasha Banks, and then because because uh, supposedly the injury she got from Bailey was you know she had her head through the damn chair, so that's a neck injury. So we don't know when she's coming back. Is she returns, Royal Rumble? It's gonna be stupid. I said she'll be. She, she, she's winning the Royal Rumble. Yeah, she'll win the Rumble, and then they'll face in WrestleMania. And probably do a classic, another classic match. Yeah, and they'll, 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 they'll get yep. together. It's, it's classic. Yep, I was there for NXT Brooklyn. That shit was fucking un- unreal. How good that was. Yeah. Um, oh, also on NXT, oh, no, NXT let's hear what I'm saying, long day guys. Um, also on SmackDown, we had Lucha House Party defeating um, Cesaro and Nakamura via pinfall. Um, Lucha House Party. Kalisto announcing that he's the leader. Um, and the sky's blue. We knew that already, dickhead. Uh, <laughs> but, the, but, the, but uh, but that was stupid because now you got you got Nakamura and Cesaro are supposed to defend the belts against the Prophet. Though they're supposed to wrestle each other this week, but then you have uh whatever Lucha House Party defending the champions. What what kind of shit is that? How does it make no sense? Well, they just they're just champion versus champion from now. They're not they're not going for belt for belt. Yeah, no, they're just, they're just having some. Friend. Which, by the way, speaking of that, I also got an idea to believe that they might be getting rid of the women's tag titles though, because they breaking up all the tag. Yeah, they might, they might. They all might. Right. They might. That's weird. They might unify the men's title. So. Yeah. Yeah, we, anyway. So the street profits backstage um, um distract Nakamura and um sh- and um Cesaro uh, to get the Lucha House Party the win by pit by roll up once a fucking again by once oh. again the roll ups ladies and gentlemen the roll ups and no not the fruit roll ups. Otis defeats John Morrison in possibly the most annoying and fucking complicated storyline on WWE television. Let's get this straight. Mm-hmm. I want yeah. everyone I want everyone to listen to me closely here because this is gonna get real complicated. So. During the match, right, Miz stole Otis's Money in the Bank lunchbox because last week we found out that Otis switched the briefcase with the lunchbox, right? So the briefcase has meat, and the lunchbox supposedly has the contract, right? So Miz said, let's steal the fucking lunchbox this week. Accomplishing what Morrison didn't last week when he stole the briefcase, getting the contract. They go backstage, and they open up the lunchbox expecting a contract, but guess what they found out? Eating apple. <laughs> that Otis kept the title match contract in the lunchbox. But later, we found out that Otis revealed that Miz stole a, a lunchbox, but not the lunchbox, revealing the contract was still in his briefcase. This sounds like um, Maze Runner. I don't even know where the contract is anymore. Is it up my fucking, my up my culo? Where the fuck <laughs> is this contract, son? Yo, Red, this is what you be teaching, Matt? <laughs> Yes, <laughs> unfortunately, God. unfortunately, uh, where the, I, I don't know where the damn contract. Like, like um, I, I feel you know what City Field where they play the game where they put the Heinz chips under the Mets helmets and you gotta find yeah, out where yeah. it's at for a snack pack. This is I feel like this is what the fuck this is. Where the this fu- is a Vince booking all, <coughs> all over it. it. This has Vince oh booking God. all over it. Corny like, shit, corny shit. Be funny. Yep. Be funny. That's the problem. Yep. 
comedy, and that's it's just true. fucking ridiculous. Like I don't know what the fuck the gimmick is here. It's just I I feel high watching this gimmick, this storyline. Let me ask you a question: Do you guys think that <laughs> was it a smart move that John Morrison went back to WWE where they got him doing these stupid? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah, I do. Yeah, I think yeah. I think he's happy, content, bring the big bucks that that fucking his woman can't do at Impact. And I think that one day soon we'll actually get Morrison um, by himself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I see that happen. It's coming. Also, Bray Wyatt introduced a new friend into the Firefly Funhouse this week, and it was not Alexa Bliss. Um, it was supposed to be Pasquale the Persevering Parrot, <laughs> but Pasquale did not what? pop out of the box from which Wyatt tried to reveal him, and, and after technical difficulties, Wyatt said he should have cut some holes in the box and the parrot was dead. <laughs> <laughs> like, yo, I'm sorry, bro, but this shit is like Muppets <laughs> Now on Disney Channels on the Disney Plus, boy. Oh I, my god, my son killed the. My son said that he didn't cut holes in the box, so the oh, parrot died. Oh, oh. Absolutely <laughs> gold. It's fucking that gold. That almost brought tears to the eye, like seeing my side. Oh fucking. By the way, I'm sorry, but I fucking yo, Red was in cry. tears. I was in tears when I saw that Matt Sido shit. Yo, like, yo, because we were all like mad hype. Yo, yo, third eye, and he fucked up. But no, <laughs> it wasn't. It wasn't Pasquale. It wasn't Pasquale the persevering parrot, guys, because he unfortunately died in the box. But it was. Oh wait, no. I'm um, sorry. Before that, the Vince McMahon puppet appears to say that Wyatt couldn't handle the responsibilities of the Funhouse and revealed the new special advisor to the Funhouse, Wobbly Walrus, a puppet play on Paul Heyman. Yeah. I am so loving this because it, it, it takes it, it gives you a time for the show just to laugh and enjoy ribs and fucking jokes. Like now we have Vince the puppet and Paul Heyman the puppet. Uh, who's next? I tell you, I swear. Paul must have seen that shit. And must have died. He must have been yep. laughing hysterically. Absolutely. I can only imagine. Um, so now we have a new um, character, which I guess now he'll be controlling Rambling Rabbit and the whole crew of the Firefly Funhouse. <laughs> um, uh, once, again, <laughs> once again, guys, the name is Wobbly Walrus. Um, yeah. un un unreal. And uh, also on SmackDown this week, um, I got to give a tip of the hat to Sami Zayn for, for really selling this IC belt like it's fucking meant to be. He's making this belt seem so fucking important that he, that even on Twitter, he's making it awesome. Um, we were supposed to have AJ Styles and Jeff Hardy for the Intercontinental Championship. Championship, but ended up in a disqualification after a great match. It was a great match, but Sami Sami Zayn interrupts to claim that he was the true champion. He haluba kicks Jeff Hardy, but then we get a storyline where people think that it was a rib towards Matt Hardy because after the match, Jeff Har uh, Matt Har uh, Jeff Hardy stumbles and then falls after the match due to what was later said to be "quote unquote" dehydration. Before Styles was interviewed backstage and said he could beat both men, um, you know, I guess it's gonna be a three way. But what, do you, Red? What are your thoughts on? Do you think that's a rib towards Matt Hardy? Are we doing? Didn't this happen before something like that? Yes, like Montez, whatever the fuck it was. Yeah. But, like, no, but like, he, like once Matt Hardy like stumbles and shit like that. Now they're doing it on SmackDown where Jeff Hardy stumbles because of dehydration. Oh. Doesn't that sound a little suspect? I don't know. I, I, Can you two stop fighting? It's like the Democrats and Republicans. Fucking go to a corner and just fucking... I think it's just a bad... I think it's just a bad, I think it's just a bad reach. It's a bad um, reach and it was fucking lame. I'm not a fan of it at all. Um, and before we get to the main event, one more thing. We had uh, the Fatal 4-Way Women's Match for the number one contender to face Bailey at um, Class of Champions. And um, the match sucked. Nikki Cross wins. The only positive thing of the match that came out of it was Alexa Bliss hitting the sister Abigail on Nikki Cross. What a great yeah. moment there um, as we see Alexa Bliss slowly but surely become Sister Abigail herself. And uh, finally on SmackDown to close off the, the segment here, we had Jey Uso fighting most of the night by himself versus Sheamus and King Corbin. But out of nowhere, Roman Reigns' music's hit, music hits. He pulls the old payback and comes in. Tags himself in the quick spear on on um, Sheamus with the spear with, to to win to win the match and uh, Roman Reigns comes out once again not giving a fuck about anyone but himself and that closes off SmackDown guys yeah Roman pretty much he comes in his gimmick now is I'm gonna come in late and just win shit come in and leave and yeah, I'll come exactly. in win and leave that's his, and that's what his shirts say so guys before we close it out uh, we're gonna go around the go around the squared circle Henry who do you give your MVP to this week of oh, wrestling in Balor. Finn Balor. Looks like this might be universal. Marco, who do you give your MVP to? Rhea Ripley. Oh, nice. Mercedes. Nice, nice. 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 Oh, oh, what the hell? Oh, here we go. Here we go. Uh, Red, who's yours? 
I it, it was a toss up. And, I, I, but here's the rule: we can't pick the same person twice. No, he's got him. He can't. It can't, nope. It can't. Dude. Nope. It's a toss up. I can't. I'm not gonna listen to your rules. Fine, gonna, fine, 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 <laughs> fine. Finn, fine, Finn, Finn Balor. I'm Finn Balor. And as I'm well. gonna go with Rhea Ripley. I gotta. Wow. Go so with two Finn Balors and two Rias. Yeah, yeah. All right. Who, the, who else we gonna we gonna get fucking on AEW? No one. Uh, Tay Conti. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck it. <laughs> Fuck it. <laughs> Once again. Thank you guys. Thank you, Marco, for chiming in. Thank you, Henry, for coming in as thank well. You guys. And thank you for you guys who, who watch us on Get Vocal. Numbers are growing up on Get Vocal as well. We've seen that the numbers of subscriptions are going up. And you guys are watching us. If you're not live with us now, you're watching us later on. And thank you for that. So, guys, uh, when we continue with Turnbuckle Tabloid, make sure you check us out on all the social media outlets and as well as on YouTube. And stuff. When we continue, we'll have Dominic De Niro coming in and stopping by, stopping by oh, and man. talking about what he has done during COVID and what the fuck is a Brooklyn kid doing up in the sticks in upstate New York? So, guys, don't go anywhere. <laughs> Stick around. We will return. All right. Later, yo. Let's go, man. Check out Turnbuckle Tabloid, man. Check out the wrestling podcast from the homie. Keeping it 5150 from New York City. Everybody, boys and girls, children and all ladies, welcome to the circus that is known as Turbuckle Tabloid. And boy, do we have the ringleaders of all ringleaders in the in the building. And no, it's not me. I'm basically one of the clowns that come out the small car. We got our boy Dominic De Niro sitting in with us this this time. And um, it's been a, it's been a minute, man. Uh, how's it been going during the uh, the 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 global pandemic? How you doing, man? Thanks for having me on. Uh, you know, I, I just been relaxing. You know. Enjoying my time off from the business, enjoying my time off from work, raising a dog. <laughs> I, I, how, really I really can't complain. How, how is it that we raise a dog? Like, it, uh, uh, don't we pretty much just feed it, make sure it doesn't bite anyone, and rub its belly whenever yeah, it gets a chance? Yeah. You know, I, I'm always saving like uh, you know these forest critters from uh, from his jowls. He's, he's, he's becoming a predator, man. I, just the other day, I had to save it all. Like a little bunny thing was the size of my fist. I heard it crying, and he was like toying with it. And I ran over. I had to give him like a field goal kick. And I took the bunny, and I brought it somewhere safe. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, wait, that's, wait. That's my, uh, so what kind of dog is it? Dog. It's an Alaskan Klee-Kai. So, basically, it's like three different types of husky. It's like, I think, Siberian husky, an Alaskan Malamute, and something else. Yeah, but they're not supposed to grow uh, past, like, 20 pounds. And this thing's, like, 24 pounds. He's a little fat fuck. It's hilarious. <laughs> oh, yeah. They told the same thing to me about my Boston Terrier when I first got him. And, you know, we did a research about them. We looked at what the size was and whatever. Brought him back a year later. The, the, the owner, the, the, the pet store owner looked at me. And he says, what the fuck were you feeding him? <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> Jesus Christ. It looks like a fucking mini pit. What are you doing with him? Uh... Yeah, man, I'll, I'll find me. We just let him loose, you know. So he just, I don't know what he eats during the day. So um, he has the open air. Yeah, there's there's nothing but land. He could just fucking bite the heads of fucking birds and shit like that when he's up there. Oh, yeah, man. He, he actually tortured a hen like two weeks ago. I found this thing. It was like its wing was all fucking mangled. I felt so bad for it. That's but um. It, it survived and it got away. Listen, don't feel bad. That's, that, it's nature. That's what's supposed to happen. Yeah. That's nature. Yeah. He's so adorable, and then he does these evil things, and he's, you know. He says he was so adorable, yeah. And then, then, then you find out fucking it's Cujo you have in your fucking yard. 
Yeah, right. This is from fucking Pet Cemetery. <laughs> so, you know, like we mentioned, during the global pandemic, you know, you guys had pretty much a downtime before you know, things started picking up here and there. Promotions are coming up. Uh, yep. Did you let yourself go a little bit? Did, did we, um, you know, do did, did we indulge in a little bit of the sweets or any high, uh, high, high carb meals and stuff? Oh, I, we absolutely, absolutely, man. I definitely indulged in the carbs, you know, I'm just enjoying things that I haven't got to enjoy in the past three years. <laughs> you know, then it's, I've, uh, then it's the pain in the ass to, 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 to take it back off. Uh, you know, it's not really. I just, you know, once things get back into the groove of things, you know, the gyms are just starting to open up. I've never been the kind of guy, even though I have like workout equipment at my, at my house, I get too comfortable, you know, like I just, can't motivate myself i need i need life to motivate me i need others around me to motivate me so like when i go to the gym it's a different story right i want to get my routine back in order and everything falls into place yeah i think that's the toughest thing to to people are going to be dealing with when they're going back into their routines when gyms opening up and stuff like what's what's the um the better factors that you've been dealing with when finding your your groove getting back to the gym do you start off with the cardio? What it will? What, what's the first? The first? Um, the first thing you do when you're getting the, your first workouts in the first couple of days? Well, you know, I try to ease myself in with the elliptical. You know, like for the first week, I was doing like 15 minute circuits, and then I would go to 30 minutes. You know, and, and then I would just take a week off, and you know, that's where I'm at right now. So I gotta like try to keep it consistent. Like I said, once things start getting back into order and everything's like, you know, normal again, I'll be back into my normal routines. Well, you just recently were, you just had an event at uh, at, at BCW and you guys came Absolutely. off winning the tag titles there. Uh, what was it like? Like, I mean, you know, you're still getting back in the form, hitting them ropes, getting back. Was it, an, uh, was it like, you know, duck going into water, fish uh, being born into the sea, like oh, what was it? Dude? What was your first your first interactions back in the ring for the past couple of weeks? Well, that that wasn't my first match back, so I, I like that was probably my third match back. So I, I got the jitters out. You know, it was definitely uh, still a little butterflies, just you know, considering what was on the line and uh, who we were facing. But you know, I was pretty calm for the most part. You know, I, I think everything went well. The match should the the whole show should be out in the next couple of days on Title Match Network. So yeah, I I, I, check I, that um, out. I saw the um I, I I saw the outcome. I saw the stream. I congratulate you and you got and the and the guys for, for pulling out the win, bringing the titles, um, bringing the titles home. And uh, it's got to be tough to uh got to be tough to be wrestling at the beach, huh? <laughs> it's not that easy. Uh, you know, I think it was ICW or GCW ran a show there not too long ago, and there was still broken glass all over the place in the sand. Oh. So, so like, it was a big thing. The dude who owned the ring, like, he said a speech before the show, and he was like, make sure you wipe your feet on the carpet next to the steps in front of the ring. And, of course, me and Chris did not do that. Oh. And Chris comes storming in, just jumps in the ring. I think someone caught me on camera just like he's saying, just keep it away from his feet. And then uh, I found a little carpet. I wet my feet, but boy, did we get yelled at after the fucking match. Ah, Dude. this is shit. Damn. I, it's, almost, it's almost as though like you were in fucking Coney Island. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. Forget about it. Exactly, right? You freaking shot the Heineken bottles or something. Man, I was, I, was telling, I was talking to my daughter recently about that because we were watching the Warriors the other day. And... We, we spoke about how the old Coney Island was. Not this shit that's in that, but the old one where you could go underneath the boardwalk and fucking run around, and that's where the fucking hypodermic needles and shit was all that. And I was like, yeah, you, you kids don't know what it is to fuck around and shit. <laughs> you don't know what it is to yeah. almost get fucking, fucking tuberculosis and shit like that. Now, that was a little before my time, too. But, I mean, when I was a kid, I was still swimming side by side with, like, baby diapers and stuff like that. So, you know. Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> definitely. <laughs> I was still People in a... going and changing their kids in the, in the ocean. But, that yeah. But, yeah, so with with wrestling coming back and such and you basically getting your, your swing of things going on, um, 
What was the biggest thing that you missed? I, I mean, I know, I know a lot of guys say, you know, taking those bombs, you know, getting into, you know, what, 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 what's the biggest thing you miss about being in the ring for, for, you know, missing it for an extended period of time? Definitely, you know, if I could still grab that crowd reaction and get them invested. Mm. You know, so like, like during our entrances, I always like to walk around the ring and just like try to feel out the crowd, you know. And uh, I, I've actually, you know, I, I've found it to be very fun coming back. You know, everybody seems to be like, warm and welcome. Everybody's excited to be back. That's that's what I really miss, you know, just reading the crowd before I get in that ring. See, that's, you see, that's a, that's a very humbling and, and thought-provoking kind of response because a lot of times people, you know, there's, there's people who are more self-indulgent. It's like, you know, I'm out there for the spots. You know, I got to make sure that people, you know, yeah. got to see the rack. But it's 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 comforting to know that you know, you you appreciate you know the crowd and the, you know what's going on but we'll, we'll we'll get back to a lot of other stuff you know cuz i remember early on you wanted to like expand the conversation other than just resting but but um just quickly um you 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 you, you told you, you said it's about your third your third match back and such um is is the bookings do you see that they're, they're going to come a little bit more frequently now? Do you see that there's going to be openings? People are, are are asking for Dominic De Niro and the guys? Well, I've been fortunate enough to be contacted by a few promotions. And, you know, I, as everything's starting to get back into the groove, there's so many people that want to get out there, and there's just so many spots. So I've been fortunate enough to be contacted, and I got a couple shows coming up. I'm on a Titan Championship Wrestling this Saturday mm -hmm. out in Jersey. They got something cool going on. Their main event has got 40 men. It's a 40-man battle royal, and there's two rings side by side, like well, World War Three, whatever war games. Oh wow! It's just yeah, it's just gonna be dope, man. Wow, see now and that's then, that's how you that's how you bring wrestling back in the indie shit. Yeah, that's gonna that's gonna be a good old time. I, I am looking forward to Saturday. Wow. So, with 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 Titan Championship, um, you, you you mentioned the other the other promotions out there. Um, yeah, I, on the twenty sixth, I'll be at uh, Test of Strength out in Connecticut. I'll be teaming with my boy Gabe Sky. Are we are we doing are, are we doing driving matches? Is still we we're still doing that? Uh, actually, no. This is at a this is at like a barbecue joint. Okay. I'm telling yeah, you. Yeah, we 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 did the one earlier in the month and it was it was a real good time. I'm telling you these with with this whole pandemic thing going on, people get creative and we find a way to to make events go on, man. If we can't be indoors, yep. we'll find a way. We'll make something happen. And I, and I like I like how promoters are thinking outside of the box to do that as well. So what uh, so uh, for for your um for your for your collaborations and and and, and um, promotions in which that you'll be working with, can, can we mention who you've been working with recently? Uh, yeah, go for it. So you, we we recently saw that you guys put together an event this past weekend. Uh, you guys look like you were in the sticks. <laughs> it looks like you were basically in the middle of like Michael Myers territory. Yeah, it's, it's definitely an undisclosed location. <laughs> uh. <laughs> That's the word we want to use. Yeah, we're we're definitely going with uh, we're going with the name Mount Nowhere. I like that. I it's like that. <laughs> yeah, it's a collaboration with myself and Full Finish Productions, and we're we're just trying to take a different approach at this. You know, coming into this, you know, we don't want to be the same. You know, just basic wrestling show where it's just match after match after match. We want to make this more of a show that's revolved around wrestling. But what's a Brooklyn no, boy so, like you? Yes, yes. What's a Brooklyn boy like you doing in the sticks? I mean, you know, I got family up here. You know, I once had a life up here, <laughs> my early twenties, when I was in too much trouble in Brooklyn. I had to get away. Ah, yeah. it's like it's like what the Puerto Ricans do with their with their kids when they're fucking around in the streets so much. They send them to Puerto Rico. They get them away. <laughs> yeah, right. They send them to the beaches. <laughs> exactly. But no, it, it's um. Like I said, it's good to see that you guys are able to put that up, put that together up there and out in the sticks and the boonies and stuff like that. Um, who was it that came up with the idea of like putting this together? Again, it was just a it was a joint decision. We got together one day because we don't live too far from each other. You know, we started blazing. 
one thing led to another. We came up with some ideas. We're like-minded boys. And you know, here we are. We're going <laughs> to run our second show this Sunday at 6 p.m. live on YouTube. And we plan on running one every, uh, every two weeks. I, I, I love that you had to, you know, basically initiate the fact that, yes, we were blazing, getting there. What is your, your thought about the whole um, debate in which people have with uh, legalization, marijuana, you know, uh, should it be, should it be, especially in New York? What's your thought about it? I mean, it's just going to be heavily taxed, and I, I think that the product's going to eventually get watered down. And you'll probably be better off just getting it from your local guy. <laughs> <laughs> Tell you the truth, you know. I want to talk to Samson. Like, I, <laughs> like, I, like up here, there's a dispensary, and it's just overpriced eights. Like, I don't need to pay seventy dollars for an eighth. I'm not a herd. Right. Go get that shit for thirty dollars, same quality. You know what the fuck? Right. That's 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 um. That's the thing that I tell people, especially when they they see like what's going on in other states and stuff. They think it's so simple, it's like yo, it's gonna be yo. They need to make it happen, make it legal. I was like, dude, you don't even know how much you're gonna be coming out your ass for that shit. I mean, honestly, it's gonna be ridiculous. And and the 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 winners out of everything is just gonna be the state. The government is gonna fucking get over. That's who the fuck is gonna who's gonna get over. It's not you guys who enjoy it, who enjoy you know the recreation of it. Fucking government is gonna love with the the repercussions of it. One thing I do love about the dispensaries though is they sell these disposable pens that go for like thirty, thirty five. That last you a couple of days. Right. And boy, do those things kick. Really. Those, are the, those, are, those things are good, man. <laughs> so long, long gone are the days of the uh, of the rolling up of the of the fontos and stuff like that. Yeah. No. Nah, I, I mean, I I still uh. I got these birthday birthday cake joint papers I'm actually smoking right now. <laughs> got a couple of real cones on the side. Why is it uh, that? Why is it that potheads? I, I mean, I have not to say that you do it, but why is it that potheads? And I'm not going to be a prude about it because I, let's just say I've indulged in there, there was a time in my life where I indulged very heavily. But why is it that potheads these days love to tell everybody that they smoke and like on social media they got to show the roll up. They gotta show the the fucking the, the eighth. They gotta make sure everybody knows they're doing it. What the fuck is that about? That's just set attempts to getting attention, man. Come on, that's like high school shit right there. And it's usually adults that's doing it. I'm like, what the fuck is wrong with you? I get it. You enjoy the fucking herb. I get it. Shit. But um. <laughs> but yeah, but you know, like you said, out of you know, you guys come together and you blaze up. You, you start thinking ideas for stuff like that. I was also the type that would think about stuff that's going on in today's society when I was getting like when I was getting lit and shit when I get high I start thinking about what's going on and in, in the landscape of what's happening and stuff like it must be mind blowing what the fuck you guys are thinking about now and I'm not only talking about weed heads but I'm talking about everybody you guys at your demo your age like what the fuck has been happening in this past year I mean, honestly, I, I've been trying to, like, I use weed to block all that shit out. Like, you know, when it's game time, I put it away. But in times like this, I really don't want to fucking know what's going on. It's tough, like, just, though. Everything, it's so everything, tough. Everything sickens me right now. Yeah, it's so fucking oh. tough, man. And especially, like, you um, you grew up in a diverse neighborhood. We spoke about it many times on the show when you were on. Grew up in a diverse area. And just to see how everything goes down and... How everything is is just, it, it almost feels as though it's fucking like 50 years ago, 60 years ago again. And it's just like, what the fuck is happening? But worse, um, I guess up there, you, you, you don't, you're not seeing a lot of that up there in the sticks, are you? you know, I, I, I can't imagine you are. I mean, Newburgh's not the... I live, I live next to Newburgh, and that place isn't too fucking charming. I mean, this part of that are just like... <laughs> The crime rate's ridiculous, or at least it used to be. It used to be one of the rated like the, mm. the number one in crime rate for the cities in New York. Right. Jeez, Newburgh. I'm trying to think. How far is that out of um out of Albany? Uh, probably an hour and a half. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I, I pretty much had that idea because I I remember that name from before. I remember I, when I was a kid, I would do um sleepaway camps and it was like all the way up by that way and probably even deeper there was some i was going to the catskills and shit like that and man let me tell you 
talk about when you were a fucking Puerto Rican kid from Brooklyn going up to fucking sleepaways up there. You you want to talk about racism? Shit. <laughs> that shit. There was no hiding that shit. That shit was blatant. It was like Bill. Sorry, you had to go through that. Yeah, no, it's fucking. But I mean, listen. I never fucking piss, you know, piss and bitch a moan about it, but it, I always find it to be funny because, you know, you, you, you well, you, listen, you grew up, you grew up in Brooklyn, you grew up in a diverse neighborhood, you had black friends, your Puerto Rican friends. We all had our connections with certain people, and it's like that shit never really shine any colors for me. Like I never really had any issues with that. Every everybody handles things differently. Again, from your generation, my generation. So it was looked at as a joke, and we could move past it. I mean, I had friends that had ironic names that were, like, based off of racism, and they used to fucking literally be identified by these things, and they were cool with it. You mean, tell me, like, you know a guy named uh, Nigga Nate or, like, um, <laughs> Guinea, Guinea Guy or some shit like that? So, so, something something close to that. I don't want to go that extreme, <laughs> but, you know. I was like, all right, there we go. Oh, 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 okay, we get close to, like, White Boy John. Like, I had, like, that kind of shit, like, White Boy Jim or some shit like that. But <laughs> I don't think I've ever had anything, like, fucking, like, uh... I'll, t- I'll tell you once we stop recording. I'll just <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let the, ho- let the host get fucking hit with the fucking shrapnel for saying fucking derogatory terms. Fuck it. <laughs> so, no, but, you know, you know, in this day and age, like I said, we got the, we have, um... You know, this pandemic that's going on, you have fucking the, the, the sides of the world's going fucking head to head with you know, these fucking red and blue fucking individuals. These red and blue shits is worth than real fucking gang shit. And then you got the issues with the... Uh, I, do, you, do, you, do you have friends on the force? I actually do have a... Oh, yeah, I have, I have quite a few friends on the force. And, um, you know, not not going into too much detail. How, how are they taking this, this whole backlash against... Uh, the, you know, well, I have this dogs. one friend that's female, and I remember she was like, she was taking it hard, especially when, like in the city during the protests, and all those kids were like throwing like buckets of water at them and shit. Mm. Like, she was victim of that, and that's so like I don't know who she is as a person. She's a good person. I'm like, you know, it's just terrible that some some people had to take that backlash to that. Yeah, I know. I, you know I, there's, there's there's good there's good cops, there's bad cops, and you hear it every day. But like, you know, I have a lot of friends that are good people. Yeah, I, I go through. I got the same shit. I go the same shit. I have the same individual. A lot of my, a lot of people I know that are on the force. One is, you know, damn near almost retired, and the other ones I know that are on the force are they're young. They just probably maybe three year, four year rooks and all that. And like you said, good people. And it's just like fuck, man. You just hope that everything pans out. But you know, just like you said, when you deal with you know the good, you get the good with the bad, and just like the same with people, everybody's fucking good or bad. I I, I look at it fucking, it's, it's almost like wrestling. You got your fucking heels and you got your faces. I don't know. So with um for all the with all this going down, wrestling is making this it's 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 transition back. It's, it's probably going to be the escape of a uh, of. People not wanting to deal with going on with CNN and Fox News and MSNBC and all that shit. What's your look at what's 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 been happening with wrestling the past few months? How how it's been able to hold its own, especially with the mainstream stuff. Have you been keeping in in tune with the mainstream shit? Not the past couple of weeks. Uh, I just caught up with AEW's All Out pay per view today. I watched the highlights on YouTube. Mm-hmm. Um, I did not watch the payback pay-per-view i'm gonna probably catch that sometime this week uh I, I like what they're doing with this thunderdome stuff but i could see that this is getting a lot of backlash just like kkk members on there and shit like <laughs> uh that's weird the fucking trolling then, on um, there yeah, and then you got that whole raw underground which is just terrible yeah, but I'm it, not gonna really go into that and start shitting on products. I love that. I, you know, I love guys like you. Well, and it's and it's not only you. It's I, I always hear this from a lot of um, a lot of wrestlers, and it's almost it almost it, it goes the same way as entertainers and performers, where we all have this thing where we don't watch a certain thing because I don't know why we feel that we don't do it. Like I don't really listen to a lot of other podcasts. I don't. I found that if I did that. It's like if I listen to another wrestling podcast, I don't want to pick up their habits, so I stay away from being in tune with that. 
is, is it that you're too busy to watch the product or you just don't really like you want to stay focused on what you're getting into? Well, I definitely don't watch the product to try and like figure out my next move and shit. And I, I feel like you see that a lot where it's just like rehearse shit that people see other people do. Like I definitely don't draw inspiration from it like that. Uh, I don't know. Just sometimes I, I'm busy. No. It, it's not like the, you don't have access to it. You can always just catch up and binge watch it. It's, it's nothing personal. Yeah, that's that, that's the other thing, too, is like the, the day and age that we live There's in There's nothing now. that's really, like, you know, captivating that's, like, really going to draw my attention right now. Right. But, like I say, it's another thing, too, that at this day and age, you, you can fucking watch it anywhere now. It's not like when we you know, younger, everything was, like... Like a certain amount of channels, and that was it. You can fucking pick it up anywhere now. I think that's what a lot of times you 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 ever you ever sit and you st- get like one wrestler and fu- and like want to study them and see how they work and how they uh, use the ring and stuff like that. Well, yeah, I mean, old school WCW is where I go for that. Like, uh, I love watching guys like Dean Malenko and Chris Benoit and stuff like that. Um. Old school UWFI from Japan and shoot wrestling. Right. Watch like with little Nunzio and stuff like that. Um. Yeah, I mean, like again, I, I don't try to like really watch anything and try to like imitate what I see. If that's right. I just try to like get and draw real inspiration for myself. And sometimes it comes off sloppy. Sometimes it don't. And I guess I'm at the point in my career where I'm trying to like find the medium. So that what? Makes sense. So what becomes the goal these days? I mean, um, as as wrestlers, because a lot of times, you know, years ago, it used to be you got to get to the WWE. God, that, that that's the be all end all now. And now with there being so many options for wrestlers to reach for or, or goals to obtain, you know what what's the what's the reach for there? Well. I guess it's this new business venture I'm doing. You know, um, I think I, I think we're gonna put everything we have into this, and uh, yeah, this is this is my new passion project. So. Nice. See, yeah. hey, you see, that's the other thing that uh, because you know, you know, to be honest, as we spoke about before, you're a little bit older, you're a little bit longer in the tooth than the guys who 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 are starting off. Like you started late in the game, you've mentioned before, and. Um, you you still you've done well you've exceeded and excelled, but you know you also got to think about do I want to continue this for twenty years taking all these bumps or maybe I could start doing things behind the scenes or becoming a mogul itself. It's good to be conscious. Oh, of I'll that. definitely be taking. I'll be. I'll definitely be taking those bumps for twenty years, but I'm just trying to like you know plant some seeds. <laughs> it might. It might. You might not be taking bumps on you physically, could be, but you could be taking bumps other ways as well. I don't know what you mean by that. <laughs> I'm talking about shit mentally, uh, creatively. Uh, all right. You're gonna hit a lot of roadblocks. I'm I'm not talking about I'm not talking about blow. None of that shit. <laughs> I'm <talking about> that. <laughs> no, I, and I, I, you know, I, and you be you'll be interested in probably sharing this because I I like I like doing this, and I've been talking about it recently. There's a book by Sean Oliver that I'm reading right now. It's the Kayfay book, and he talks about you know he was uh, doing Kayfay commentaries and stuff, but he talks about you know, branding, being a part of the, you know, how, how you put your, your product out and, and such. And it's real thought provoking on how you invest in yourself and you put your, your, your creativity out there, but you never really take into consideration that, you know, not everything is going to be fucking gems, you know? So when, when, when you're getting stuff, and you know, in line for your promotions and your your bookings and stuff like that, you know, you, it, it's okay to realize. Listen, not everything's gonna be fucking a uh, a uh, uh, fucking a slam is a grand slam, you know. And and no, not at all. <laughs> so we, you know, you always take what you what um your failures and, and make them into triumph. But absolutely, we welcome the growing pains, man. Exactly, and that's a lot of people need to understand that it's gonna. That's what it takes the growing pains. But so far, man, you guys are. You, you guys look good, man. It was it was it was like I mentioned earlier, a really good turnout. Want to see want to see more stuff from you guys. I want to see what about the stuff you got guys gonna have in gear, and especially um, what you're gonna be doing in uh, in other areas of, of wrestling, man. When you go to other promotions and stuff like that. 
And it's, um, as always, it's great to have you on the fucking show. Where, um, where else can we, where, where, where else can we, where, what other things can we see Dominic doing? Dominic is already going to be behind the scenes with one promotion. He's hitting the, are we going to see you at, um, uh, selling cars somewhere else? Like you're going to, you have multifaceted. <laughs> You know what? I might open up a used car lot, you know? <laughs> Fuck it. Just stay busy. Let's go. I'm, gonna, I'm feeling optimistic now. Let's go. Fuck that shit. You, you, know, you got things going on. You got you got to take a risk. Fuck that. I'm opening up my own dispensary. Fuck it. They selling seven, 70 and 8th. I'll do 65. Fuck it. <laughs> I'm going to open up a fucking uh, nah, but, a kennel. I mean, you can, you, know, you, can, you can see me at Titan Championship Wrestling this Saturday in New Jersey. Uh, you can see me at Pester Strike Wrestling on September 26th in Connecticut. You can catch those flyers on my Instagram at Dominic DeNero. And, you know, follow False Finish Productions for any news relating Mid-Valley Wrestling. And definitely tune in this, this Sunday, 6 o'clock. 6 o'clock. As a matter of fact, yeah, send me the info so I could um, post it up on the... Um... On the group page and stuff Absolutely. like that. Absolutely. We'll get a couple a, commercials. I'll send you. As a matter of fact, yeah, we'll do that. And uh, yeah, yeah, send me that too because I'll, I'll do a live read for the for the show as well. Yeah, send me all that I shit. I'll do, I'll, do the leave, do, I'll do the live reads and all that shit. I don't give a shit. Get them now before I get on yeah, Fiverr. Man, get, on, get them now before I go on Fiverr and start fucking charging people for that shit. <laughs> that shit. But Dominic, once again, thank you for checking in, brother. Thank you as always, man. You've been a great supporter of the show and we support you as always on our end as well. And Please, uh, and much progress, much prosperity to you and the guys up there. And we will get you back in real, real soon. Always a pleasure shooting the shit, my brother. Thank you, sir. And we'll talk again soon. Turnbuckle tabloid. Three, two, one. Tabloid.